probably um, looking for some sort of timing. What is interesting here, Patrick, is that in a 1500 meter these days, you don't see that kind of lead being established at a national event like that. Um, it tells you of the quality of the field. I was expecting some of the other competitors maybe to be on the shoulder or the heels of Tyrone Jacob. But nonetheless, it's a day when he is doing an excellent job for his club, South City Rising Stars. And uh, uh, a commanding performance in uh, the seventh event on the day, the 1500 meters for boys open. Tyrone Jacob is it is from the South City Rising Stars to win the first event on the track for the male for the day. And he wins in convincing style as well. Tyron Jacob of the South City Rising Stars, the unofficial winner of the 1500 meters for boys open. And uh, we see the athlete now, it looks like from Ace taking up the second position as the others come in now. Shaquem Williams has settled for fourth. He's also from the South City Rising Stars. And uh, Patrick, we're witnessing now the conclusion of the first event on the track for the male category. An event convincingly won by Tyrion Jacob of the South City Rising Stars. Uh, certainly an uh, uh, outstanding performance and we expect during the course of the day to have uh, other performances from him like that. Um, but I, I want to go back to something that you um, touched based on. Um, for a meet of this magnitude, uh, the distance that it, this guy is winning at, you know, it, uh, it would seem to me that a long distance running um, it's either that he's much better than the other athletes or it says something about the persons who are running distance races. As, and you say the 1500 is not really a distance race anymore, it's a sprint. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we should have more persons doing the sprinting. So we on the ball and we up and running is the Whitsuntide Games 2022. And Patrick, maybe just to look back at Whitsuntide Games over the years, this in the past has been one of the premier track and field meets in the sub-region, maybe 20 years ago thereabout. And I remember when these games used to be contested over two days as well, over the Whitsuntide weekend. It has been condensed to one year and in more recent times because of the, the global pandemic, we, we, we didn't have it for a couple of years. But it's good to see the Grenada Athletic Association bringing back these games. And, and, and we noticed too that quite a number of overseas participants, especially from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, they've been here at our national champs, they've been here at Whitsuntide Games in the past, and they have a very large contingent here as well. We were expecting also to have some competitors from Trinidad and Tobago. We will confirm whether or not they are actually here. But just to put into perspective what these games means as we culminate the track and field season 2022. Um, well, it, it, it means a lot. Um, it means, first of all, that the athletes got to be happy that the, the season is over. Those who are going to be participating in Grenada, the at other athletes who are going to be traveling out and maybe who have scholarships and going to various institutions, the, the season is not over. But I want to come back to the point about the, the substantive point you made about the Whitsuntide Games. In fact, as a young man growing around the area here, the Whitsuntide Games used to be held at the grandstand. It wasn't, we didn't have a stadium at the time, and it was the premier event in the Caribbean. We used to have cyclists, actually, Roger Gibbon rode here in Grenada, and you would, if you could recall, Roger Gibbon was a cycling champion in the Caribbean. We had, art, we had athletes coming from Puerto Rico, St. Vincent, Dominica, all, all the islands, and it used to be a big thing. It used to be a big event uh, at the Whitsuntide Games. It used to be for two days, um, and we used to have the best uh, coming up, uh, Fred Newhouse, who was one of the favorites for the Olympic 400 meter, was beaten by Donald Pierre right here in the Whitsun Titans <laughs> uh, some 40 years ago. So um, it is an important game. Um, it, it's, it always had a high standard, but as you said, for the last two years, the pandemic uh, and so um, but, but today we are really looking forward to great excitement here. It's a pity we saw this in the Vincentian team. It's a pity not more teams have come over to participate. But then we have to take into consideration a lot of different you know, facets. Well, those of you who are viewing the broadcast, we ask you to we ask you to share the link and to share the live. We are the Grenada Amateur Athletics Association Facebook page. So to TNR Communication, both on the YouTube channels as well. And uh, those of you who are in Grenada and who are looking for somewhere to go this afternoon, why not come on down and join us here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium for exciting track and field action. 
And uh, as I mentioned earlier on, the conditions are almost ideal, just a strong breeze. We saw earlier on today in the huddles event, we had a wind speed of over three meters per second, which is almost hurricane with reference to track and field. And so it, it may provide some assistance at certain aspects of the track, but it may be a hindrance to if they're running directly into that kind of a wind. We also have the long jump going on in, at the moment and the javelin event. And so there are many events occurring at the same time. We into the early afternoon session. So earlier on today, we had the girls 100 meter hurdles. And uh, we also had the 1500 meters open for girls and boys. The girls javelin throw on the 20 is in progress. That's what we see on screen here now. Competitor from the track blazers about to take to the runway. We have some six competitors in this event, the under 20 girls javelin. The likes of uh, Nicola Alexander, Katisha John, Maya Charles, Delisha Francois, Alia Gidhari and Jadel Thompson. These are the competitors in the under 20 category. There is also the girls javelin through 20 plus and we have three competitors there, Denisha Kalist, Amaya Charles and Aishana Charles, Aishana Charles being Grenada's Para-Olympic athlete who competes for Grenada at the Para-Olympic Games. And we also, as I mentioned, the girls long jump on the 17, which we saw some uh, footage from moments ago. And there we have Talia Sam Samson, Shanti Augustine, she's there for the 473 MVP, Aliyah Gittens, Naya Xavier, Serena Charles, Shafonia Houston, one to look out for, Denisha Scott, Kamaya Telesford, Gina David and uh, Akira Moreen, the competitors in the girls' long jump under 17. And then we're also going to have the girls' long jump in the open category. These are the events on the field, in the field that are currently being contested. The next event on the track is going to be the Finish right. Uh, it's going to be the 80 meter dash for under nine in the boys and girls category, and then we'll have the girls 100 meter dash under 11, and uh, the boys 100 meter dash under 11. In the girls under nine 80 meter dash, um, Patrick, we're going to have actually three finals there. So we're going to have uh, section one of three, section two of three, and section three of three. And that gives you an indication as to the number of competitors we have there. They are all final events. And what's going to happen, the, the top times, times are going to emerge as the one, two, three. overall winners in the race. Yeah. So there we have section one of three. And the competitors in section one, we have Marissa Marcel from the RAC Club. That's Runners Athletics Club. And we also have Jadiah Forrester from Bolt. From Karaku, we have Isaiah Williams. From Velocity, Jazayan Johnson. From SJC, Emelissa Matthew. In six, Zaria Barrett of MVP. And we should see in seven, Aliyah Samuel of the South City Rising Stars. To give you a list of the clubs that are participating today, we have a list of 31 registered clubs. And that's quite an interesting one. We had 17 in the, the relay meet uh, a few weeks ago. Today we have 31 competing clubs. So we have MVP, that's 473 MVP. Ace, we have Bolt, and Bolt means breaking out legions together. CSC, which is the Carico Athletics Committee. We have the CONC, which is Concord Athletics Club, and that's a new club for us out of Concord. We have from Dominica, a club from Dominica, Finish Line Sports Club. We also have Fusion Athletics from the St. George's area. Guyana is also listed here. High Performance, Maximizing Athletic Potential, that's MAP. We have the Mustangs, the Phoenix Track Club, 
the Point Fourteen New Jets Club, that's from Trinidad and Tobago, the Runners Athletics Club, the Simplex Athletics Club, South City Rising Stars, Southern Pros, St. Andrew's Dominican Secondary Sass, St. David's Track Blazers, St. Joseph Convent, St. George, St. Kitts, St. Mary's Junior, Stunners, SVG Track Team, TC Immortals, and then we have the two unattached clubs. We have UTT Patriots, Velocity Track Club, Exceed Sports Club, and Excel Track Club. 31 competing clubs, Patrick. Yeah, it's a, it's it tells a, it tells a good story for the the interest that these games have. Yes, certainly. Um, but we'll have to verify, as you intimated, whether the point fourteen New Jets is here, the Dominica team, the Guyana team. But um, for listeners, we are expected uh, two distinct sessions of athletics here this afternoon. In the first session, which is carded to start at twelve thirty, and I thought it started precisely. We have thirty two events carded, and then for the second evening session. Uh, which is supposed to start at 4.30, we have 40 events carded. So in total today, we are expected to have 72 uh, uh, athletics uh, events right here in, uh, in the Whitsuntide Games. And that's both in track and field combined. So yes, yeah. you're in store for a very well, long and, and what we perceive to be an exciting <laughs> yes, afternoon, afternoon and evening of track and, and field. field. Yes, certainly. And we're happy to bring it to you. And I'm sure you appreciate the fact that even if you're not able to come along to the national stadium you can sit in your living rooms you can be in your vehicles you can be wherever there is the internet and enjoy live track and field action here at the kirani james athletic stadium a lot is going to be happening as we get set for finals one or section one of three in the girls under 80 in the girls under nine category and they're up and running and uh, looking good is the athlete out there in lane three in the red and uh, she has good challenge from St. David's Track Blazers on the other side. It seems as though it's Track Blazers on the other side that would have won that one. Yeah, very easy. The, the young lady from Track Blazers, um, she finished very strongly. Um, she was determined and she seems to be slightly injured. Um, it's going to be a challenge for us here this afternoon with the identification of the colors for the various clubs. But I hope as the, as the evening transgresses, that we'll be able to do a much better job uh, to, for the quality, per se, of the commentary. So we're getting set for the second of the three finals in the under 80 meters. There the youngsters go sprinting down the track. We try to give you who the competitors are, but it looks as if it's the runners athletics club in the front winning here in lane three. That's from Fusion. It looks like Tia Saint Bernard from Fusion, who was the eventual winner. There she is, a very happy competitor. She's been greeted by her teammates here and enjoying the moment. And that's just the section two or three, the best times would emerge as uh, the official winners. We still have section three of three in that category. That's the under nine girls, 80 meters. 
And here we should see Ariel Antoine, Michaela Cyrus, Denaya Map Jeremiah, Sanjay Simeon, and Destiny Marriott. You mentioned to you the javelin on the 20 is also in progress so too is the long jump for the under 17 girls and also the javelin for the 20 plus as we see now the official results for the girls 80 meter dash section 2 so it was actually Runners Athletics in Tevisha Joseph who was first. Destiny Daniel from Velocity Track Club was second. Ty Williams of the St. Joseph Convent was third. And uh, Tia St. Bernard of uh, Fusion was fourth. Judia Harris was fifth. Lakisha Barry sixth. And Charles was in seventh position from Bolt. So again, it's a beautiful day. We have quite a number of spectators already here. We expect to have lots more later on in the afternoon. And for those of you who are very familiar with the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, in the background of the shot on screen here now, these are where the athletes are housed as the Athletes Village. So they're occupying the upper and lower levels of the secondary pavilion. The main pavilion and the bleachers dedicated to the spectators. And uh, later on, we expect to see a very packed crowd here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It's the final event in the track and field calendar in Grenada for 2022. And it's an opportunity for you to come in and savor and to enjoy the glorious moments of track and field right here. We expect some exciting and, and, and brilliant performances. As we mentioned earlier, on, we have clubs out of St. Kitts to the north and uh, Guyana to the south, inclusive of Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dominica as well, several clubs out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines are here and we know that in the past we have seen some very outstanding performances from them. We hope that some of the Carifta medalists and, 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 and athletes are here as well. St. Vincent may be one of the emerging talents within the sub-region in terms of track and field. Only recently they had a synthetic track been laid down there in St. Vincent and uh, we know what that did for us here in Grenada in terms of developing our standard of track and field and propelling us onto the in international stage. And the expectation may be too that St. Vincent and the Grenadines may now start to see a lot of emerging talent coming out through that initiative that they have undertaken there. I want to welcome Mr. Bonnet Antoine. He is going to be assisting with some of the comments here Drew, in the broadcast. Bonnet, good afternoon and uh, a great day for track and field as we continue to bring it to our viewers wherever they are and to allow them to enjoy great track and field here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Well, thank you very much and I concur. It is in fact a, a beautiful day in sunny Grenada. Um, we expect some real competitive races as, we, as the day continues. And I like the fact that we have, we have a number of representation from, uh, from, as you said, from St. Kitts to the north right to Guyana in the south. Uh, that augurs well for not just cooperation among the athletes, but good competition. The next event on the track is, is section three of three of the girls 80 meters dash on the nine and for track and field lovers in Grenada you after uh, absence of two or so years we were really flush with with a number of events uh, um, this year so this continues and it's the last one we have on our calendar here and we hope that if you're on your way you hasten to you hasten to be here at the Karani Stadium well, there's no better place to be this afternoon than at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. If you can't make it for whatever reason, we ask you to stay with us and to encourage others to join the broadcast as uh, we bring it to you live and in living colors right here from the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. We want to shout out the folks in St. Vincent and the Grenadines who are viewing the broadcast. And we know how you guys out there love your track and field just as us here in Grenada. So we 
welcome you and we hope that you, you enjoy what is there for you and that you provide all the support that your your citizens and your your, your athletes of St. Vincent and the Grenadines are delivering for us here in Grenada. So we have we have not seen it that on the, the list of teams. It that has been a team that has been here for several years. Mm -hmm. But we see quite a number of maybe new clubs out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines on the, the list of competing clubs here at the Woodson Tide Games 2022. We will try to do our best to identify the at least from outside of Grenada once they take the track. So bear with us. And the, it's, it's the girls on the nine, 80 meters dash. We have six, six athletes on track about to face the starters. So we still are with the start of the third of the three finals in the girls' 80 meter dash in the under nine category. And maybe we can go through very quickly some of the teams that are here. MVP, that's 473 MVP. So, Bonard, the various categories today, we have the under-9s, the under-11s. We also have the under-13, the under-15, the under-17 categories, the under-20, and then we have the 20-plus. So, quite a number of categories, a number of athletes, a number of events as well. We did a count uh, earlier on today. We came up with over 70 events um, scheduled for today. And so it's a lot, a lot of track and field action that the patrons will be in store for in uh, Whitsuntide Games 2022. And it's very healthy to see that the organizers have included the young kids in this, the, as we are about to witness the, on, or continue to witness and, the and just have a just have a look at them, Bernard, how, you know, absolutely eager they are and how comfortable they are as well on the big stage at the National Stadium. And these youngsters have the opportunity here now to maybe look back maybe five, ten years from now and see where their career in track and field would have started at Whitsuntide Games or at their school sports, etc. There they are, you know, just at their own pace, at their own time, in their own space and ready to go in track and field. And as, as it were, they're getting their feet wet and nothing beats a, a bit of experience. And so these kids will relish this. And for those that will go on, further in track and field it would be a good good thing to reflect and to remember when they had their first run in front of a crowd like this and in fact this is beaming right throughout the caribbean and further so this this really does well for these young these young people here so the organizers again hats must be taken off to them because uh, often time we forget that where you start you cannot start too young in any sport the only, the only thing here is that they've just been kept too long on the track now, Bernard. Absolutely. And, um, that race maybe should have been completed by now. We're not sure what the hold-up is. But they look pretty comfortable. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure they're waiting for the event. Look at the athlete in lane 7. Uh, she seems to be, you know, just keeping herself active, keeping warm, keeping the muscles well twitch and, and active. And, and traditionally in Grenada, we would have had by this time the public primary school games and but we didn't have that this year and so this is a further opportunity for young people who are interested in track and field who have not done much competitive racing this year to have another shot at it well we didn't have the GUT pr um, primary school games but on Thursday we had the private primary school games and I can tell you these youngsters really enjoy themselves and we must say congratulations to the St. Mary's Junior School for winning I think for seven or eight consecutive years 
um, at the private primary school games. So um, here they are again, maybe just three days after they would have competed on Thursday. And uh, they're ready to go one more time. And competition but does well for any sports person. Well, and uh, again, at this age level is good because you don't want them maybe at age 11 or age 13 to have their first appearance at the national stadium and in front of a crowd and, and uh, an event of that magnitude. So it really matures them and nurtures them and prepares them for, for the bigger events later on in their athletics career. It does. Even the seasoned professional will tell you the crowd really has an impact it does have an impact on one's performance and to get used to the crowd and to get used to the noise and to get used to winning and maybe not winning and the competitiveness this only bears itself out with repeated competition and to have an event like this at this time well they've been pulled off the track now so there seems to be some issue i mean we were looking at our starting list and who were on the track we had six persons to compete there were more than six on the track so there seems to be some issue out there so they've been called off the track at the moment and uh, as soon as we get more information on that we will let you know exactly what's happening but we can tell you the long jump for the under 17 girls are, uh, is in progress so too is the, the javelin and maybe we will try to bring you some of the long jump activities while we await the start of the or the resumption of the events on the track So in the long jump on the 17 girls, we should see there, as I mentioned earlier, Talia Sampson from MVP, Shante Augustin also from MVP. Not very often we get to see Shante in the long jump. And from what I understand, she'll be doing two individ three individual events today, the one, the two, and the long jump. She will not be featured in the four. Um, Alia Gittens, she's there from Karaku. Naya Zavi from MVP. And I'm sure Nigel and Fran are out there and looking on to see what Naya can do for them today. Serena Charles from South City Rising Stars. Shafonia Houston from South City Rising Stars as well. Denisha Scott, Track Blazers. Kamaya Telesford, also of Track Blazers. And also we have Gina David and Akira Maureen from the track blazers as well four competitors from track blazers and that's not surprising track blazers have come to be known as the what the track and field center certainly the javelin center in grenada well what i can say they're one of the premier track and field clubs the from the st david's area predominantly and they've been featured in every track and field event we have here put on by the grenada athletics association and have been given good account for themselves. You mentioned the javelin. They have within their ranks the coach, Paul Phillip, who is an international coach who has produced the likes of our own world champion, Commonwealth champion, and uh, going for fifth consecutive victories now, Anderson Peters, throwing over 93 meters in the javelin. And uh, he has been very instrumental in producing these great javelin throwers from the St. Davis area. So actually the event, has been started as the 80 meters for the under nine girls the third of three finals as these youngsters it looks as though it's an, uh, a competitor from runners track club it looks as though it is maybe cyrus michaela cyrus So you just witnessed the girls under nine, 18 meter dash, section three of three. And the winners are Zaria Berat from MVP, 13.64 seconds. Uh, uh, Zaria Williams was second from Caracol Athletics and Sun City's rising star Alea Samuel was third. In fourth place, we have Marisha Marcel of Runners. And uh, we are about to witness the start of 
of the 80 meters under nine for boys. And similarly, we have three sections in this in this um, in this event. And in, in section one, we would have Gavon Hazard, Omari Gay, Jaden Church, Kejo Modest, and Ronald Poutine. Again, we want to apologize to the viewers just in case we are calling the, the names and the lanes wrong. Um, what we have here are the names and the lanes, but we don't have the athletes' numbers just to verify who they are. So we may have called the wrong assignments for some of the previous races. We're going to try to rectify that situation. But um, we can see three youngsters here. Um, lane two from Bolt, and that's Jovan Hazard. Lane three, Omari Gay from Velocity. And lane four, Jadon Church from the Runners Athletics Club. We know for, for a fact that uh, Runners is in red, so too is Bolt, and so too is the 473 MVP. So it's going to pose a challenge for us in the absence of the numbers for the athletes. And then we also have in lane 5, Kalon Modest. He should be from Runners. Um, he's not yet on the track, and as you mentioned, Ronel Coutain, also from Bolt. We await the start of this event, so you're not missing any live action on the track. Uh, but the field, we have two field events that's, that continues, the long jump on the 17 girls and uh, javelin on the 20. As we welcome you back to the live track and field action here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. You would have just seen the completion day of section one of three in the boys on the 980 meters. The competitors for section two of three, they are on the starters orders now. We have in lane two, Elijah Antoine from the St. Joseph Convent St. George. And I'm sure with his mom and dad, that's Tira Antoine. Want any relation to you here? And uh, Stephen Antoine, 
you know. one of the happy area that's elijah antoine there S somebody said that we are all related in grade here okay? so i'm sure you'll be routing or rooting for elijah we also have in lane four joel theodore from the velocity track club and i see in lane seven we have Reese peters from the track blazers so only three competitors here antoine theodore and uh, and that's uh, Wilson Church. There we go down the lane. 80 meters under nine. It's Theodore from the Velocity Track Club. Here. Antoine in second as they battle for the finish line here. Theodore pumping very hard, wins it now. It looks as though on the outside in lane seven. That's uh, from runners Winston Church who came in second, and Elijah Antoine in third position. But they're happy campers. They're happy to be here and to be participating. A good race indeed by the youngsters in the under nine boys category. And I, I looked at young Theodore here, and he he was running as somebody who had been through some form of training. Well, he started a little bit slow, quite frankly, but by the time he got to the middle of the track at about 40 meters, he really got into high gear and high speed, so to speak, and pulled away from the other two competitors in the race. Yes, he did. And we're getting set for the third of the three finals. Bonner, do you want to call the lane assignments for us? It's, it, we have in lane one, Guillaume Samuel from Racer Track Club. Velocity is in, in Kirian Thomas, lane two. Lane three, Dion Forrester from Bolt. Lane four, Tyler Clark. At lane five, Caden McFallon. In lane six, Aviel Theodore. Lane seven, Zafari Williams. And in lane eight, Ronan Lessie. So we, we seems to have a full slate. And we do want to apologize to the, the viewers and listeners if they were hearing some, um, some humming or some noises coming in the background of the commentary. We seem to have rectified that now. And we expect to bring you high quality broadcast as usual from TNR Communications. So just in case you are getting those background interferences from the audio, we seem to have rectified that situation. So the two athletes from St. Mary's Junior School in four and five, and they would have accounted for themselves um, quite well only a couple of days ago. Yeah, in the private primary school games. So they should be still in good form, I would think, if they had peaked just about that time and here to compete again. So it's the third of the three finals. Again, Samuel, Thomas, Forrester, Clark, McFarlane, Theodore, Williams, and Lessie. It's always very, it's always very interesting to see the, how they young ones like this get ready for a race this, the different posture that they take it gives you an indication of their readiness and the difference and maybe in terms of training itself well it's a full lane assignment here it's good to see all of the competitors line up and ready to go young McFarlane I saw his dad earlier on today He's in the he was in the stands very early and that's the kind of support that these youngsters get from the parents and the grandparents. And whenever they are competing, it's actually like a family event, you know. Not only the parents come, but the extended family. All of the, the grandparents and the uncles and aunts and so come out to see the youngsters perform. But they're on the starters orders now. They're on the mark. The third of the three finals in the under nine boys category is 80 meters. So we have races, velocity, and they're off. And they're up and running. Who wants to make the early running here? In the middle of the track, you look at St. Mary's in the likes of Tyler Clark. Indeed, it's Tyler Clark pulling away. McFarlane is giving good chase. Here comes McFarlane. But Tyler Clark is going to win it. McFarlane in second. One, two for St. Mary's. And on the other side, it looks as though it was Ron and Lessie of the track Blazers who picked up the third position. And uh, very competitive. Very competitive. So you, you have witnessed the the section three of three of the boys under nine eighty meters. And there we see the official results. Tyler Clark indeed from the St. Mary's Junior with twelve point six zero. Ronan Lessie from Track Blazers actually came in second. We had him for third. 
but he really edged McFarling on the line. And so Trackblazers in second, Caden McFarlane in third from St. Mary's, Theodore from Fusion in fourth, and the Forrester in fifth from the Bolt Club. So good, good representation there from um, from all the young, all the young ones in this one. The next event on the track is is the girls. Maybe I can just share some results here. We have from the girls traveling through 20 plus just before this race starts. Danisha Kalis, she actually won that event. Amaya Charles was second from Track Blazers. And Aishana Charles, the Paralympic athlete, also from Track Blazers in third. So Track Blazers won two and three. We also have the results from the under 17 girls traveling through. First was. Uh, Serena Alexander from Track Blazers, second from Karaku, Alia Gittens, and third also from Karaku, Kishona Alert. So Track Blazers doing well. And in the girls traveling through under 20, in first was Alia Gidhari from the St. Davis Track Blazers, and uh, Nikoda Alexander from South City Rising Stars was second. Only two competitors in the under 20 girls javelin category so it's a girls 100 meters on the 11 we are about to see section one off three and there are five athletes who are taking the start of this one so we have Karaku Athletics Committee Janaya Lewis she is in two we saw some very outstanding performances on Karaku in recent times here at the relay meet and at the national champs as well the folks in Karaku we know they're glued on and they're anxious to see what the athletes can do and then we also have from South City Rising Stars Ariane Francis she's there in lane four Skylar Thomas is there from Runners Aliyah Scott from Bolt is there, and from Convent we have Oceana Batiste. Seems to be a false start out there from lane four from Ari and Francis. Maybe a little bit more eager than the others to go. She has too much speed, I would think. But Bonner, they're going to have one more attempt at the 100 meters. That's in the under 11. They're up and running here now. Carico comes out very early and looking good on the inside. Carico led this committee in Janaya Lewis. It's Lewis up front. She has some challenge on the outside from the athlete from Bold. That's Scott. But Scott seems to have a slight advantage here. Now that's Scott on the outside. She's going to win it. Karaku in second. Convent in third. As we witness the completion of one of three in the finals of the girls. 100 meters in the under 11 category. And Scott uh, won this one with some distance to spare. In fact, in the end, she won it rather easily. So that's Skylar Thomas from Runners, who was the eventual winner. And Janelle Lewis from Karaku was indeed second. And Baptiste from the St. Joseph Convent in third. So you have to bear with us in case we are, we are not giving you the correct designation of the athletes because we. We are slightly handicapped, but we will, we will rectify this momentarily. So it is Skylar Thomas uh, uh, who won this one. Jenna Lewis was second, and OCN Batiste in third. The next event is section two of three. Section two of three of this 100 meters on the 11 girls. We. In lane one, Osana, Osana Batiste. Well, she just run, that's maybe, let's yeah. hope it's a different person. Unless it's a twin. <laughs> it's actually a different person because the numbers are different as well. So we have Batiste, Andrews, Lewis, George, Noel, George, Edwards, and Antoine. And they're up and running. The second of the three finals in the under 11 category, 100 meters. 
And who's making the early run? It seems as though the athlete out there in lane six, which is Micaiah George of Runners. Micaiah George of Runners, she wins it. And in second place, it looks as though it was Chanel Lewis, also of Runners. So one, two for Runners in the second of the three finals. And uh, a good run indeed by the youngsters in this section of the finals in the under 11 girls 100 meters. So we just witnessed the conclusion of section two of three. So indeed it was McKenna, Micaiah George from Runners and Shania Lewis also from Runners who came in second and third was Osana Batiste of the St. Joseph Convent St. George. The next event on the track would be sections three of three. The girls 100 meters on the 11. And in lane one, Akaya Sam. Lane two, Leanna Batiste. Dominic Joseph is in lane three. Keona Marie Monroe in lane four. Leah Campbell in lane five. Vanessa Flavini in lane six. Lemaya Francis in lane seven. And Equina Francis. From out of Caracou in lane eight. Uh, lane seven is empty, so uh, we, from track blazers, that's empty. So the up and running, the final of the 100 meter girls on the 11 category. And looking good in the middle of the track seems to be the athlete here from Fusion. That's Connor Mary Monroe. It is indeed Connor Mary Monroe who wins it. And in second looks as Leah Campbell from the Velocity Track Club. But a good run here by Monroe. Monroe has been doing well throughout the entire track and field season. She was here on, on, on Thursday, I think it was running for her primary school, Connor Marie Monroe of Fusion Athletics Club, 14.93. And from the Velocity Track Club, in second position, I think it was Leah Campbell. Indeed, Leah Campbell coming in second in 15.30 seconds. So that will complete the round of events for the girls under 11, 100 meters. As we move into the boys category, also we're going to have four finals there. And uh, Bonad is going to call for us the competitors in section one. In section one, we have four athletes who are facing the status here. Lane three, Romario Philip from Racers. St. Joseph Convent and George Nequan Charles. Lane five, Tyrone Maxman. And Randy Jr. Perryman from Bolt. Bolt Maxman and Bolt. Bolt, Bolt Maxman and Perryman from Bolt. So four athletes on the, on the status orders, and they should be off momentarily. In fact, um, the events are going rather smooth one after, the, one after the next, one after the next now, after slight delays earlier. Well, we're still in the under 11 category. We have the under 13, the under 15, under 17, under 20, and the 20 plus. So quite a lot of events. And following the boys under 11 category, we're gonna hear a change of voice in the microphone. And they're up and running. Let's see who's hungrier for it here now. St. Joseph Convent in Nick Juan Charles. Was looking good, but here comes the athlete on the outside from Bold. Looks like Tyrone Maxman. Maxman. Tyrone Maxman looking good and powering away with great leg speed as well. Maxman wins it now with a commanding lead as well. A battle for second and third between Nikwan and Romario. But an impressive run here by Tyrone Maxman of Bold Club. Very impressive run. In fact, at about 50 meter mark, he, he just bossed the race and took it over. Well, living up to his name, I would think a Maxman indeed is Tyrone. 14.61 on 11 14.61 that's good competitive time Nick Juan Charles of the St. Joseph Convent was second and Romario Philip from Runners was in third and we are getting ready for the next event on the track in section two of, of four we have four sections and that's boys on the 11 and we expect uh, the lane assignments uh, in lane one, Jonathan Modest, it's from St. Joseph Convent. Well, he's not there, he's scratched. He's not there. So in Odie Williams from, from St. Joseph Convent, then in lane three, Nikon Roberts from Caracou. 
lane four is Scratch, lane five Sean Park from Velocity. Well, there they go. They're ready to go in the second of four finals in the under 11 boys category. Ode Williams, Nikwan Roberts, Sean Park, and they're up and running now. St. Joseph Convent, it seems as though there's a false start. They've been called back here. All of the officials onto the track trying to get them back. A false start call here in the second of the full finals. The youngsters are anxious. So you were witnessing the Whitson Tide Games 2022 in the Karani James Stadium in St. George in Grenada. The live action is coming to you. Well, as we can see, the wind is picking up. We see the lane markers being blown around. Earlier on today, we had wind speeds in excess of three meters per second. And if you're following track and field, you would know that um, legal times have to be within certain guidelines where the wind speed is concerned. Well, certainly there are well, system wind speed. If you look at the t-shirts of the youngsters, you can see them fluttering in the breeze. That gives a good indication as to the strength of the wind. So four athletes are there facing the starters. In lane two. So, so far, the time to beat is 14.61 by Tyrone Maxman in the first of the four finals. Uh, they're up and running one more time. And let's see who comes out here early now. It seems as though it's the athlete from Karakou, Nikwen Roberts. That's indeed Nikon Roberts from Caracol. Looking good indeed too is Nikon Roberts. He wins this one by 10 meters or so over the athlete from Fusion, I think, or from Bolt. But uh, Nikon Roberts wins this one comfortable for the folks out there in Caracol. We look to see what time he returns and how that matches up with the previous finals. His mechanics was, was, was quite impressive. 14.03, as a matter of fact, is a much faster time than the winner of the previous finals. And he looked good. He looked good. So already he's taking a claim for the championship honors. We still have two more finals to go in this category. And in section three. Section three we have on track now we have five at athletes facing the facing the status. In lane in lane three. From Racers Club Aberdeen we have Samuel in Aberdeen in four. Wilson in, in three, Aberdeen in four, Samuel in five, Gunport in six. We're going to try to. Bain sorry, in 11. Sorry, Bernard. In, in but seven. What we're going to do is try to slip in some of the results of some of the events completed earlier on. The boys' 1500 meter run. Tyrion Jacob from South City Rising Stars. He was first in four minutes, 11.38 seconds. As we go back to the track now for the third finals. In the under 11, and they're up and running here. Let's see who comes out first and looking good out there in lane three. It seems it seems to be Job Samuel of the Velocity Track Club, or is it Ramon Stewart from Fusion? It looks as though it's actually Samuel from Velocity who emerged as the winner in this one. That's Kai Wilson, I beg your pardon, from the Runners Track Club. He was the winner here in lane three, Kai Wilson. 15.06 for Kai. Uh, that would be the f fourth or so fastest um, so far. The, the other two sections, the winners were 
well, much faster return, much faster times. So I was giving the, the results of the 1500 meters. Tyrion Jacob was first. Leveran Thorne from Ace was second. And Antoine Blackett of Fusion Athletics, he was third. In the girls' 80 meter dash on the nine, in first was Zaria Barrett of MVP 13.64. Azara Williams from Carico was second, and Alia Samuel of South City Rising Stars was third. We're going to break back on the track now for the lane assignment for the fourth and final finals in the under 11 category. And in lane one, we have Cox from Carico. Lane two is empty. Lane three is Job Samuel. Four, Tyrese Brave Boy from Fusion. Lane 5, Jonathan Labarry from St. Mary's. We have two St. Mary's here, and Jai Peters. Jai Peters from MVP in lane 7. Lane 7 is, is, is empty, and Jaheen Joseph from High Performance. High Performance. Well, the time to beat in this final section of the under 11 100 meters is actually 14.03 seconds a time that was returned by nick and roberts sorry by ode williams of the saint joseph convent saint george for we'll start here by the athlete from velocity track club that's job samuel the athlete in lane three I'm not sure if the false start rule has been applied to these youngsters in the under 11 category. We know for a fact it was not applied to the youngsters in the under 9 category. Correct. And we're presuming that that may be the case here for the under 11s as well. So the entire field has been given the green card here. It means that the false start rule is indeed in effect. And so anybody who jumps the gun now will be disqualified from the event. So we have Karakou in lane 1 and Cox. In lane three, velocity in Samuel. As they run the starters orders one more time. Running with the socks says the athlete from Karaku. And they up and running of Velocity Track Club. Job Samuel out with a flurry as well. He has some challenge coming in now from St. Mary's on the outside. Samuel, St. Mary's on the outside. St. Mary's is making a good move here. St. Mary's indeed. It is St. Mary's. Jaden Bain, it seems like, who looked like the eventual winner. A slow start by Bain, but a good run back indeed, Bernard. Yes, and uh, it's actually a pretty close at the end. With, with it's Bain actually Jonathan and Labari. And, uh, Jonathan Bain. Labari in five, the eventual winner. Labari, Bain, and, and Joseph in eight. So let's see what time Labari would have returned. They said 14.03, the time to meet here for the winning performance. That was the fourth of the four finals in the under 11 category for the 100 meters. And we await the official posting of the results. Then uh, we're going to have the under 13 girls. And they're already on the track and getting ready. So it's girls 100 meters on the 13. And we have four athletes on the track in lane two. Gabrielle St. John of St. Joseph Convent in lane three. Jamika Campbell races. Lane, lane four. Sophia Stevens. And in lane, and lane five, Angel Lewis. Uh, but Bernard, do you recognize that those names, the Jamaica, Campbell, Sophia Stevens, those were athletes that you dealt with two days ago in the private uh, primary school athletic meet. And um, in our discussions, we were wondering whether some of the athletes are actually in programs on the island. The young man, the David guy from First Choice, he's actually with South City Rising Stars. Shemaka is also uh, in that group of persons. So um, we did establish 
that the performances must have had some sort of training. Yes, the, uh, the techniques and the mechanics of, of the actions suggest quite strongly that they were in some form, some form of a formal program of training. Uh, certainly. We are now uh, having the results for event number 10, the girls 100 meter dash under 11. And based on the timings, I can safely say that Connie Marie Monroe of Fusion Athletics is the winner. In second position with Leah Campbell of Velocity Track Club 15.40. And in third position, Ikwana Francis. They're off and running. A good start by the young lady on the inside. That's Sophia Stevens running very well. On the outside of what we can see, that's uh, Angel Lewis. Angel Lewis seems to have the lead, but the athlete is good. It's going to be very close between Sophia Stevens and Angel Lewis. And they come towards the line. I thought Angel Lewis of racing just got the edge in the final moments with the dip on the line. Bernard? This one is too close to call. But again, the, the competitiveness right to the, right to the end is rather commendable. Um, certainly. Yes, as I saw it, Angel Lewis just got her head there in front um, from Runners Athletic Club in a time of 14.28. Sophia Stevens of St. Mary's Junior second, 14.31 was second. And Jamaica Campbell of Runners Athletics in a time of 15.43. Actually, these are the, the three athletes in the under 13 girls division that dominated the pre primary school athletic meet on uh, Thursday. And they, they're in combat again today. And the result seems to be standing firm. So, this is this, that was section one of four. And we are about to wait until the start of section two. It's section two of the girls under 13, 100 meters. Three athletes that are facing the status here. And in lane four, Alea Campbell, lane four from Velocity. Uh, lane six, Afia Hippolyte. And Vonisha Francis from St. Joseph Convent in lane seven. They are off and running. A very slow start from uh, Afia Hippolyte. She got left on bolt. So it's going to be Alia Campbell. She's running away from them. Look, good performance, good format. And Alia Campbell is coming towards the line. In second position is going to be Vanessa Francis of St. Joseph's Convent. Um, and an uh, easy run there for the athlete uh, from, uh, that is Afia Hippolyte. Um, who won it? Campbell. Campbell. Yes, that. It's that. Alia Campbell. Alia Campbell. Alia Campbell of Velocity Sports Club. Elizabeth Durant finished in second. Elizabeth Durant. And in third position, we had the athlete from St. Joseph's Convent. Only three athletes doing a time of 15.24, 15.68, and 18.6. It respectively and that was section two or four and remember it's a time event the the eventual winner will be the the athlete with the best time from all four sections so we are about to witness section three or four lane two yearwood from mvp Lane three is empty. Lane, f lane four, Bascom. Five, Cambridge. Six, Percy. They're off and running. And uh, the leader is, uh, that's Michaela Campbell. Uh, Tishwana Bascom is also running very well. The athlete from Karaku is also trying desperately. But there's a runaway for the athlete in, in lane number four. And that's Tishwana Bascom of Bull. She won that event very easily. In second position is the athlete. Uh, that's Azora Percy. Uh, and... Uh, Tishana Bascom in that order. So that was section three or four of the girls 100 meters under 13. Tishana Bascom 13.76. Akela Cambridge 14.72. And Azara Pursue in 14.94 seconds. As we saw, Tishana Bascom actually won that event very easily. Um, I'm excited to see what that time is. Because uh, these, all these events are based, they are finals within their own right. But the winner, the original winner, the, medal with, the medalist, will come from the persons with the first, second, and third best times out of all the four final heats 
if we should call it that. And then section four of or four. So this is the final section in this girls under 13, 100 meters finals. In lane one, Kaya Allen from Kariku. And from lane two, Kiana McIntyre from MVP. Lane three, uh, lane three is Gianna Gilbert, track blazers. And she's organizing her, her starting blocks now. Lane four is empty. Lane five is Eliza Rose Benjamin from Track Blazers. Lane six, Omelia Noel from Racers. Janik Hazard from Track Blazers in lane seven. The rivalry continues uh, between these athletes. Eliza Rose Benjamin of Track Blazers. So she's in a structured uh, club program uh, because uh, she participated on Thursday in a pre-primary school event. In lane three, we have Gianna Gilbert of Track Blazers. So we have two athletes on Track Blazers in positions three and positions five. They're getting on their mark. Five athletes in section four finals. They're off and running. Good start by Elijah Rose Benjamin. She's up and explosively. The athlete from Karaku is on the outside and in the inside lane running very well. But it's going to be Benjamin. But the athlete from Karaku is running away with it. That's Kayla Allen. She's coming towards the line. She takes it very easily in second position. And Gianna Gilbert of Track Blazers. And it's going to be very close for the third and fourth positions, respectively. Uh, excellent run from Kayla Allen of Karaku. Um, she ran on the inside lane and she won it very, very easily in a time of 13.53 seconds. In second position, as I saw, Gianna Gilbert of St. David struck Blazer in a time of 13.77 and Kiana McIntyre of 473 MVP in a time of 14.65. So we'll just await the statistic uh, relative to the four different sections of the finals and then we can come up with the official result in the one, two, and three positions. What we can confirm is the overall winner. But just to repeat, we can confirm the original, um, the winner of the girls' 100 meters on the 11. All three sections combined. The overall winner was Kiana Marie Monroe from Fusion in 14.83 seconds. We are getting ready now for the boys' division in the under-13 category. Um, in this event, the record is 11.92, set in 2017 by Kai Lawrence. And so uh, we have the off and running. Good start there from, uh, that's Kayba Stevens. Uh, he has it now from the athlete in, from Karaku, who's running, also running well. Uh, then there's the other athlete from Fusion and Bolt. As they come in towards the line, it's a very easy win for the Marlon McIntosh, that, that seems to be. That was the conclusion of, uh, of it, the boys' 100 meters on the 13 section one of three so we have three sections uh just concluded the first section and the winning time with javin noel from sun city rising size 13.19 second kai stanis stanis claus from carry 13.52 seconds the second please Actually, that's, but now that seems to be section two of the four finals. And um, based on the documents that we have, we only have listings for three finals. Um, so most likely there's some sort of merging of the events depending on the amount of athletes that have been registered to make it simpler and probably for time saving. So we into the... We entered. There's a lot of action here at the Winston Tide Games 2022. All time, the final.
they often running a brilliant start from the artist from Karaku. Also on the inside of him is Kimari Joseph of MPP. They're coming down now. It is Karaku that is running away from them. That's Tyler Davis. Uh, he's coming away. He's going to win it very easily from the athlete from Bolt Fusion and Bolt in that order respectively. So a great run there from Tyler Davis from Karaku and P.T. Martnik in section two of the three finals in the boys 100 meter dash under 13. As I intimated to you a while ago, uh, the record for this event is 11.92 seconds set on the 6th of June 2017 being held by Kyle Lawrence. A great run from Tyler Davis there, Bernard. He had a good start and from a good start, he, he actually led from, a, from about the 60 meters right at the end. And his winning time of 13.14 It's seconds. impressive, very impressive. <laughs> It is. Yeah, it's a, it's a good time for the under 13 category. So we're getting ready now for the third section of this boys 100 meter dash under 13. Uh, we can see in lane three. The following athletes are asked to report to the ceremonies room. Lane three. That should be Carvon James. Um. His number is on the side. Should be Carvan James. Then we have from uh, Track Blazers number four ninety eight. That's Christian Lessy. He's participating. Yvonton Nimblet of uh, SVG. Nimblet of uh, SVG. He's participating. He's in lane number six. Out in lane number eight, that's Dionel Forrester of Bolt. So we have in lane number two. And the coming into this event, their favorite to win this this one is is Trey Sparks San Bernard in lane two. So Carvon James. Carvon James. He's scheduled to be in in slot three, but he's in slot two. So we have participation from the off and running. Good, good explosive start from Carvon James. The athlete from Trap Blazers is also running well in the middle of the trap. From St. Vincent is also trying on the far side. So too is the way they're coming towards is going to be Trap Blazers. The athlete from Trap Blazers, he comes towards the line, he takes it very easily. Great run from that Scarvan James on the inside. He must have finished second. So it seems to be that's Christian Lessie Christian Lessie. has won it. From uh, that's going to be Carvan James of MVP, and it's going to be close for a third in the final uh, of the three boys 100 meter dash qualifying time. So that was section three of three in the boys 100 meters on that 13. Bringing to the end the conclusion of event number 13 here on the card. So the next event on the track is the under 15 series. Uh, we are uh, starting with the under 15 girls and there are six sections in this one. So we got a lot of running in this one, six sections, the under 15 girls, 100 meters. In lane two, it's Ari Rose Noel from Bolt. Ari, no, Ari Rose Noel from Bolt. Kayla Christopher, Track Blazers, lane three. Denique Degans from MVP in lane four. Makeda Henry in five. And in six, Cheyenne Joseph from St. Joseph's Convent. They're on their mark. They're off and running. A good start by the athlete from Track Blazers. That's Kayla Christopher. She has the lead at the moment. Makeda Henry is also running good from the same thing. But it's all going to be Track Blazers. Kayla Christopher, as he comes towards the line, she wins it very easily. A superb run. This is going to be an excellent time. Um, and she's setting the mark uh, down with the sex first section of this final event to the girls on the 15 category. Uh, we win on the times, but it's a great run by Kyla Christopher of Chuck Blazers. Not the most competitive. She had very little or no competition from the 60 meter mark 
but she accounted for herself quite quite well. That's Kyla Christopher from St. David's Tract Blazers. Look at the time, 12.78 seconds. Makeda Henry of South City Rising finishing second, 13.71. And Danique Degans of 473 MVP in a time of 13.83. That uh, concludes section one of six of finals in the girls 100 meter dash under 15. So we on to section two. On to section two and in lane three. Lane three from Track Blazers, Kadisha Nori. Lane four, Daria Forrester from Bolt. Egypt Regis is in lane five from South City Rising Stars and Karaku is in lane six. They're off and running. The athlete from Karaku uh, blundered slightly, but it seems to be Kadisha Nori um, who's having it now from Track Blazers. Then uh, the Daria Forrester is seeming to accelerate it and has won this event. It's Daria Forrester of Bolt, Kadisha Nore of Track Blazers, and the other two artists is Egypt Regis, SCR, and Odisha George of Karaku finished in those positions respectively. And the winning time, uh, 13.32. So a great run from Egypt Regis of South City Rising Stars um, in a time of 13.32. We're getting ready for the third section of six. And in lane one, Doisha Lewis, lane two, Kimana, Kimaya Peters. Nayama Charles is in lane three. Kai Griffith is in lane four. Hadassah Greenwich in lane five. Dejan, Dejane Brown in lane six. Fascinating with the quality of the names, Bernard. <laughs> and they are off and running. Uh, the artist that's Kimaya Peters of Sass is going well. So too is Dorisha Lois of, of Racing. On the outside is the young lady from Karaku who is finishing very strongly. And it's going to be Dana Brown from Karaku winning it from Kimaya Peters in second position. Close for third between the athletes. That's Niyama Charles and Kai Griffith of Bolt. But a convincing victory on the outside for Dijon Brown of Karaku and Pity Martinique. Yes, Dijon, Dijon Brown accounted herself quite well. She had a sort of a slow start, but as the race progressed, uh, her top end speed came into play and she, she accounted herself quite well at the end. Certainly. Um, so that has accounted for three of the six section finals in the girls 100 meter dash on the 15. The record for that event is 12.68, established on the 3rd of June 2017 by Talia Sampson. And section 4 of 6 in lane 1, Christiana Charles in lane 2, Arisha Regis. Monique Binder from finish line is in lane 3, Garcia Ligat Wood from high performances in lane four, in lane five, Camilla Church, Jemmy and Guy in lane six, seven, Amaya, Calendar and Calafia, Joseph in lane eight from St. Joseph's Convent. A little bit stuttered. They start there and they had to be brought back. So we have an athlete participating from St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, from high performance in Garcia Leetwood. Um, we have a full house here of eight athletes. Representation from SAS Fusion finish line, high performance, RAC, CAC finish line, and St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. They're going to be on their mark again. Eight young ladies in full section. They're off and running. This is going to be close. 
On the inside, it seems to be Camellia Church of Racing, who is looking good. On the outside of us, Jermaine and Guy. But they're coming towards the line, and it's going to be Camellia Church, it looks like, takes it from Garcia Lightwood. And it's close between the athlete in lane number one. That's Christina Charles. And on the outside and from finish line, Amaya Chandler. We'll wait on the official result. But it is Garcia Leetwood. Garcia Leetwood of high performance. Won that event from Monique Binder and Amaya Chandler. In times of 13.26, 13.43, and 13.64, respectively. And that 13.26 is perhaps the best time in, the, in this category for thus far. The second best time, on correction. Yeah. We're getting ready for section 5 of 6. Another full, uh, another well represented section here in lane one. Shaikinia Dixon from High Performance in St. Vincent in lane one. Huana Patterson in lane two. Kashanti Mitchell in lane three. Brandy Taylor in lane four. Anisha Howard in lane five. Jazaria Jahaza. Johnson in lane six, Alicia Gordon in lane seven, and Zekisha Kelly from Mustang in lane eight. Yeah, yeah but Mustang is seven. Yeah. Okay. So seven is also um, represented in this heat. Yeah, in high performance, uh, Shaikina Dixon, and it's a challenge. Um, of the names that we encounter these days. Um, let's hope that the pronunciations are correct. And we uh, apologize. And we apologize in case we do. <laughs> we have mispronounced. <laughs> Anyhow, you're not. You're witnessing the 2022 with some tight games right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium um, in bright sunshine. It's a little bit hazy, strong wind blowing subtly. And. Um, as said before, we have had uh, wind speeds of 2.8 to 3 seconds per minute. They are on their mark, a full house here. They are off and running. The athlete from uh, that's um, from high performance is going well. Also, too, Joanna Patterson is running good in the middle of the track, but it's going to be Dixon from high performance. What a smooth action towards the line. She wins it very easily from in second position, Patterson, and way on the outside from Mustangs. I thought Zekisha Kelly finished third. But it was easy for Dixon, Shaikina Dixon of high performance, uh, herself and Joanna Patterson of Mustangs. They fought out the first and second positions, and uh, Zekisha Kelly of Mustangs on the outside, I thought, finished third. We'll wait on the official results. Another good performance from the athletes from St. Vincent, from the club high performance, Bernard. And uh, quite competitive, this one was in, in, in the end. We are winding down in the track and field season and for performances like this at this time of the year, it says a lot for one's training and competitiveness. Yes, certainly. Continuity in training. Um, but I presume that a lot of these artists are ha having their sights set on greater things and the whole training process is one is a continuous one even though there are not meets for them to participate on a competitive level but um if you're looking forward to next year then um you'll have to continue training not with the intensity that one would expect as if you are preparing for games but you keep yourself at a certain level so the next event is, is section six of six in this girls under 15 in lane one Aliyah McDowell in lane two, and 
Elia McDowell is from High Performance out at St. Vincent. In lane two, Emma McIntosh from MVP. Kedona Douglas is in lane three. In lane four, from Velocity, Rosemary Thomas. Demaya Daniel in lane five. In lane six, we have Lauren McIntosh again from MVP. Two persons represented here. And Track Blazers in lane seven. In Track Blazers in lane eight in Shady John. Um, lane number seven is seems to be vacant. Lane seven is vacant. So we have participation from high performance here again in the person of Aliyah McDowell. Um, we have Fusion Racing Track Blazers. They're up. So far, the, the activity has been going very, very smoothly. Very smooth. Uh, very, very smoothly. And um, it's reflective of the quality of officiating that we've been having um, and been seeing over the last two days. Also, Bernard, very significant. You can see a lot of the young athletes. This is our under 15 category, and most of them are using the starting blocks. They're off and running. Good start by the athlete from, from racing in Kedona Douglas in the middle. And they're coming down to it seems to be Kedona Douglas who is having it at the moment. On the far side is uh, Track Blazers. Kedona Track Blazers is finishing fast and they just got there. The athlete from that Shade, John may have just nipped uh, Kedona Douglas on the inside there. But we'll wait on that result. A very good run from Shade John of Track Blazers. She's finished very, very strongly out in eight, lane number eight. And we await the time as we come to the conclusion of event number 14, the six uh, finals. Let's look at the replay. Look at the athlete from that Shade John. Powerful running. You can see the lifting of the legs. She's using her metatarsals. Not really. Uh, she's getting good thumping. At this point, the athlete in lane three was in the lead. That's Kedona Douglas, but I thought she just lost it. Shade John of St. David Shark Blazer in a time of 13.05. Kedona Douglas of Runners Athletics in 13.18. And Lauren McIntosh of MVP in third position. And combined, the, the best times in this event um, came from Ke Kala Christopher in section one and 12.78 second and in section so we're moving into the event number 15 the boys 100 meter dash on the under 15 category the record time there for the games is 10.90 established in 2002 by Taddison paul we have in lane one from finish line calvin harris in lane two, we have Carl Jean Walters of Bolt. Andre Fletcher Jr. of Track Blazers is in lane three. In lane four, Daniel Mark of Racing. In lane five is Kazim James of SVGS. Khalid Peters of Carco and Pity Martinique is filling the berth in lane six. Zepinaya Murray of Racing is in lane seven. And no participant in lane number eight. Bernard. The name Daniel Mark again. Yes, yeah, so, so if I can just go back very briefly. Uh, we are about to start. We are about to witness the start of of the under 15. Daniel Mark boys. is in lane four. Let's look at him. He was superb in the private primary school games uh, two days ago. Um, but looking at this field here, it seems to me that the runners are looking a little bit stronger. Uh, they, so I expect him to get some competition, but we'll watch as the day progresses his progress. Five sections in this. Yes. This is section one. <coughs> so it's Harris, Walters, Fletcher, Mark, James, Peters, Murray, and Williams. 
They often running good start by Calvin Harris of finish line on the inside. Also running good well, uh, well is cousin James from St. Vincent. The athlete from Karku is also finishing very strongly. That's Khalid Peters. It's close between Peters and uh, the athlete from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's between Peters and James. I thought Peters from Karku, Khalid Peters, just got his head on the line to deny cousin James of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We'll wait on the official result. But from our standpoint here, it seems that Khalid Peters may have just won it out of lane number six. Ex As extremely close. I think uh, th <laughs> this one is going to go to the photo finish. Yes, certainly. Um, um, Daniel Mark didn't perform so well today. He's come up against, as I thought, some stronger looking running guys. As we look at the uh, replay, you can see the athlete from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That's from uh, Kazim. But the athlete from Karku, Khalid Peters, what an excellent run from him. He just got up on the line to win it. So, so Karku is being excellent today. So it, it is Khalid James. Yes, Khalid, uh, Khalid, Khalid Peters. Peters. Yes, from Karku Athletics in a time of 12.56. Cousin James of St. Vincent, the Grenadines track team, 12.58. And Calvin Harris of Finish Line Sports Club in a time of 13.43. And w one of the famous Grenadian names, uh, um, Andre Fletcher Jr. might be the son of um, the well-known cricketer Andre Fletcher. Uh, it's possible. It's highly probable. <laughs> um, I think what we could uh, try to do here um, to assist the listeners um, in terms of giving the result, maybe we could put down the times the first three persons, and so we do our own statistics as relative to the results until we meet in. Okay. All right. Great. All right, so we have just concluded um, event number section one of the event number 15. That's the boys 100 meter dash for under 15. So we're getting ready now for section two. In section two, we have Brandon. Well, that seems to be Renel Batista finish line in, in lane two. In lane four, we have LeBron Granger of SCRS in lane five we have Rickerton Edwards of finish line in lane six we have Maverick Frame of MVP Tevin Lewis of SAS is in lane seven and Michael Romain of St. Joseph's Convent St. George's is in lane eight they often running and it's a good start from the athlete from finish line in the middle of the track. But also coming to now is LeBron Granger. He's looking good. He's running away from them. LeBron Granger is going to win this one very easily from the athlete from finish line in second and third positions, respectively. And on the far outside, I thought Tevin Lewis from SAS may have finished fourth. But a great run from Rickerton Edwards of finish line in the second section of the five finals of the boys 100 meter dash under 15. LeBron Granger, as I saw it, of SCRS, and he won the event very easily in a time of 12.33. In second position was Rickerton Edwards of Finish Line Sports Club in a time of 12.88. And Tevez Lewis of St. Andrews Anglican Secondary SAS in a time of 13.01. Well, I can tell you, Patrick, LeBron Granger is a familiar sight here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. We saw him at the Intercall Games running for GBSS. Yes, yes, yes certainly. He, he dominated his category. Now he's competing for the South City Rising Stars. An impressive 12.33 seconds. And he won this event very easily and by some distance and margin. So um, already his time to is better than... Uh, the compatriot and uh, Scarlett Peters from Karakou who uh, yeah, ran the previous uh, race. Who won it, yes, certainly. We're going down now to section three, and we have in lane one, McNeil Frame. There's no athlete in lane two, in lane three. I can see that's a Tabil Joseph. Then we have Kimron Macklin. They're off and running. A great start by the athlete there from Tra Tra Blazers on the inside. Uh, Karakou is also finishing strongly. But uh, he's running away from them now. It is Jordan Sandiford who's coming towards the line. He wins it from the athlete in, from Karakou and Pity Martinique. And in third position was Jordan Sandy of racing in that order. So we wait on the timing there.
Again, another very competitive race, and uh, the athlete winning here looks as the athlete was out there from uh, South City Rising this Stars, that's uh, Cameron Matlin, 11.74. The fastest time by far, an impressive time indeed by Mathlin. Uh, Tabil Joseph also ran um, gallantly. Um, this is good running. SCR Cameron Matlin won it easily from Tabil Joseph of Karakou and Piti Matnik. In a time of 11.74, a, a real good time, Smitty. Indeed, it's a good time, yeah. and again, the most impressive time of all of the athletes in this category so far. 11.74, the next fastest time being 12.33. So already he has um, established himself in this event, and as the leader, he is, is one to beat. <laughs> yes, certainly. Yeah, good run from Tabil Joseph for Karako Athletics in a time of 12.11. We look at that and see if he can finish in the first three places. And then we had McNeil frame of MVP uh, in that order. So we're moving on to the fourth and we're moving on very quickly um, into the section four of five in the finals of the boys 100 meter in the under 15 category. Uh, they, all boats are filled at the moment. So we have Rishon Daniel of Bolton one, Daniel Remy of High Performance at uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines in two, Nathaniel Douglas of Fusion in three, Cameron Antoine of Track Blazers in four, Cameron Joseph of SCRS in five, Alian Dikoto of MVP in six, Christian Nicholas of Finish Line in seven, and bringing up on the outside eight athletes is Korani Joseph of Karaku and Pity Martinique. So we're getting ready for section four or five. In event number 15, the boys 100 meter dash under 15. There's no athlete. Uh, Daniel Remy is not participating from high performance in Vincent and the Grenadines. So we have seven athletes. Also the seventh birth, that's Christian Nicholas of Finish Nine. He's not participating. So six of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rishon Daniel in one, Douglas in three, Antoine in four, Joseph in five, Dakota in six, and uh, Christian Nicholas in seven. They brought to the standing position, receiving some instructions from the starter. Um, Smithy, I think the false starting rule is in play today. Absolutely so, absolutely. And at this age category, it definitely needs to be in place, the under 15. I mean, these guys can compete at the international level, at the World Junior Games, etc. Yes, and the CSE um, Games, yes. They're often running a good start. That's a false start, and I think this athlete is going to be in trouble. That is the, the athlete from um, SCRC, Kamal Joseph. Well, that is going to be a terrible loss here if it is indeed um, Kamal Joseph from South City Rising Stars. He's one of the athletes to look out for in this event. And if from what we saw from the start, it is indeed him. He would feel very disappointed to know that he might be disqualified from this event. Let's see what the we starters will come back with. Come back with, yes, yeah, certainly. He's a little bit nervous at the moment, you can see. Um, let's wait. But, but um, Patrick, it's good to see the athletes being very competitive at this level. We saw an impressive time moment, so Goffey 11.74. And if we can get athletes performing maybe at 11.5 in the under 15 category and lower, it's significant. These are indeed yes, um, great impressive times. times. Yes, the great, great times. Yeah. I mean, the record has been held by Thaddeus and Paul of 10.90 in 2002. And I don't know if you recall Thaddeus and Paul yes, back I then for yes. the West Hall <laughs> Secondary, Secondary School. school. Yeah. And it's a pity his career was curtailed due to injury. 
but he was a phenomenal athlete as a sub junior and junior boy and was responsible for the the, the great successes that the West, West Secondary, Secondary School had. Uh, yes, at the intercollegiate games. In 2002 yeah, when yeah, they won the championship. When they won the championship, certainly. I was part of the presentation college um, contingent at the moment, so I re remember that vividly. So we're getting ready, they're getting the ready again. They're on the set position. They're off and running. Good start by the athlete there from, uh, that's Kamal Joseph. He has the lead in and the athlete from the on the inside. Now we can see Bolt also running very well. But it's going to be close as they come towards the line. Uh, it's between Kamal Joseph, uh, Rishon Daniel, and on the far outside, that seems to be Christian Nicholas of finish line. Let's wait and see how that goes. Well, it was a very close one indeed. I think um, Kamal came out very early, but a good run back by Rishon Daniel on the inside. As we look back here now, we see here Kamal with a slight lead over Daniel on the inside and uh, as the race continued to progress Daniel really came into his own and then we also saw from the other side the athlete from uh, Karaku and which is Karani jo jo Joseph yeah finishing very very well, look on the inside here it looks as though Daniel might have just edged him out for the first place with the official result and this one but a close finish indeed I think I think it might be Kamal Joseph. Well, let's see what the uh, official I, I thought come he up just with. got his chest in front in the last couple of strides. He just uh, asserted himself. But we wait on that. But that's the kind of finish we expect to see in the under 15 boys category. As the, the finals continue, we expect the faster athletes to emerge. Certainly. And let's see what time these youngsters return here. Again, the officials are having their time because it was that close. It maybe very close at the line of three athletes. Maybe yeah. they're looking at the photo finish as well because we have those facilities here to judge the winner in cases where it's that close. And I'm sure they may have be having a second and third look at the finish to determine the eventual winner. Um, it's going to be a close one between Rishan Daniel in lane one and uh, I think it was uh, Kamal Joseph. Joseph. Kamal Joseph Kamal is the eventual uh, winner. Uh, as I saw it, Kamal Joseph of South City rising, the time of 12.82. Um, Rishan Daniel given the same time. Um, so it, it has to be a whisker between both of the athletes. Rishan Daniel of breaking out le legacy. And Korani Joseph, he was on the outside in lane. It finished strongly but just couldn't get there from Karaku in a time of 12.96. Well, so whenever they have the same time, it means that they have to use the top so yes to determine and it means that the lean was greater by Kamal uh, Joseph, Joseph I saw that on the line he just chested the, the, the tape in, in time to just pick up the athlete on the inside so it was indeed the photo finish to determine the winner certainly Smitty so we're getting towards the section 5 of the 5 finals and we have a full house here in lane number 1 we have Jaden Pear of Bolt in lane 2 we have Josh Thomas of SCRC John Sinster of Sasses in 3 uh, Toby Samuel Abe of VTC, Delron John of Sass is in lane 5, Infusion is represented by Amari Francis in lane number 6, in lane 7 we have Nazari Nash of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and out on the outside in lane number 8 we have Ethan Thomas of Exceed, another club from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. A false start, the athlete on the inside, that's Jaden Pierre of Bolt. Um, let's see what transpires here. He's very disappointed with himself. The official is going across to have consultation with the starter. And so we await that. As we have said in this event, the, the game's record is 12.68. No, sorry, 10.90 by Tadison Paul. And we just reflected on Tadison's performance in the year 2002 for the Wester Hall Secondary School. He's given a, an opportunity to participate. So they're going to have a start again. <coughs> they're off and running. Great start by Ethan Thomas of Exceed on the far side. Also running well is Naziri Nash, I think, but towards the lead on the inside of the scene, TV, Delron John of Sass, who has come right to. And on the line is Delron John of Sass, and it's going to be close between himself and uh, the athlete from SCRC, that's Josh Thomas 
on the inside of there. How you saw it, Smitty? Well, definitely Darren John of SAS. Maybe a surprise winner here, but doing good here. SAS had two athletes in this one. And it was a joy to see them emerging first on the tip. Let's see what the time looks like. 12.21 seconds. He I came in with a time of 12.4, so he has better the time he came in with. And second was uh, Josh Thomas of South City Rising Stars in 12.35. Yeah. Um, a strange uh, running technique by Delron John of St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. Nevertheless, he won the event in a time of 12.21. Josh Thomas finished second from South City Rising Star in a time of 12.35. And Toba Samuel Abe of Velocity Track Club in a time of 12.42. And if I can quickly give you the top three times in all of the five finals, Obviously, the fastest time came from Cameron Maslin of the South City Rising Stars, 11.74. And then we had in the last finals here, Delron John, 12.21, would give him the second best time. And then we also had 12.35 from uh, uh, Josh Thomas of South City Rising Stars. So although we had a very good time from... Uh, Sorry, um, Lebron Granger, 12.33 would be the third fastest Just, time. Yeah. So these would be the top three finishers. But we have some results. So what we're going to do, we're going to go down to the uh, a stadium microphone for the first uh, medal ceremony and finals uh, results as well. And we'll, become, we'll come back with more live action in a moment. So over to the stadium microphone for the medal presentation. Event 7, boys 1500 meters open. Bronze medalist Antoine Blackett, Fusion Athletics. 4 minutes 25.82 seconds. Silver medalist Livron Thorn, Ace. 4 minutes 21.64 seconds. And your gold medalist Tyrone Jacob, South City Rising Stars. 4 minutes 11.38 seconds. Event 8, girls 80 meters, under 9. Bronze medalist, Zaria Berat, 4.73 MVP, 13.64 seconds. Silver medalist, Michaela Cyrus. RAC 13.54 seconds. And uh, position one, gold medalist, Sanjay Simon, St. David's Track Places, 13.38 seconds. We move now to event nine, boys 80 meters under nine. Bronze medalist Caden McFarlane, St. Mary's Junior School, 12.73 seconds. Silver medalist Ronan Lessie, St. David's Track Blazers, 12.66 seconds. And your gold medalist Tyler Clark, St. Mary's Junior School, 12.60 seconds. Event 10, girls 100 meters under 11. Bronze medalist, Leah Campbell. Velocity Track Club, 15.30 seconds. Silver medalist, Micaiah George, REC, 15.09 seconds. And your gold medalist, Connor Marie Munro. Fusion Athletics, a time of 14.93 seconds. Event 11, boys 100 meters under 11. Bronze medalist, Jonathan Labarry, St. Mary's Junior School, 14.25 seconds. Silver medalist, Jaheem Joseph, high performance. 
14.24 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, your gold medalist, Nikwan Roberts, Karaku Athletics Club. A time of 14.03 seconds. Event 13, boys 100 meters under 13. Bronze medalist, Christian Lessie, St. David's Track Blazers, 13.25 seconds. Silver medalist, Javin Noel, South City Rising Stars, 13.19 seconds. And your gold medalist, Tyler Davis, Karakou Athletics Club. 13.14 seconds. Event 14, girls 100 meters under 15. Bronze medalist, Kaydana Douglas, RAC. A time of 13.18 seconds. Silver medalist, Shade John, St. David's Track Blazers. 13.05 seconds. And uh, your gold medalist, Kayla Christopher, also representing St. David's Track Blazers. A time of 12.78 seconds. We move now to, we can back up to event three. Girls Javelin Throw 20 Plus. Presenting your bronze medalist is Shauna Charles, St. David's Track Blazers, 27.29 meters. Silver medalist Amaya Charles, also representing St. David's Track Blazers, a distance of 30.74 meters. Ladies and gentlemen, your gold medalist Denisha Khalees. St. David's Track Blazers, a distance of 32.43 meters. We've come to the end of the very first medal presentation of the day. Thank you very much, Mr. Colin Peters, coordinator of sports in Grenada. So we welcome you back, viewers, to the Kirani James Olympic Stadium, downtown Spice Capital, St. George's. It's the Wilson Tide Games 2022, and we're bringing it to you with the kind courtesies of the Grenada Athletics Association, brought to you by TNR Communication, and uh, in the commentary position, Keith Patrick and myself, Leslie Smith. We've just witnessed the first medal presentation for winners of the field events completed earlier on today and some of the track events, including the 80 meters in the under nine category and the 100 meters in the categories under 11, under 13, under 15, under 17. As we continue with the action here with event number 17, the boys 100 meter dash under 17. And we're gonna have uh, five finals and remind you that the top three times would be um, adjudged as the first, second, and third places. So they all went in for a good time in each of the finals. And uh, Patrick, we've seen some exciting races earlier, some outstanding performances as well. Yes, certainly. And now that we go into the bigger category, we should see some more exciting performances, performances, I would think. Yeah, actually. And um, in the event number 17, the boys 100 meter dash, um, the record time there is 10.8 set by Rico Moultrie. Rico Moultrie was a very outstanding athlete. Well, he was a tall, <laughs> uh, was tall and lanky. Yes. And then um, he just emerged on the scene from nowhere. Nobody was looking for him. He used to be a student of the Westmoreland Most Secondary, Secondary School. School. Yes. And then he migrated to the Bahamas, I think it was. He did represent the Bahamas, I think, in, at in the, the Carrifter Carrifter Games. Games that year. Yeah. And uh, to run a 10.8 in 2017 in the under-17 category, that must have been an outstanding performance back then, and yes, so it still stands yeah. as a record a on excellent. the books. Yes, he was an excellent athlete at the time. Um, so the record is going to be difficult in this category to break. Nevertheless, we're getting ready and prepared. Actually, 
This is going to be the girls' division, event number 16. And we have in lane number one, Amaya Sylvester of SCRC, Alia Gittens of Carico and PT Martinique, Tamaya Thomas of St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary, Kashida Mitchell of Finish Line, Tasha Lewis of SCRC, and Deslia Davidson of Finish Line, and Kishara Mark on the outside of MVP. All slots are filled here at the moment. Well, the record here is 11.92. That was established in 2019 by Yolanda Lewis. So they have a challenging time to, to surpass. But we're going to see who are the top finishers here. We have some familiar names in each of the different sections. Sections, certainly. We're getting ready. So far, we have had great excitement here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. And we are looking forward, as the day progresses, for things to steam up when we come to the categories, the, the senior categories, etc. Amaya Sylvester of SCRC in one. Alia Gittens. Karako and Pity Martinique, Tamaya Thomas, Sass, Kasadi Mitchell, finish line, Tasha Lewis of SCRC, SCRC fielding two athletes here, also finish line having two athletes participating, one from Karako and Pity Martinique, one from MVP, and uh, those are the athletes. Well, we've seen the first, we're getting ready for the first seat, and it would appear that is the two athletes on finish line. Uh, the race is off and running, and the, it's Kashida Mitchell who has the lead from Deslia Deviant. Uh, Davidson, sorry, as they're coming towards the line, Davidson is finishing strong on the outside. So it's Deslia Davidson who won it easily from Cassie Mitchell of finish line, her compatriot. And in third position on the outside from MVP was Kishara Mark. We oh, what I noticed was interesting here, if you only look back at the, the replay, you'll see it, in that the winner, Deslia Davidson, actually slowed down to the tape. And this is an event where you're running for, for time. the fastest time. <laughs> yeah. So it's an interesting um, decision that she took to actually slow down to the finish line when she recognized she was going to win this race. And she has run a time of 13.69. Let's see how that would match up with the others. I wonder if she's cognizant of the fact that she's running on times. Um, because quite obviously... Even if you are in front and winning easily, that doesn't necessarily say that you'll win the event. So you'll try to finish as fast as possible and post a, a time that is competitive. So Coach may want to have a talk with her following this event. She, I'm sure she'll be running in the 200 meters and, probably and she'll be advised against that kind of, of, of practice. We're getting ready for the second heat. In, in lane one, we see Denisha Scott of Track Blazers, an outstanding name. We have Rihanna McIntyre of Finish Line in two. Akela Roberts of Carco and Pity Martinic in three. Serena Charles of SCRC, Kelsey Frank of Finish Line, Kanisha Hosford of SCRC, Tadisha Collins of Track Blazers, and Rihanna Rawlings of Carco and Pity Martinic. There's no athlete. Tadisha Collins is not participating. So they're off and running. A great start. Let's see how they're moving at the moment. The athlete from Karaku is running well. So too is Rihanna McIntyre of finish line. She's going the best of the moment. Coming out of the, the track now is uh, Sirana Charles a challenge. On the inside of it, it's close. Track Blazers won it. The athlete from Track Blazers, a great run from Denisha Scott on the inside. Just finishing strong to deny Rihanna McIntyre of finish line for second position. That was a very good run from Denisha Scott on the inside. She didn't break well, Smitty, but she finished very, very strong. Let's look at this again. Well, we see she didn't have the best of stats, uh, most definitely. She was trailing here to uh, Rihanna McIntyre for the most part. And like a thief in the night, so to speak, she really crept up on her left shoulder here. And as it got past the 60-meter mark, that is where she really began to, to show some good form. And going past... Uh, McIntyre just about now to win it on the line here and a good run back here by Denisha Scott of Track Blazers. Also, uh, Serena Charles finished very, very strong. I thought she finished second. She may have just nipped Rihanna Indeed. McIntyre on the finish Indeed, line. Indeed, she placed second. <laughs> yes, she finished very, very strongly. 
So let's see how these times um, will stand out. So we've come to the conclusion of section two of the three finals in the girls 100 meter dash under 17. Uh, now we're going into the third heat and we have Shekwana Jacobs of Exceed. That's one of the clubs out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have Gina David of Track Blazers, Talia Sampson of MVP, Giolina Dowdy of Phoenix. Um, Phoenix, I don't think that club is here. That's a club um, emanating out of Trinidad and Tobago. We have Shanti Augustine, a uh, name that is synonymous with athletics here in Grenada. Uh, Aliana Dikoto, uh, Jadisha Samuel, and Kamaya Telesford of Track Blazers. So let's look at them there. Well, I can tell you that um, Julina Dowdy from Phoenix, we saw her in the relay meet running a blistering leg in the 4x800 meter. She's here in lane 4, and I can tell you she's one to look out for. But also in this race is Shanti Augustine, and Shanti Augustine is one of Grenada's Carifta athletes yeah. who came from Carifta on the Easter weekend, made it to the finals as well, and uh, uh, they matched up here in lanes 4 and 5. And uh, maybe we can see the eventual winners of this event coming from this particular section. Yes, certainly. Emanating from, from this area uh, and from... As a matter of fact, the second section, the top three finishers were the top three times compared to the first uh, section as well. Let's see what happens here. So quite obviously, yes. And it's going to be a great competition between Dowdy and Augustine. They're on their mark. They're often running. Good start by Dowdy. Good start by Shanti Augustine. The race is between them. Shanti Augustine and Dowdy in the middle of the pack. Shanti Augustine, Dowdy is not having the better of her. It's Dowdy as they come towards the line. Dowdy wins it easily from the athlete on the inside. Shaquana Jacobs of uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines must have fin also finished second. So it seems as though yeah, Shanti would have to finish third. For third. Yes, she has to finish for third. Shanti had a good start, but Dowdy really caught up with her maybe about 40 meters, 50 meters into the race. Yeah. As we look back here, Shanti had the better start from that camera angle over Dowdy. And on the inside from XC, Jacobs was not yet prominently featured in the race, but she came into her own towards the end. Shanti was strongly. in the lead at this stage, but here mm -hmm. is where Dowdy began to make a move here in the middle of the track and then we also saw on the inside Shaquania Jacobs emerging nicely here Shante having to settle for third, third position yeah so Dowdy of Phoenix Track Club in a time of 12 impressive 12.07 12 seconds Shaquania Jacobs of Exceed as we saw it finish second and uh, most likely Shante Augustine of MVP in third we'll await the official results and times well but, um dowdy came in with a best time of 11.95 shante came in with a, a, a time of 12.31 and uh we didn't have a time for uh, jacobs from exceed but uh dowdy a good performance not the best of starts 12.07 her time uh Shaconia jacobs from exceed sports club from st vincent uh 12.19 and we are waiting to see the time for Shanti Augustine. The wind speed was 2.5, so that time would not stand it's outside of the, the limit for the wind speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and as um, and just to compare um, uh, for you, Patrick. Um, with the results that we've gotten, it means that Dowdy would have had the fastest time. S certainly. Shaquania uh, Jacobs, the second, second fastest, fastest time. time. And we have not seen Shanti's time, but the next best time would be 13.46 by Denisha Scott Quart. of Track Blazers. Okay, it's 12.07. Shanti Augustine finished second in 12.19. No, they're still grappling with the result there. Um, so it seems to be very close. In the meantime, we're moving on to event number 17, the boys' 100-meter dash. Uh, the record there uh, from 2017, 10.8 by Rico Moultrie, an outstanding athlete from Westmoreland School here in Grenada, actually participated in the Carifta Games of that year. And uh, there were great expectations. Um, we were looking forward from that athlete, from the Moultrie guy. Um, well, for people who are wondering who <laughs> Moultrie is, he was actually the grandson of the late Sir, Al well, not Sir, the late Alvin Clowden. 
So he came from a Alistair Club, not begging, oh, but not yeah, Alvin. Alvin, Alvin uh, yeah. is still alive. Still alive. We I, don't want to bury Alvin. I'm going to be very disappointed if you hear him say that. <laughs> My apologies to you, Alvin, because we know you're listening to the broadcast. Yeah. yeah. But Alistair Clowden, we know him in the, the cultural arena as well here in Grenada, a stalwart he was. Yeah, a superb sprinter. And that's uh, yeah. um, old three I remember a young man coming to Queen's Park to watch Mr. Clowden and the, Mr. Fletcher and these athletes in, at the time. So we're getting ready for the first uh, section of event number 17. Um, we see in lane number one, Kenzie Matthew of RAC. Shemon Williams of Karku is in lane two. In lane number three, we have Keaton Lewis of MVP. Hussein Jabbar of Racing is in lane four. Declan Andrews of also of Racing in lane five. In lane six, we have Tyrese Andrews of Finish Line. In lane seven, Jaden McQueen of Bolt. And on the outside, bringing up the eight athletes, Daniel Stewart of SCRC. So we are waiting. The athletes in lane number five and six to come forward. Great excitement here. If you are at your homes and you're listening, you have a lot of time to come down to the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It's going to be frantic this afternoon as the sun subsides and we move into the twilight of the evening. Um, so it's just event number 17. We expect to have like 72 events today. We have already had a couple of those uh, which has elapsed. Uh, uh, 17 or so events um, concluded. Those of the track, uh, I mean the field. We had the shot, the put the javelin in various categories. And so we're looking forward to great, great excitement for the last meet, the last athletic meet of the athletic season here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Well, as we move into the boys category, the under 17, here is where we expect to see um, a lot better performances. We expect to see the 11 point, only 11, um, and maybe sub 11 as well. Let's see what these under 17 boys can do if you get a, a 10 9 i'm sure we'll be happy to see something like that uh patrick at, at, at this level in the under 17 category well the record is 10.8 so certainly if we get a 10.9 it's pretty close and it therefore means that the the performances will be outstanding coming a second outside of the record is certainly good running there is no athlete in lanes three and four Four and five, they're off and running. Good start from the RT from Karku. Also running well on the outside is Daniel Stewart of SCRC. But in the middle is going to be between Karku and finish line. Racing it. towards the line is racing. And on the far outside, it is Daniel Stewart of SCRC, who I thought finished second. And the athlete from Karku, that's Shemon Williams. But we wait on the unofficial result. Let's look at the replay. As we look back here now, SCRC and Daniel Stewart had a good start out there in lane 8. But emerging quickly was Hossein Jabbar from Runners Athletics Club in the middle of the field. And uh, he really pulled himself away once he got to the 60 meter mark. And thereafter, it was a chasing game for Daniel Stewart out there in lane 8 who eventually picked up the silver medal here. And it seems as though the athlete from Bold, maybe Jaden McQueen, yeah, just on his inside may have gotten the third. third. Yes. So 11.71, very far from the 10.9 we were looking at, <laughs> is, ho is Hossein yeah. Jabbar. And Daniel Stewart uh, from South City Rising Stars, 11.87, 11.87 seconds in second. And, and Jaden McQueen from Bold, 11.98 in, in third position. So that's it for the first section of the five finals in the boys' event number 17, the 100 meter. And so we're getting now to event number section two. In the same event, we have in lane one, we have Emilio Bishop of SCRC. In lane two, we have uh, Joshua Douglas of Fusion. In lane three, we have Randy Jones of Karaku. In lane four, we have Anton Daniel of Track Blazers. Filling the fifth berth is Ravon Sylvester of Racing. 
uh, in lane number six, you have Nikel Bartholomew of Bolt. Chris Clement is in lane seven of Karaku and Pity Martinique. On the outside is Anthony Charles of Finish Line. We have eight athletes participating in section two of the five finals of event number 17, the boys' 100-meter dash for that category. Remember, the record here is still held by Rico Moultrie, a time of 10.8 established on the 3rd of June, 2017. So there they are, they're getting set for the second of the five finals. A huge contingent registered for this event. The under 17 boys, we have uh, five finals. And we're just into the second of these five. 40 athletes looking for glory in this category. Highly competitive <laughs> indeed. And uh, <laughs> if we look towards the background, we see quite a number of athletes there from St. Vincent, Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenadines yeah. in the green and yellow. We also see track blazers in, in large numbers. So too his runners in the, the red and black. So uh, a and, number of and, these. And finish line. Finish line is also represented there. The that athlete on finish line just stepped up. And so too is South City Rising Stars in the, with the gray vest. Yeah. So South City Rising Stars, a club coached by Coffee. And uh, we have the, the, the Fusion. They're not in this event, but they're coached by Kato. We oh yeah, have oh the yeah, 473 that. MVP, a, coach, a club founded only recently by Albert Joseph. And many persons may know Albert Joseph as being the formative coach of Kirani James. He now has this club that trains in the Tantine on the, on the Roy St. John playing field. And they are in the red, 473 MVP. Uh, just by just by way of correction, Fusion is participating in this race. Um, he's in lane two. They're off and running. Good start by the athlete there from on the inside from SCRC. That's uh, Emilio Bishop. On the, in the center of the track, I can see that Shrak Blazers is gone away. Shrak Blazers won it from SCRC, and it's going to be close between the athletes from Karaku and PT Martinique and Bolt for the third position. But a, a very easy win for Anton Daniel of Shrak Blazers. Came, coming through in the middle of the track from uh, lane number four, and he won that. We'll wait on the official time. As we look back here now, a nice clean start by all of the competitors here. And look at um, Daniel, good technique here, just about getting into the dry phase now, and uh, really pulling away quite early from about the 30 to 40 meter mark. He had some good challenge on the inside from Emilio Bishop, but Anton Daniel was just too good on the day 11.36 Anton Daniel, a much faster time than we saw previously. 11.63 for Emilio Bishop and 11.96 for Chris Clement out of Karakou. And Pity Martinique. Um, how close is that time as reflective of the first heat? Well, Smithy? much much faster than the first heat. The first heat, the fastest time would have been 11.71 by um, Hussein Jabba. And now we see Anton Daniel doing 11.36. As a matter of fact, Emilio Bishop, who ran 11.63, was also faster Dan than Jan um, Jabbar. Jabbar. Yes, yeah, certainly. So the second heat actually is in the lead at the moment. We're getting ready for the third section. We have Antoine Aline of SCRC in lane one. Jaheem Williams of high performance out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in two. We have Jonathan Newton of SCRC. SCRC has two athletes here. Ethan Isaacs of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in four. Jamie Penny of Finish Line in five. O'Neill Joseph of Sass in six. Loic Paul of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in seven. And Shermick Gibbs of MVP. So we have two athletes uh, representing SVG in this event in lanes four and seven. We have athletes from Sass. Two athletes from SCRC in the names of Antoine Andrelin and Jonathan Newton. So we expect to see another exciting one here in the under 17 boys 100 meter dash. It seems as though the athlete that's Chris Clement is not participating. So, Well, Chris Clement ran in the event just before. So I think who is missing here is the yeah. athlete in lane 7. as Locke Paul from SVG. So they're off and running. Uh, great run here now. Uh, 
On the inside is going to be Antoine Aline who has the lead. The athlete from St. Vincent is finishing fast on the outside is, is Shemar Gibbs or MVP. And I thought that's the way to finish. SCRC Antoine Aline, um, he won that event very easily. In second position, finishing fast on the outside is between Shomi Gibbs of MVP. And on the inside of him, I thought the other athlete from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ethan Isaac. But we wait on that. Wait on the official results. And, but as we have the replay now, we can see a clear winner in Anton Antoine. And let's see how it's coming towards the line. It seems that the athlete outside, Shomi Gibbs, would have finished second. And... Uh, Inside of him, Oatmeal Joseph of Sass. That's the way I saw it. Indeed, it was Aline who won this one, 11.76. Gibbs second with 11.89. As Gibbs from the MVP and third was O'Neill Joseph of Sass with 12.06. So that's the conclusion of section three of event number 17. So we're moving over to section four in the finals of the boys 100 meter dash in the under 17 category. Expected to participate are Mikhail Redhead of Track Blazers, Zachary Sobers of High Performance, Delron Delfish of Mustangs, Jamil Brathwaite of Track Blazers. Nathan Hillair of MVP, Matthew Robinson of SVGS, Jaden Clement of MAP, and Shamar Celestine, Celestine of Finish Line. Um, so before they go into the Section 4, I can tell you that uh, Anton Daniel still has the fastest time, 11.36. And so these competitors are already aware of the times that have gone before them and would want to measure themselves and their ability going forward here. So the top three so far is uh, Anton Daniel, Track Blazers, and then we have 11 point, he ran 11.36. We have 11.63 by Emilio Bishop. And then we have 11.71 by Hussein Jabba. We're getting ready for section four. Seven athletes participating. Jaden Clement of MAP hasn't taken his place. Thank you. They're off to a good start. Let's see how they're going at the moment. It seems to be the athlete from St. Vincent and the Grenadines in lane two who has the lead at the moment. Running very strongly on the outside is the other athlete from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, one, two. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, one, two in this event. That's uh, Zachary Sobers of high performance and Matthew Robinson. Those fought out the final, the first two places. And then it's going to be close between the athlete from that Jamil Braffitt from Track Blazers and the other athlete from... Shinar Celestine from finish line. Well, it was a great start by all of the competitors, but um, making a very early run for me. I thought the athlete from St. Vincent in lane 8, that's uh, Shamar Celestine, had a, a, a good start. But emerging nicely was Zachary Sobers from high performance on the inside in lane 2. And really winning this one comfortably indeed. Is, so St. Vincent uh, and Greg is in, ter in third. Um... And the athlete from Mustangs, Delron Delfish, may have finished third. So Matthew Robinson from St. Vincent track team, he ran, he ran 11.32. And Delron Delpesh from Mustangs, he ran 11.41. So we get an intersection five, the final section in this the boys 17 event 17 100 meter dash under 17 javier Cato of exceed that's a club out of st vincent and the grenadines in lane number one in lane two that's tyreek mcsween of track blazers jubani ecolo of fusion in three uh ethan sam of mvp in four kyle ned of sas in five also of sas in number six is deandre andal uh, Jay Delfish of Mustangs from out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And another 
athlete out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Leroy Gloucester, of high performance. Those are the athletes participating. So as we look at the start, DeAndre Andal of SAS is not there. Also, Javier Cato of Exceed. So we have, we, we're having them down at the mark. They're off and running. Great and explosive start by the athlete now from Fusion. That's Jubani Kolo. He's looking good at the moment. The athlete from Champ Blazers is also there. But Jubani Kolo is coming towards the line. He wins it very easily. And it's going to be close between uh, that's Tyreek McSween on the inside and also AJ Delfish of Mustangs on the outside. Well, that was actually Ethan Sam of the MVP, who I judge to be the winner in this one. Uh, let's look back here now, but uh, a good run. As a matter of fact, a very competitive tight and final heat uh finals here yeah. in the middle of the track we see the ethan sam from mvp in the red in lane four yes ethan sam and he actually ran 11.05 which is actually the fastest time on the day so far ethan sam is a guy that already ran 10.94 early on in the season ethan, yes and he ran 11.05 so that's the 10.9 we were looking for. We actually got 11.05. Ethan Sam and AJ Delpesh from Mustangs. I'm sure they are related. They're all from the Mustic area, the, the, the Delpesh. And uh, AJ Delpesh, he ran 11.25 to be second in that final. And Tyreek McSween of St. David's Strack Blazers, or we wait the official third place. Ethan Sam performed excellently in the intercollegiate games for the GBSS this year. Exactly so. Yes. And uh, <laughs> he, he's been having a phenomenal <laughs> season. season yeah. 10.95, as a matter of fact, earlier on this year. So, so far from what we've seen, the fastest time, Ethan Sam, 11.05. And then we also have 11.12 by Zachary Sobers of the High Performance. And then it looks as though 11. 3-2, I believe it is, from Matthew Robinson, also of the SVG. So we get um, into... The, the time for Kyle Ned, who placed third, was 11.29. So he, too, will be featured as one of the top times in, in the finals. So um, Ned may have just, for SAS, may have just taken the third position with a time of 11.21, I think it was. We're getting into the event number 18, the girls' 100-meter dash open, 20 and over. Um, the game's record uh, held by Shireen Simpson on both occasions, 11.01, established the 29th of May, 2004. We have in this first event, we have uh, well, they're off and running. Great start by the athlete from Track Blazers on inside in lane two. The athlete from SCRC is also running well. Look at the athlete from Boot on the outside, but it's going to be Track Blazers. SCRC, a close home, is MVP. So it's going to be Track Blazers, MVP, and SCRC in that first seat in that order, as I saw it here from our vantage point. Well, Shamia Felix had an outstanding run here. She waves to the crowd, very satisfied with her performance. And uh, from the Track Blazers, running out of lane two. 12.47 that was actually Kenisha Dominic so we had the wrong name here on our listing Kenisha Dominic from Track Blazers in 12.47 uh, oh, so actually that was se section 2 of this final um, Track Blazers section 2 And Krista Abel from MVP was indeed second in 12.67. And Brinnell Thomas from South City Rising Stars in third with 12.75. So apparently they have scratched the first of the three finals and moved straight into the, the second, second one. Yeah, precisely so. So we we're going into the third one. And uh, in lane, no athlete in lane one. Let's see how that goes. Lane so there's one. actually South City Rising Stars in yeah. one. Yes, that's Shanika Philip. And she's one to look at for, I can tell you, from the Anglican High School. She was dominating at Intercall. And uh, she also plays football for the national team. So she's one to look at for. Strong legs. In lane, in lane three, it is Kelsey Lambert of VTC. 
Mauricia Puto of Simplex is in lane four. Kishwana Philip of MVP in five. Rhea Flanders of MPP in six. Galen John of High Performance in seven. Tia Laborde of Mustangs in eight. A strong Vincentian contingent yes, in this certainly. race, I would say. <laughs> yes. Um, and based on the last time, probably, let's see how this goes. A false start by the athlete from Mustangs. That's Tia Laborde. Only three sections in this girl's 100 meter dash open on the 20. Uh, two, sorry. The first one was scrapped. So we're getting ready for the final one in this section here. And the time to beat is 12.47 seconds. We have uh, Kishona Philippo comes in with 12.46. Uh, Kelsey Lambert, 12.57. And uh, Mauricia Prieto from Simplex, 11.82. So from the times we had here, Prieto in lane four is definitely one to look out for as a uh, a contender for this uh, event for the medal the gold medal in the event and 11.82 is indeed a good time let's see what she can do today right here in spice capital kirani james Athletic stadium she will receive some strong challenge on either side of herself from lanes one to eight They're off and running. A great start by the athlete uh, there from MVP. But Preto is now getting going. The athlete from SCRC is running a great race on each side. But Preto has established herself. She's running away from them. She's coming towards the line. She wins it easily. From the athlete, that's Sonika Phillip in second position on the inside from SCRC. And it's very close for the third position. But well, a superb run by Mauricia Preto of Simplex Sports Club. Uh, we await on the time. Look at her physique. You can see... She looks an outstanding athlete. <laughs> well, she did well. She didn't have the best of stars. As we see here, MVP to her right in the likes of Kishona Philip came out ahead of her. But she was able to get into the drive phase very quickly. And then Shonika Philip on the inside giving good chase. But it was just not enough on the day to come up against Mauricia Prieto. She won this one comfortably in 11.87 seconds. Not far from her season uh, uh, timing. 1187 for uh, Mauricia Prieto. Shanika Philip in second with 12.31. And uh, Galen John of high performance in 12.54. So that concludes event number 18, the girls 100 meter dash open. Uh, so if I can give just the, 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 the top three times. Um, Marisa Prieto from Simplex had the fastest time. The second fastest time would have been 12.31 from Shonika Philip from South City Rising Stars. And the third fastest time would have been Kamisha Dominic of Track Blazers 12.47. Great. Our statisticians are doing great. Um, and we have to try to keep you up to date as, as best as possible uh, because we are not having a steady flow of the results from downstairs so we do know good things here today um we're getting ready now for event number 19 the boys 100 meter dash on the 20 that's the boys category of the female event that just concluded we have four sections in section one we are going to be having markel tanis of rac in lane three we have davin thomas of cac that's caraco and pt martinique antonio thomas of finish line in four Shamari Hannibal of Fusion in five. Enoch Allard of Sass out in lane number six. Um, Smith, it seems as four participants in this event. Well, there is no Enoch Allard for sure from Sass. But no. we see the very distinguished Mark Tannis yeah. with his uh, hairstyle to go as well from uh, Runners R Athletics R Club. R -R um, look out also for Davin Thomas from Karaku at the committee. Antonia Thomas is there from Finish Line, a virtual unknown. And uh, Shamari. From Shamari from Han Shamari Han Hannibal from mm -hmm. Fusion. Mm -hmm. They're getting ready. They're in the set position. Four athletes.
They off and running. Good start by the athlete from Kyoko and PT Matic. That's Thomas. Thomas has the lead now. The athlete from finish line is going very well. Shamari Thomas is also coming through. Shamari Hannibal, he comes towards the line, he wins it. Uh, Mark L. Tannis is in second position. And uh, close between the athlete from Kyoko and PT Martinique and the other athlete, uh, that's Darwin Thomas of, uh, of Kyoko. So well, a, a quick finish indeed by Antonio Thomas, Thomas of finish line. Yeah. He didn't have the best start. As a matter of fact, he came off the block last. And at this point, he was still at the back. But uh, at the 30 meter mark there, about, he really, really came into his own. And then the arms start pumping, going very high. The legs, the, the leg speed was good. He went past them and then distanced himself from the rest of the field, pulling away and uh, returning an impressive time of 11.50 seconds. Uh, Antonio Thomas of finish line. So, so 11.50, the time to beat so far. We're going into the second section. We have in lane one, Ronaldo Williams of SCRC. Brian Isaac of SAS is in two. Alistair Emmons of Caracol and Pity Martinique in three. Daniel Mitchell of finish line in four. Jaheem Sandy of Stunners in five. And Rovaldino Solomon of High Performance in six. But well, we wait to see if those athletes are taking their places. Well, an interesting situation here, Patrick, in that the under-17 boys category, the fastest time there was 11.05. We're now into the under-20 boys category. And, and so far, the fastest time is 11.5. 11 yeah, so the under-17 category actually ran faster than the under-20 category. Well, we're still in the first of the full final, so let's see what the others can return. But it's just an interesting observation that Ethan Go Sam, 11.05, and even um, the athletes who placed second, we had 11.25, we had 11.32. All of these competitors were much faster than the top finishers so in the first uh, finals of the four in the under-20 boys category. Certainly, great observation. So we're looking at them in lane two. We have the athlete from SCRC, that's Ronaldo Williams. He's taking his place. The athlete from Karaku is also taking his place as Alistair Emmons. No Brian Isaac from SAS. Uh, in lane number five, we have Daniel Mitchell of Finish Line. We have Jaheem Sandy is there from Stunners. And Rovaldino Solomon of High Performance out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is the other starter. So well, we have five of them. It's good to see a competitor from Stunners now. That's up from the western side. They're off and running. Good start by the athlete from SCRC on the inside. He seems to be going the best at the moment. The athlete from finish line is finishing strongly, but it's going to be SCRC, finish line, and close between Stunners and the Karakou and Pity Martinique for second and third. But an easy run through on the inside from Ronaldo Williams of SCRC. The athlete from finish line, Daniel Mitchell, a clear second, and close for third between Stunners, Jaheem Sandy, and Rovaldino uh, Solomon of high performance. Well, the winning time, 11.16 seconds by Ronaldo Williams. Second place was Daniel Mitchell with 11.50. And in third was um, Sandy from Stunners with 12.15. As we look back here, we see it was Ronaldo Williams who really established himself in this race. And in second, was the athlete here from finish line daniel, daniel mitchell, mitchell who was really only playing catch up here to ronaldo williams again i i, I just want to to recognize that the some of the more outstanding performances that we've seen today are from the athletes from the south so city rising stars in the past we were seeing the athletes from the 473 mvp dominating south to a certain extent but i think today south city rising stars um, coached by Coffee and others are really, really showing up um, 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 in, in a big way here today. Um, well, Ace Track Club, we have not seen them yet. We, we generally tend to see them in the over 20 category. categories. Yeah. And we see some of them in the background there. There was one competitor from Ace in the 1500 meters open. He placed second. But Ace is one of the, 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 dominate, the dominant clubs over the years out of the St. Andrew area, coached by Wayne McSween. And these days, it, they seem to be only competing in the under-20 and over-20 categories. 
Um, if, if, if the name Rising Stars is synonymous with the athletes, certainly the performances um, in the games on Thursday, in the private primary school games, those athletes that train and, uh, under Mr. Coffee at the club, they were outstanding. And um, South City Rising Stars is one of the up and coming clubs and um, it augurs well for the development of athletics here on the island. The competitiveness, let's hope that clubs like Fusion and Stunners and all of these clubs will develop more, bring more competitiveness to the athletics here in Grenada. And out of that, we'll get maybe good athletes going out there to represent the 473 in the not too distant future. We're getting ready for uh, three, section three of four. We have five athletes and uh, they're off and running. We have two athletes from St. Vincent and the Grenadines who are running very well. On the inside, the athlete from the finish line is going well. But in the middle of the track is the athlete from High Performance. That's Dante McBonnet. He wandered very easily from the athlete Jolan Langine in lane two. He finished second from my vantage point. That's how I saw it here. But a very great run from Dante McBonnet of high performance out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Indeed, a very impressive performance, 11.09. That's his time, so not a bad time. Very close to what Ethan Sam would have run. Ethan Sam still a little bit faster than him. 11.50 for Jolan Langain, also of finish line. And 11.52, as we look back here now to see Burnett. Winning this one very, Mark Bonnet winning this one very, very comfortably very, very indeed. Very easy, very easy. And so DeAndre St. Louis, 11.52, he picked up the third position. So that concludes section three of the finals. And those of you who are out there, and we thank you for viewing via TNR Communications, the best communication network bringing the, the live streaming right here in Grenada, athletics, football, cricket. And uh, we're going into section number four. Uh, so, so far, I can tell you that Dante McBurnett from High Performance has the fastest has time, the fastest time 11.09. And uh, the second fastest time looks like uh, Ronaldo Williams from South City Rising Stars, 11.16. And then we have 11.50 clocked by two athletes, by three athletes. So we have Antonio Thomas from Finish Line, 11.5. We also have Jolan Langain of Finish Line, 11.5. And uh, Daniel Mitchell, also of finish line 11.5. So you have three athletes from finish line running 11.50 <laughs> for the <laughs> third fastest <laughs> time so far. It'll be interesting to see how the officials will separate that for the third place. But uh, let's hope in this fourth and final section, somebody can return a time faster than 11.50. So to earn a medal, the time that you have to beat here is 11.50. Based on our statistics um, emanating from downstairs with some tight games, the participating teams, and so we have 649 athletes listed to participate. But the, some of the teams from out of Trinidad and Tobago um, was, is not here. St. Kitts and Nevis. In the meantime, let's concentrate on Section 4. The off and running. Great start by the athlete for that's Elijah Simmons um, of, of Simplex. But running on the inside is now high performance. That's Devron Mack. Devron Mack on the line wins it from the athlete. From that, that athlete is from Simplex. That's Elijah Simmons. And also finishing very closely is the athlete. That's Samuel Green of Fusion. So it's very close. But I thought the athlete from high performance, Devron Mack, won that event. Well, the fastest time so far for sure. The <laughs> first time we've seen a sub. 11 time for the day, the Vronrick Mark of high performance, a second sub-11, 10.82 by Rickel Telemark, and that was, that's a very familiar name here, he was very good at the national championship, so three sub-11 times in this one, the top three finishers for sure, in Davrick Mark, Rickel Telemark, 10.82, and uh, Elijah, Elijah Simmons, Simmons of Simplex Athletic Club, 10.96. Yes, uh, Rickel Telemark represented the Presentation Brothers College um, in, the, in the intercollegiate games um, in April and his performances were uh, superb, if I should use that adjective to describe it. But he just found one in Devronic Mark of St. Vincent and the Grenadines of the club high performance, just uh, three seconds outside. 
Uh, that is a great run from Devronic back. Uh, well, uh, what an outstanding <laughs> performance. This is the final of the four finals, the fourth of the four finals. And what a way to bring an end to the finals of the under 20 boys category. Three sub 11 times in that event. And, and uh, 10.69. Yes. The uh, record being 10.40 by Marlon Marlin. That's the game's record. And those guys are really challenging that. We were looking for a time better than 11.5. Well, we got 10.6 well, we and we change. We got three of those. <laughs> <laughs> We move into event number 20, the boys 100 meter dash 20 plus. Uh, the record in this event is 10.24, um, held by Sean Lambert, and uh, at, at the games and at the stadium 10.05 by Justin Gatlin in 2018. So we have three sections of this event. Uh, in the first section, we have. We have a name that's Omari Lewis of Concord. We have Reno Daniel of SCRC. We have Dillion Richardson of Finish Line. We have Zimri Stevenson of Exceed. And uh, probably they may have additional athletes from Section 2 or Section 3. So we'll have to look closely. It's not very vivid in terms of the, the numbers on the various athletes. I'm trying to pick them up, but nevertheless, we have two, four, six. So, what I can tell you, we have Sheldon Francis of AC in one, Josiah Cooper of South City in two, Omari Lewis in three, Matthew Graham in four, Dillion Richardson in five, Zimri Stevenson in six, and Charles Alexander in seven. They're off and running, and this is a very quick event. Look at the athlete in lane number three, and he's running away from them. SCRC is in second position. He's going to be close for second, but the athlete in lane number three won that event very, very easily. Is that Omari Lewis of Concord? Omari Lewis, indeed, of Concord, the eventual winner here in this, the 100-meter dash 20-plus. Not a bad start by Omari Lewis, and although the athlete... In lane four, was very close time. That's Reno Daniel. 10.44, Omari Lewis. Another impressive time here <laughs> from Concord Club. 10.44, 10.82 for Matthew Graham. And Sheldon Francois. Yeah. So what they've done, they've actually integrated uh, uh, sections section one, one and section and two. two. Because Matthew Graham is listed to run in Section 2. And uh, he's from the UTT Patriots as the University of Trinidad and Tobago. So they're, they're listed here as a competing club. The first time we've seen them on the day. And Charles Alexander, who was out there in lane number 7, I think it was, a 6. He placed a third in 10.84. So we have substandard under 11 times again in this event. Which is expected because it's a boy's... Uh, dash and it's 20 plus so we will have two sections in event number 20 um, we're getting ready for the second one carded to run is Cyrus Charles of New Jets we can't we can't leave what the performance of Josiah 10 point I think it was 10.5 10 point it it's 10.88 I think it was who plays fourth that's Josiah Cooper from South City Rising Stars so we had four competitors there with some sub-11 performances. And uh, Josiah Cooper out of the South City Rising Stars has been featured amongst them. So Mary Lewis from Concord, an impressive 10.44. But we have some athletes coming in in, this, in the last finals here. We also with some impressive time. The best coming from Akim Stewart out of Guyana. He is scheduled to run here in lane four. Lane four seems to be scratched. And then the next best time we have... A 10.54, a 10.45 from the athlete from Dominica. He should be in lane five. That's Mitchell Davis. That lane is also scratched from the looks of it. 10.54, uh, Nathaniel Mark unattached. And Barak Matthew from Phoenix, 10.55. Nathaniel Mark Butters, as we know him, he is scheduled to be in lane three. And there he is. Used to campaign for the GBSS just recently out of Barbados, placed in, I think it was second in the 100 meters. 
the off and running. Great level break. Explosive start by Nathaniel Mark, but going very good on the inside of the this is going to be close coming towards the line. It's it's the athlete in lane number two. That's Nathan one Farina. Nathan Farina that just got his head in front on the line and close to a second position. But Nathan Farina won this event. From the University you, of Trinidad and, and Tobago. Tobago. Patriots, yes. So some back to back victories for the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Let's look at the replay. It, this was a very good start by all the athletes, spread right across the track. And up to the 50th meter, it was still close. But as they came towards the line, Nathan Farina established himself closely. Uh, the athlete there in lane number, that's Barack Matthew, I thought, may have finished second. So 10.59, oh. it was actually Barack Matthew who won the event. Right. Well, he was scheduled, he's scheduled here to be in lane six. And uh, we thought he was the athlete in lane mm -hmm. one uh, or lane two, won the event. So 10.59, not as fast as uh, Omari Lewis uh, from Concord of 10.44 for 10.44. Farina actually came in second with 10.6. So he was that close, 10.59, Barak. And 10.6 10 10 is close. Yeah, and Nathaniel Mark in third of one touch in a time of 10.62. So that brings to the end the boys 100 meter dash 20 plus um, event number 20. So mm -hmm. the fastest times uh, uh, Patrick Omari Lewis of Concord 10.44. And then we had uh, Barack Matthew from Phoenix 10.59. And uh, Nathan Farina from the University of Trinidad and Tobago, 10.60. The top three performers there. Schedule on our card, it's the boys traveling through under 17, under 20, and 20 plus. So those are field events. And as we can see from our perspective standpoint, they seem to be going to be a little slight lull in athletic at activity per se on the track so probably we can use this opportunity to take a break bring our stats up to date and we'll be back with you Beautiful sun this afternoon here in Grenada. We thank you very much for joining us at the Granny Games Athletic Stadium for Winston Tide Games 2022. We have a total of 31 participating clubs and teams here today. Plenty of action in store for you. We've only gotten a taste. Only a taste of what is to come. Let's put our hands together for all of our athletes. 31 different participating teams and clubs. Let's hear it for the teams, the clubs, the athletes, the coaches. Let's put our hands together for Athletics in Grenada, Paragu, and PC Martin.
bring for 400 meter action. As mentioned, 21 participating teams and clubs here at the Winston Tide Games 2022. We have 16 clubs from Grenada. We have quite a few clubs from across the region. I'd like us to give our regional clubs a little bit of Grenadian hospitality. So of Antigua and with Barbuda, we have the Phoenix Track Club. Let's hear it for Phoenix Track Club, all the way from Antigua and Barbuda. Joining us today as well, we have the Dominica national team. Let's put our hands together for beautiful Dominica. We're also joining us is the Guyana track team. Let's put our hands together for Guyana. Not to be out of St. Kitts and Nevis is joining us as well. St. Kitts and Nevis has two teams represented today. It's the St. Kitts track team, that's the national team. Let's put our hands together for St. Kitts. And the TC Immortals, also out of St. Kitts. Moving down the chain, out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have the St. Vincent Grammar School. Let's put our hands together for St. Vincent Grammar School. We also have the High Performance Track Club out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Let's put our hands together for High Performance. Mustangs, the Mustangs are also out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. As well as the Exceed Track Club. Exceed out of St. Vincent and Excel. Also out of St. Vincent. Let's put our hands together. Show some warm Grenadian hospitality to our St. Vincent brethren and sisters. We move down to Trinidad and Tobago. Where we have five teams from the Twin Island Republic. Let's put our hands together and welcome Concord Athletics Club. The MAP Maximizing Athletic Potential Track Club. Uh, keep your round of applause going for the point 14 the New Jets Club. Thank you so much, Russell. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get back to the action on the track in just a moment. But we have for you another medal presentation. to event one, girls javelin throw on the 17. Bronze medalist, Kishona Alert, Karaku Athletics Club, 24.99 meters. Silver medalist, Aliyah Kittens, also representing Karaku Athletics Club, 34.04 meters. Presenting now your gold medalist, Serena Alexander, St. David's Track Blazers, 39.94 meters. Event two, girls javelin throw under 20. 
bronze medalist, Nakoda Alexander, South City Rising Stars. 31.45 meters. So she's your silver medalist. Now to your gold medalist, Aliyah Kid Harry, St. David's Track Blazers. 35.85 meters. Event 4, girls long jump under 17. Bronze medalist, Kamaya Telesford, St. David's Track Blazers, 4.67 meters. Silver medalist, Denisha Scott, also representing St. David's Track Blazers, 4.79 meters. Now your gold medalist, Shante Augustine, 473 MVP 5.10 meters Event 5 Girls Long Jump Open Presenting your bronze medalist Krista Abel 473 MVP 4.77 meters Silver medalist, Zianna Bain, finish line, 4.90 meters. Now your gold medalist, Brunel Thomas, representing South City Rising Stars, 5.63 meters. Now to event 12, girls 100 meters under 13. Presenting your bronze medalist, Gianna Gilbert, St. David's Track Blazers, 13.77 seconds. Silver medalist, Tashana Bascom, Bolt, 13.76 seconds. And your gold medalist, Kayla Allen, representing Karakou Athletics Club. 13.53 seconds. We move now to event 15, boys, 100 meters, under 15. Bronze medalist, Delron John Sass. 12.21 seconds. Silver medalist, Tabil Joseph, Karakou Athletics Club. 12.11 seconds. And your gold medalist, Cameron Maslin, representing South City Rising Stars. A time of 11.74 seconds. Fire it all. Event 16, girls 100 meters under 17. Presenting your bronze medalist, Shaquania Jacobs, Exceed Sports Club. 12.19 seconds. Silver medalist, Shante Augustine, 473 MVP, 12.18 seconds. And your gold medalist, Giolina Doughty, Phoenix Track Club. Phoenix Track Club, a time of 12.07 seconds. Congratulations, indeed. We move now to event 17, boys, 100 meters under 17. Presenting your bronze medalist, AJ Delpesh, Mustangs, 11.25 seconds. Silver medalist, Zachary Sobers, high performance, 11.12 seconds. And your gold medalist, Ethan Sam, representing 473 MVP. A time of 11.05 seconds. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We go now to event 18, girls 100 meters open. Bronze medalist, 
Kamisha Dominic St. David's Track Blazers. 12.47 seconds. Silver medalist Shonika Phillip, South City Rising Stars. 12.31 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting your gold medalist, Mauricia Prieto. Representing Simplex. A time of 11.87 seconds. Event 19, boys 100 meters under 20. Bronze medalist Elijah Simmons representing Simplex. A time of 10.96 seconds. Silver medalist Rikyle Telema, Fusion Athletics. 10.82 seconds. Presenting your gold medalist, Devon Rick Mack, High Performance. A time of 10.69 seconds. Congratulations, gentlemen. Event 20, boys 100 meters, 20 plus. Bronze medalist, Nathan Fariha. UTT Patriots. A time of 10.60 seconds. Silver medalist, Barack Matthew, Phoenix Track Club. 10.59 seconds. And your gold medalist, Omari Lewis, Concord. A time of 10.44 seconds. Congratulations, gentlemen, and congratulations to all of the winners. This is the end of this medal presentation. Thank you so much, Mr. Royston LaHaye, former president of the Grenada Olympic Committee. It's now 4-9 in Grenada and the rest of the Caribbean. Welcome again to the Whitsuntide Games. Right here at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. Karani James Athletic Stadium. Thank you so much all for coming out and supporting excellence on the track and field. Now toss things back to Russell John and Roland Antoine. Spice Island, Pure Grenada. So these are our regional teams, but we also have 16 local teams, and I'll give you the rundown of those in just a moment.
There's an update from the field wrestle. The boys are up in the third and final round. Third and final preliminary round. Following which they have three final rounds. The boys long jump under 17s, under 20s. The honest. Out of the Exceed Track Clubs in this the Grenadines, Cody Grant, 6.60 meters. And the under 20s are led by Kadik Stevens. Again, out of the Vincent the Grenadines, High Performance Track Club, 6.60 meters. It's the long jump, under 17s, under 20s. Boys. Thank you very much for that update, Roland. 400 meter action on the track. We're about to witness the girls 400 meter run on the 17 division. Your game's record for this event, 57.86 seconds. Set in 2021 by Shafona Houston. Houston is running out of lane number four today. She's in this race. And she will be representing the South City Rising Stars. So your game's record holder is in this one. She's going to expect a solid competition from the likes of Shante Augustine. Shante running out of lane number five. Her personal best in this event, 58.53 seconds. We also have the likes of Elizabeth Simon from the High Performance Track Club. Elizabeth, that's Solomon, sorry. Elizabeth will be running out of lane number seven. Coming into the season at a minute three seconds in this one. has I feel has to be reset for this one So we welcome you back to the live track and field action at the Whitsun Tide Games 2022 right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium in St. George's, Grenada, Leslie Smith and Bernard Antoine. Together with Keith Patrick to bring it to you wherever you are. We're just about approaching the evening session. The event about to be started, the 400 meter run for the under 17 girls. And uh, we were supposed to have two finals here where the two finals have been integrated. We have in lane three, it looks like Mayola Simon from the Mustangs. In four, Shafonia Houston, South City Rising Stars. Looks like Shanti Augustine in lane five. The under starters orders is the start of the 400 meters for under 17 girls. Shanti Augustine from the MVP in the red and black looking good already, already making up the stagger on South City Rising Stars to a right. But Houston is giving good chase on the inside of Augustine. As a matter of fact, Trefonia Houston seems to be the athlete in front at the moment. 
And on the other side, we have an update there from, it looks like, uh, Kiana Josie from finish line. But with just about 200 to go, it seems as though it is the athlete from high performance, that could be Elizabeth Solomon. Here comes Shanti Augustine from the MVP. Shanti Augustine, she came in with a time of 58.53. She is going to win this one for the MVP. Shanti Augustine it is. She was second in the 100 meters and now she has been back in the 400 meters. Uh, we're going to see what time she returned, but Bonnie had a good run by Shanti Augustine. Well, well judged and it's quite obvious, obvious that she was running with a plan. And that is very important with these longer distances that you don't that you run your race and not somebody else's race and it was obvious she had a race plan for indeed this one. she had a plan because uh, anaya francis from the south city rising stars went past her shanti did not panic she maintained her race plan that's important and knew that she had a good kick to the end a good strong finish and with about 80 meters to go that's when she really turned on the afterburners and went past the athlete francis that's I'm um, Houston, I beg your pardon. Shafonia Houston from South City Rising Stars. 57.21 for Shante Augustine. It's, it's not a bad time, and this is what training does. And you trust your training and you trust that, you trust your ability. Run your race. And she, she knew that she still had some in the tank, and this is what she exhibited right towards the end. A good, good victory, comfortable victory in the end. Well, she got the best of Shafonia Houston, and uh, that is indeed a good win for Shanti Augustine in the under-17 girls category. Elizabeth Solomon from High Performance was third, one minute, 4.8 seconds. Well, that's a personal best for Shanti Augustine. And usually, if you can and do... That should be with a, with a negative win speed, that could also be a games record, because the games record is 57.86 by Shafonia Houston in 2021. So that indeed would be a new record for Shanti Augustine of 57.21 with a negative win speed of negative 1.8, I think it was. Absolutely splendid performance. The next event on the track is the... 400 meters on the 17 boys. I don't know if you saw it, Bernard, but quite recently we saw on the internet a 12 year old returning a time of 54 points in the 400 meters. I mean, that's impressive as it can ever be, yeah? And I'm sure, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sure the sentiments of um, a number of pundits that, that somehow coming out of the lockdown, the athlete seems to, to, to have come, come back much stronger. So it must be because of rust, um, rested muscles and so forth. I don't think we would ever see another um, 400 meter hurdles that we would have seen at the Olympics. At the Olympics, you would yeah. never see another race like this. And Bernard, I want to comment again. We heard uh, Mr. Patrick talking earlier about uh, uh, the composition of the teams. We have 31 teams here, 649 athletes. Out of St. Vincent, we have five teams, a total of 90 athletes coming out of St. Vincent. That's from Bequay, speaks. from Mainland, we have the St. Vincent Grammar School. We have the High Performance, we have the Mustangs, we have Exceed and Excel Sports Club. 90 athletes from St. Vincent. 9-0, that speaks volume. This is a small country and we, we, need to, we need to remember this. This is a small island and to have 9-0 athletes represented in one meet. This this speaks this speaks a lot towards a program that's that's in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and I would expect that in in another few years, you we will be speaking a lot about St. Vincent's track and field program. From Trinidad and Tobago, we have some ten athletes coming from five clubs there. We also have from Phoenix, Antigua and Barbuda. We saw. A winning performance from them. We are from Dominica as well. Well, Guyana was scheduled to perform in one of the earlier races. St. Kitts Nevis in the TC Mortals and the St. Kitts track team. So these are some of the overseas teams. And that would really they add to the competitiveness of the, of the program itself here today. As we move into the 400 meter 
finals in the under 17 boys. The first of three finals, which is Jamie Penny, Aviel Williams, Zaydan George, Sean Henry, and Randy Jones. Two athletes from SAS, one from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Caracou, and then there's finish line. So they're up and running. Uh, let's see who is hungry. Sean Henry seems the athlete from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. For Caracou is Randy Jones. He's out there in blue. And then we have maybe it's Cody Grant from Exceed on the inside. As a matter of fact, he's AJ Delpesh from the Mustangs in one. Kenron Pierre from Mustangs also into Aviel Williams in three from SAS. Lavia Mozart is there, but on the inside is Delpesh. AJ Delpesh of the Mustangs with a commanding lead on the rest of the field. And it seems as though in lane four, Lavia Mozart of high performance in second. But Delpesh wins it comfortable. And it's going to be Mozart for a second. And on the inside of Mozart, it seems as though it's Aviel Williams of Sass who picks up the third position here. But a very commanding performance from Delpesh from the Mustangs. Very commanding, very measured. And again, this is, this is, this is some well representing St. Vincent and the Grenadines here. Well, he AJ Delpesh. He executed his race, race plan to, to perfection. 51.58 for Delpesh to win this first of three, well maybe first of two finals now because the first and second ones have been integrated but a very comfortable win, he was not pushed at all, he was running against himself on the clock so to speak and then also from St. Vincent we had in lane four uh, Mozart, Lavia Mozart with 54.07 Mozart with 54.07, he picked up the second position. And in third was Aviel Williams of SAS. With 54.58. And just to give you a, just to give you a quick refresh on that day, the record in this event is 48.94 seconds. And that was set in 2017 by Elisha Williams. Well, Elisha Williams is still campaigning. He ran a 49.00 earlier this year. He's in a different category now. He's from the St. Davis Track Blazers. And that's the final section of the 400 meters. We will see Jaden Clement, Jordan Jordani Lewis from SAS, Quinn L. Pierre from MVP, Giovanni Jacobs of XL. Aidan McIntosh of MVP, Killon Moses from uh, Track Blazers, Warren John from High Performance, Davis Keo from St. Vincent Track Team, and Louis Giordani from SAS. And Jaden Clement is, is from out of Maximizing Athletic Potential, a club in Trinidad and Tobago. So it's Trinidad and Tobago, SAS, MVP, and Grenada here, XL out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Another, another athlete from, from MVP, track blazers from St. Davis, high performance from St. Vincent, and in lane eight, another athlete from St. Vincent in Keo Davis. So the time to beat for the gold medal here is 51.58 seconds. We saw that being ran moments ago by A.J. Delpish from the Mustangs. The folks in Mustik must be very, very happy with the, the performance of the Delpesh uh, athletes. I'm sure they're related by some stretch because to come from an island like Mustik and you have the same surname, there's only one thing that can be true. You're related. I, I am sure there's probably just two families in, in Mustik. You can't be a cock some character and not be related, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Small islands, but again, St. Vincent is very well represented in this, in this section three here. Unfortunately, we do not have any 
best times for the year. Well, they're up and running in the final of the two finals in the 400 meter for the under 17 boys. And let's see who makes up the early stagger here on this one. We have two athletes from St. Vincent out there in lane 7 and 8, Joshua Warren and Keo Davis. And Davis seems to have a command and this one in the early running is running out there in lane 8. It's not the best lane to run for the 400 meters. The curve is just a little bit too long. And we've seen brilliant performances come out of lane 8. As a matter of fact, a record-breaking performance for at, the, at the Olympics came out of lane 8. But Keo Davis, it is, who is running by himself here now and running hard is Davis, Keo Davis from SVG. He is pushing all he got. He wins this one now. In second, it looks as though the athlete uh, Giovanni Jacobs from Excel Track Club, also from St. Vincent, picking up the second position. But Giovanni Davis came in with a best time of 51.48. Aidan McIntosh came in with 52.23, but it was Keo Davis who won this one. I think... Um 50.51, the best time so far. Excellent running, and I, I think we can safely say one of the days when there was an advantage seemingly in the lane that you selected. Because here is Davis running from lane eight and taking care of the field rather easily. And it goes back to the old adage of run your race, irrespective of the lane that you got selected. So Aidan McIntosh was third with 51.96. But Keo Davis would be the overall winner. The second place would obviously go to AJ Delpesh. We will go to Giovanni Jacobs and third place will go to AJ Delpesh from the Mustang. So it's a one, two, three for the athletes out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. As we see the results of the second of the two finals, Keo Davis, Giovanni Jacobs and Aidan McIntosh. And that will bring to uh, an end the 400 meters on the 17. The next event on the track would be the, we continue with the 400 and it will be an open run. 400 meters girls or ladies open. And we have on paper here two sections. Let's see if there are sufficient athletes to have two sections. Well, I can tell you uh, they would have integrated the two finals and momentarily we're going to give you the updated lane assignments. And the record in this event is 53.08 seconds just set in 20. And that was laid down in 2018 by Kanika Beckles. I saw an article recently that, that Kanika Beckles' daughter is following in her footsteps. Oh yeah, we saw her doing a, a 400 meter as well. And uh, an impressive run she had all the same. So the 400 meter event is an event that Grenada is well known for at the international circuit. Um, the likes of Alin Francic, very own Olympic champion, Kirani James, Rondel Bartholomew, finalists at the world champions. We, so we, we've, we've made a mark we have. at the international scene where the 400 meter event is concerned. And the other event that we have made an indelible mark on is the javelin as well, both at the character level and now on the international circuit as well. Yes, we uh, we had well, and then we can't forget forget the heptathlon with Lyndon Victor the two and brothers. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. the brothers. So, in, in general summary, uh, um, Grenada track and field. Right. So, just to give you the lane assignments now, we have it updated. Trish Henson from High Performance in two, Kayla Flavini from Velocity Track Club in three. Ryan Small of Phoenix Track Club, that's from Antigua, in four. Serena Richards from 473 MVP in five. Levonia Moraine from Fusion Athletics in six. And Almarie Providence of Exit Sports Club in seven. So we have six athletes on, on the track for this one. And let's see where the, run, the, the early running is going to come from. But just speaking so earlier, we have certainly established ourselves in the 400 meters all around the world. So from the Phoenix Club out of Antigua and Barbuda, we have uh, uh, the athlete there, Ray and Small. And she's running out there in lane four. 
So let's see who is out. Serena Richards is there from the MVP 473. In the red and black. And making the early running is the athlete of the Almari Providence from the Exit Sports Club. And she has good chase here by Serena Richards. Well, the other athlete from uh, Velocity is also coming in nicely, but making a good run on the inside in lane two is Henson Trish or Trish Henson from High Performance. It's Trish Henson and Serena Richards. Richards and Henson. Who wants it more? 80 meters to go. Serena Richards in red from MVP and Henson from the High Performance from St. Vincent and Grenadines. They're going to be battling for the finish line. Serena Richards has the advantage and she's going to win it over Henson. But a good run indeed by these two competitors. And coming in third now is the actor from Phoenix. And that's uh, Ryan Small. It's a good, good determined program run in this one. By both ladies, uh, they, they had a significant advantage over the rest of the field. And they maintained that competition among um, among themselves and I think they were pushing each other. Well Serena had a lot of work to do earlier and she was out there um, competing with uh, Almari Providence of Exceed. They did all of the early work and she still was able to maintain her composure and form to finish strongly. So 58.58 for Serena Richards. And in second, from high performance, Trish Henson, 59.32. And Ryan Small, 1 minute, 2.23 seconds. So the fastest time coming from Keo Davis. Sorry, the fastest time coming from Serena Richards. Second fastest, Trish Henson, 59.32, and Ryan Small from Antigua and Barbuda, the Phoenix Club, in third position. And that would be the final results for event number 29, the girls' 400 meter run open. Event, the next event on the track would be the boys on the 20. Boys on the 20, and we have three sections in this one. Uh, let's see if all the athletes are here to get to have three sections. The game's record here was set in 2018, 48.05 seconds by Lenish Mabe. And I, 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 I beg your forgiveness if I didn't pronounce the first part of the name, the, the name correctly. But it's, it's Lid, Lid Jabe. Mabe, uh, record of 48.05 uh, seconds. So in section one, in section one we, in lane three, in section one in lane three, uh, Jasmine Maxwell, Jasmine Maxwell in, in, in in lane three. In lane four, we have Simon James from High Performance out of St. Vincent. In lane five, Daniel Mitchell from Finish Line. And in lane six, Keandre John. Keandre John, again from Finish Line in lane six. So five, five five uh, athletes in this one so uh, we have so the under starters orders now mcsween james mitchell john and thomas there they go the 400 meters for the under 20 boys and making a good run here the athlete looks like mitchell from the finish line sports club Daniel Mitchell. Looking good. Daniel Mitchell, indeed it is here. Very smooth run in the lead. And given chase by three of the other competitors here. But Daniel McSween from the finish line. 
What a run back here now from South City Rising Stars on the inside. Justin McSween. A good run back here by Justin McSween. And look at the third place finish here. It's going to be very close. And edging him just on the line. It looks as though uh, Keandre John it was. But what a good run back here by the athlete Justin McSween from South City Rising Stars. Yes, and it's, it seems as though the, the early running by, by the finish line, he, he, he must have missed time his, must have missed time his run. Well, that was the athlete in lane four. That was Simon James from High Performance who went out very fast. So 50.69 for uh, McSween and 51.24 for Daniel Mitchell who eventually came in at second and uh, Simon James came in third with 51.43 yes James did all the early running but he seems to have run out of gas about about 60 meters to the finish line well he really didn't pace his race well yes and he was caught and passed by both athletes by a fast finishing Justin McSween and then clipped on the line by Daniel Mitchell for the second position there we have it, the official time here. 50.69. South City Rising Stars. But we expect faster times from these youngsters under 20, Bernard. Um, anything under 50 is what I would use as a good measure. Yes. But 50.69, that's maybe for the under 17 category, I would think. So it's second section. Second section, lane one. Lane one seems to be empty. Zian McFarlane from Carrick, who's in lane two. In lane three, Joshim Sylvester from SAS. In lane three and lane four, XL Akido Antoine. Uh, Velocity Track Club at Shema Fleming is in lane five. Uh, lane five is a scratch. In lane six, Orlando Williams from High Performance is in lane six. Lane seven, Lane 7 is Ezron Smith of MVP and in lane 8 is Romel James from High Performance. So we have we have 6 athletes in this, in this one. Well, let's see who wants this one more. McFarlane from Karaku. Zane McFarlane. Sylvester, Antoine, Fleming, Williams, Smith, James, and Paris. And the record time in this event again is 48.05 seconds. That was set in 2018. So the time to beat for the gold medal here is 50.69. A time that has been done by Justin McSween of the South City Rising Stars. We look forward to seeing athletes going below the 50 seconds. Especially at this level in the under 20 category. Are they on the mark? And they're up and running. The 400 meters on the 20 boys, section two of three finals. As we see, two groups been established here, but uh, on the outside in lane eight is Romel James from High Performance. And then uh, also looking good is the athlete from, another athlete from High Performance, Orlando Williams. But well, here comes an athlete from SAS. On the inside, that's Joshim Sylvester. And Karaku is also in there with Zane McFarlane. Uh, Joshim Sylvester for Sass in lane two, looking good. McFarlane is also there in two. Joshim in three, McFarlane in two. Here comes McFarlane on the inside. Zane McFarlane running for a position here. Zane McFarlane, Sass giving up towards the end. But Joshim Sylvester ran a good race, but in the end, it was Zane McFarlane who was the stronger of the two and he could sit him just on the tape to win this the second finals well paced well placed uh, um seemingly he was getting stronger towards the end of the race and that is an organized race plan that that's he he must have run this to perfection 50.40 for zane mcfarlane 
51.03 for Josh Shim Sylvester and 52.41 for Ronald James of High Performance. Good at long time from himself and from Carico. He paced himself well. I think his sheer strength is what made the determination here. He's a much stronger finisher than Josh M. Sylvester. But I thought it was an excellent run by Josh M. Sylvester, except that he didn't have that additional strength, that extra strength, the last so to meters. speak, for the last 10 meters. Yes. So the time 50.40 is actually faster than the time by Justin McSween. So Zane McFarlane in pole position at the moment. 51.03 by Josh M. Sylvester would give him the third position at the moment. And the second position would be... Or 51.03 would actually be the second fastest time. And 51.43 would, would be the third from the, the first finals. The third best time from the first finals. The final section in this... Four by this 400 meters on the 20 men in lane one. In lane one, Rivaldo Solomon from High Performance, Richie Williams from SAS is in lane two, Tegon Peterkin from 473 MVPs in lane three. In lane four, Elijah Williams from Track Blazers, Kyle Victor is in lane five from South City Rising Stars. LM, LM St. Paul from Fusion is in lane 6 and SAS occupies uh, lane 7 and 8 in Brian Isaac and George Lendor. Well, I can tell you there is no Tegan Peterkin. Tegan Peterkin is a relatively household name in track and field here in Grenada. We saw him bursting on the scene in the under 13 and under 15 categories. Understand that he has not been doing a lot of training and has some other issues throughout this athletic season. But has been one of the dominant athletes coming through the age categories over the years. And it's really, really sad that we have not been seeing much of Tejon Peterkin in 2022. So lane three is scratch. Lane seven seems to be a scratch as well as lane eight. So Elisha Williams from Track Blazers is one to look out for. He's running in lane four. At the national champs, he did a 49.01, and he comes in here with that as his season's best. Also from uh, South City Rising Star is Kyle Victor, who is out there in lane five, would give him some very, very strong challenge. He comes in with 51.02. And these are two of the athletes uh, that we can look out for here. But obviously, they will receive very good challenge from the other competitors in the event. It's, it's, uh, Solomon in lane one from out of St. Vincent. Rivaldo Solomon, one to look out for as well. Seems as though some issues there with the start. So it's Solomon from, from High Performance, uh, Williams from SAS. Lane three is empty. Four is Elijah Williams. We expect the running, the, the early running certainly to come from there, from Track Blazers. Victor is in lane five. So there we go, the 400 meters finals on the 20 category. The third finals. Elisha Williams out to the blaze of glory already. Already making up the stagger there on Kyle Victor and uh, Elon St. Paul. Elisha Williams it is. Very measured approach by Williams. South City Rising Stars, Kyle Victor in close pursuit. On the inside, Sass is giving good chase. But it is Elisha Williams of the St. David's Track Blazers. Out by himself. 100 meters to go. Still Elisha Williams. He begins to pump harder now. Elisha Williams looking for a good time. Not much challenge from the rest of the field. Elisha Williams running against the clock here now. Wins it uncomfortable. It looks as though Kyle Victor may have picked up the second over the athlete from Fusion, Ilham St. Paul. But we look to see what happens for second and third. But Elisha Williams, the definite winner here. Easily 
in the end, um, very little challenge from anyone else. And he seems to, again, he seems to be running with a plan, obviously running against himself on the clock. And a good way to end. 49.05 for Elisha Williams. And he cracked the 50. Not his best for the season, 52.17 for St. Paul. Elam St. Paul of Fusion. And a 52.25 for Kyle Victor of South City Rising Stars. So Elisha Williams would be the overall winner with 49.05. And uh, the second best time here would be by Justin McSween, 50.69. And then uh, Josh M. Sylvester, and then sorry, Zane McFallin 50.40. Oh, Zane McFallin has the second best time, and uh, Justin McSween the third best time. So there we go. Elisha Williams 49.05, the fastest time of the three finals. Zane McFallin in second, and Justin McSween in third. Next on the track would be the 400 meters 20 plus for, for men. 400 meters, 20 plus for men, and this is a record that goes back to 200, 2004, set by Alain Francie, 44.59 seconds. That's the games record, and the stadium record is by Stephen Gardner in 2017, 44.26. We, we have really had some luxury of some. Well, that record by Alain Francie would not be touched today for sure. <laughs> 44.59 and I, rec I recall that run by Stephen Gardner at the Grenada Invitational when he ran that 44.26 but look at that impressive 44.59 the game's record Alain Francis 2004 and those of you who were old enough or not as young as the others would have witnessed that 2004 run is something that you will not forget we have three sections in this one in section one, we have four athletes that are going to be on the track in, in section one. In lane three, Remo Daniel from South City Rising Stars. Well, there seem to be some change in the lane assignment here. We have maybe two of the finals integrated. We should have Darren Morgan of High Performance in two, Brent Charles of Ace in one, Rogil Torres of University of Trinidad and Tobago Patriots. He is in lane four. Jared Sylvester from the Track Blazers in six, Nickel Walters from Track Blazers in seven, and in five, Royston Queeley of the TC Mortals from St. Kitts. He will be running in lane five. So the sections have been combined, Sydney section one and two. Some familiar names there in the likes of uh, Jared Sylvester, Brent Charles, one to look out for. And I'm sure the folks from Trinidad and Tobago might fancy their chances with Rogel Torres. And from St. Kitts, Royston Queeley from the TC Motors. But he's laying scratch, so he's not here. So we have five competitors. Five competitors on track awaiting the status orders. Jared Sylvester in six. Well, we see here the athlete from Track Blazers out there. That's uh, Walters struggling already. Well, there they go around the first bend here. Jared Sylvester, that's him up front there in the neon green for track blazers. Well, there they go. 200 meters to go in the 400 meters on the 20 boys. Sorry, the 20 plus boys. Good challenge coming from lane two. Darren Morgan from high performance. Looking good coming around the bend. Sylvester has his work cut out for him. It's a run between Jared Sylvester and Morgan, but Sylvester, using his strength and power here, pushes hard. Jared Sylvester is going to win it. And in second, the athlete in lane number four, Rogel Torres from the University of Trinidad and Tobago. But a good run by Jared Sylvester Bernard. A good measured run. Uh, a little more competition in this one. As we see Jared Sylvester uh, Bernard round in the final turn and heading into the home street with a slight advantage. 48.78 for Jared Sylvester. 48.78, that's a good run. Um, 49.24 for Torres. Relatively good run.
and 49.73 for Morgan. There was some challenge from for two Sylvester from Torres uh, and and Morgan, but in the end, Sylvester was the strong athlete and able to uh, sustain his speed right to the finish line. Well, Jared Sylvester is a very familiar name when it comes to that uh, 400 meters. Um, from the secondary school level, he won that at Intercol Games and has been uh, an outstanding athlete for the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. And returning at time here of 48.78. There was no Brent Charles. Brent Charles would have been one of the athletes who would have given him some really good competition from the Ace Track Club. But we have athletes from Ace Track Club in this one. Adam Peters, he's there, has run 47.6 already this season. So we should see in lane one, uh, Malik Ferdinand from XL Track Club. Nyan Andrews from the Point 14 New Jets Club out of Trinidad and Tobago. Adam Peters from Ace. Michael Francois, another one to look out for from Ace. Jelani Franklin from the 473 MVP. Troy Mason from Ace. We also have listed here from Guyana, that's uh, Jevon Harris and Marshall Cedinho unattached. We know Marcel Cedinho is from Trinidad and Tobago and who is now training in Grenada under the his, his, his lane is leadership is, of Albert Joseph. His, his lane is empty. So Cedinho is supposed to be in lane four. That lane is scratched. So in lane one, we will see Ferdinand, two Andrews, three Peters, four, it's supposed to be Cedinho, five, we will see Michael Francois, six is also scratched, Seven is Troy Mason of A7. Sorry, eight is Jevon Harris from Guyana. Harris comes in with a time of 49.78. The fastest time coming in for this one is 46.2. That should have been Michael Marshall Cedinho. He's now here. And uh, Michael France for 46.84 is one with the fastest time. Michael Francois. Specialist 400 and 800 meter athlete. Look out for him. He is in lane five, running for ace. Adam Peters is another one to look out for from ace. And uh, so too is Troy Mason. Well, there they go. Michael Francois currently in third position. It's Troy Mason up front there for ace. Adam Peters giving good chase on the inside. Here comes Michael Francois now, beginning to accelerate around the final bend. Adam Peters is giving him good challenge on the inside. But Michael Francois emerges from the turn ahead as they battle down the home straight. Michael Francois, Adam Peters, S1, S2. On the inside in lane one, Malik Ferdinand from Excel. But Michael Francois wins it. Peters second, Ferdinand in third, and Troy Mason in fourth. It's a relatively competitive race. Uh, uh, Francois had a bit of a challenge earlier. But he knew what he was doing and he did not panic, even though, even though his, his, his 46, clubmate was close, he, he held his form. 46.94, Michael Francois, an impressive time indeed. 48 flat for Adam Peters. And Malik Ferdinand, 48.54. Ran so a very right. clear winner indeed is Michael Francois. It's an athlete that would have represented Grenada at Cariff the Games already in the 800 meters. We will see him feature again later on this evening in the 800 and also the 4 by 400 meters. Certainly. Maybe the most impressive performance so far for the day, 46.94. That would have concluded the 400 suite of events. So the top three performances in the second the final would be the top three in uh, Francois Peters and uh, Ferdinand. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a short break and when we come back you would hear the voice of Keith Patrick and the Bonnet and Twine to take us through some of the 
I think the 800 meter events are upcoming. We still have the 200 meter events to go as well. So I think we will resume on the track with the 200 meter events actually. And we will start in the, with the 150 meters, I beg your pardon, in the under nine girls category and on the nine boys and then we move to the 200 meters so stay with us we're going to be back with you with some more live track and field action in the Whitson Tide Games 2022 right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium
This is a call for Colin Alexander. Please report to the ceremonies room immediately. Colin Alexander, please report to the ceremonies room immediately. We'd like to give you a sense of what's going to happen going forward. We're getting set for another medal presentation, after which we'll have the official opening ceremony. There's also a call for Terrell Moore to report to the ceremonies room. Terrell Moore, please report to the ceremonies room. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Greasy Sam, Marketing and Business Development Manager at the National Lotteries Authority. Event 27 goes 400 meters on the 17. Bronze medalist Elizabeth Solomon, high performance. 1 minute 04.80 seconds. Silver medalist Shafonia Houston, South City Rising Stars, 58.19 seconds. 
Presenting your gold medalist, Shante Augustine, 473 MVP, setting a new record. 57.21 seconds. Event 28, boys, 400 meters, under 17. Bronze medalist, Giovanni Jacobs, Excel Track Club. 51.84 seconds. Silver medalist, AJ Delpesh, Mustang. 51.58 seconds. And your gold medalist, Scale Davis, SVG Track Team. A time of 50.51 seconds. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Event 29, girls, 400 meters open. Silver medalist, Rian Small. That's a bronze medalist, correction, Rian Small. Phoenix Track Club. One minute, 02.23 seconds. Silver medalist, Trish Kenson, high performance. 59.32 seconds. And your gold medalist, Serena Richards, 473 MVP. A time of 58.58 seconds. Event 30, boys, 400 meters, under 20. Bronze medalist, Jasim Maxwell. South City Rising Stars, 50.69 seconds. Silver medalist, Zane McFarlane, Karakou Athletics Club, 50.40 seconds. And your gold medalist, Elisha Williams, representing St. David's Track Blazers, a time of 49.05 seconds. We can also bring to you event 31, boys, 400 meters, 20 plus. Presenting your bronze medalist, Malik Ferdinand, XL Track Club. 48.54 seconds. Silver medalist, Adam Peters, ace, 48 seconds flat. And your gold medalist, Michael Francois, a time of 46.94 seconds. This is the end of this medal presentation. Thank you so much, Ms. Risi Sam, Marketing and Business Development Manager at the National Lotteries Authority. And of course, the title sponsor for Whitsuntide Games, the National Lotteries Authority. Get familiar with the games of the National Lotteries Authority, Scratch, Playway, Lotto, Super 6, Cash 4, Pick 3, and more. Another call for Colin Alexander and Terrell Moore. Please report to the ceremonies room. Colin Alexander and Terrell Moore. There's also a call for Roland and Twine. Very important, Colin Alexander and Terrell Moore. Please report to the ceremonies room ASAP. There's also a call for Roland and Twine.
We're getting set for the official opening ceremony. And of course, once that uh, happens, we will resume with activities on the track and field. Field update it is. We're witnessing the boys on the 20 javelin. Pack leader, Kaiku this committee, Che Thomas. It's about to throw, trying to hang on to the gold medal position in round number five. Live coverage of the NLA Whitsuntide Games can be viewed on the Facebook pages of Grenada Athletic Association and TNR Communications. Once more, call for Roland and Twine. Hey, yo. I'm at a state. Madras. Hey, yo. I'm at a stage in my life. I don't want no worries, want no fight. I just want to live my life right. Because Jaja -Ja taking me to higher heights. A stage in my life where it's just good vibes only and good times only. So stay away with your bad vibes. I don't say we don't have time. Hey, yo. Right now, man living it up. Written. And every pocket must full, so we feeling it up. Me keep me we are witnessing the sixth and final round. From the bottom to the top, me say me building it up. Me just a chill and just a hold on me. And the 20 boys javelin. At this point, the bronze 50 point meter. Yeah, it's up. Trying to creep into Madras. Hey, yo. I'm at a stage in my life. I don't want no worries, want no fight. I just want to live my life right. Cause Jaja -Ja taking me to higher heights A stage in my life Where it's just good vibes only And good times only So stay away with your bad vibes I don't say we don't have time hey, yo, Right now Just for the bronze medal in this like when over. You get it set for Ravon Telesford of the St. Davis track. Currently in the silver medal position. Chasing 59 21. On 
just a stranger in a crowded place. I it. I'm the cooler every day. Is it? Hoping to find someone with a familiar face so we could fit and celebrate. This is not the time to be alone. This is the time. GPS on the party pumper they call me. Once the fet is on, I bet you I will be riding. The cooler done set, pocket check so I feel it highway. Destination check, so you know we are for the party. Ah, uh, I don't know the party in could believe me. Cause this will bring the life to you. This is for you. Oh, take three steps closer, just three. Let me rock and roll. Let me 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 roll. Javelin, Razin Philip, 54.2 the mark to be. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back and we are ready with the official opening ceremony. The NLA Whitsuntide Games 2022. In all things, we acknowledge the presence of God, and so we are so delighted to have with us Pastor Devon Rache to lead us in prayer. All good gifts and all good talents are God-given and are blessings from God. I indulge you for a moment to stand with me in honor of God, even as we pray. Dear wise and heavenly Father, we are so thankful to you for the opportunity that you have given us to be here in celebration of this Whitsuntide Games. We are thankful for the many talents and gifts that you have bestowed upon those who today will be engaged in display of these said talents. We pray your divine blessings upon the organizers, officials, and everyone involved in ensuring the success of these games. And we pray coming out of this that, Lord, those who have been endowed with talents will be able to see the destiny fulfilled. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the time being. We welcome Mr. Philmon Charles to render the national anthem of Grenada.
Hail Grenada, land of ours, we pledge ourselves to thee. Heads, hearts, and hands in unity to reach our destiny. Ever conscious of God, being proud of our heritage, may we with faith and courage aspire, build, advance as one people. One family, God bless our nation. Thank you, Mr. Philmon Charles. I understand he's a member of the Boys Choir of uh, PBC. Was a member of the Boys Choir of PBC. Ladies and gentlemen, you are part of the NLA Whitsuntide Games 2022. Of course, the National Lotteries Authority is the title sponsor. And this event is organized by the Grenada Athletic Association. It is one of the oldest meets in the region. We also would like to let you know that it started in the 1950s and we are very pleased to have our brothers and sisters in the region, a number of clubs representing St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago and Antigua. The Grenada Athletic Association is extremely pleased to have the participation of these clubs and we are very much delighted to have you spectators here today to celebrate excellence on the track and field. At this juncture, we invite to the podium Ms. Risi Sam. She's the Marketing and Business Development Manager of the National Lotteries Authority, the title sponsor of the Games. P.S. Kim Frederick, Ministry of Sports, Culture, the Arts, Fisheries and Cooperatives, Grenada. Ms. Nola Bartholomew, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Tourism. Mr. Curlin Peters, Coordinator of Sports. Employees of National Lotteries Authority, members of the Grenada Olympic Committee Board, members of the Grenada Athletic Association Board, athletes, officials, Good afternoon to all. Now the National Lotteries Authority's mission statement reads, and I quote, to contribute to national development by providing a source of funding for the support of sports and culture while giving the general public an opportunity to play a game of chance, win prizes, and enhance their lives, end of quote. This year, 2022, we are recognizing 25 years of offering our homegrown jackpot game, that is Lotto, and 20 years of our three-number game, Daily Pick Three. It is through the patronization of these two games, plus the Daily Cash Four, Playway, Scratch, and Super Six by you, our playing public, that the NLA is able to fulfill this mission. Today, we are gathered here to witness yet another manifestation of the NLA's mission, which is expressed through the actions and workings of the beneficiaries. And the beneficiaries here today are, for the Grenada Athletics Association, and by extension, the Ministry of Sports, Culture, the Arts, Fisheries, and Cooperatives, 
you have received the necessary funding of $44,451 to ensure the implementation of this very important event and many others before, which is extremely useful for the growth and development of our athletes. For the coaches and athletes and other sports officials, here is yet another opportunity for you to present your best selves and to do so with the utmost expressions of good and fair sportsmanship, an opportunity made possible by the National Lotteries Authority. For the players of the NLA's games, I want to specially recognize you today. You have continuously purchased the games of the NLA, and out of that, many of you have won prizes that have increased your cash flow towards a more enhanced life and standard of living, or just to allow you to be able to cock a hole, as we say in local parlance, meaning pay a bill or cover some other sundry expense like attending this afternoon's Whitsuntide Games. But of equal importance, or maybe even more importantly, we must highlight that, this, that it is because of you, the people who use your small change or big box to invest in chances towards possibly enhancing your lives, that the NLA is able to fully fund the 2022 Whitsuntide Games and most of the other sporting initiatives happening in Grenada, Karakou, and P.T. Martinique. When we describe you as valuably, we truly mean that. Not even COVID stopped you from supporting. In fact, you increased your support. It all starts and ends with you, even if you don't win sometimes. This evening, you are the playmakers. You are the real MVPs. So in summary, I want to say thank you to all the groups of stakeholders involved, which I've just mentioned, and to wish everyone at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium a fun-filled Whitsuntide Games. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Risi Sam, Marketing and Business Development Manager at the National Lotteries Authority, the title sponsor of Whitsuntide Games 2022. Of course, the NLA supports sports, culture, and nation building. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Curlin Peters, Coordinator of Sports of the Ministry of Sports, Culture, and the Arts, Fisheries, and Cooperatives, to deliver some remarks. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I must say um, we are very pleased in the Ministry of Sports. I'm also very pleased to be here to, to welcome all, of, all our spectators, all the spectators that support uh, track and field by showing in your numbers today on all the events that have been put on previously through the Green Athletics Association. I want to congratulate the organizing committee and the president of the Athletics Association, Mr. Connor Francis, and the committee for putting on such events. We want to welcome our, respect, our visitors from the island. I know that there are 31 schools and clubs here with over six islands competing in the Whitsuntide Games. We in the Ministry of Sports continue with the development of sports, not only through the support of games, um, through the development of fields, uh, the implementation of lighting projects to our community, which we are looking forward to to give other support to the association so that we can continue with our grassroots program come September in all of our sports. The development of sports through the grassroots and the collaboration with athletics association and other association play a key role in the growth of our sport. We are very happy of what we have seen for track and field this year because we have known for the last two years the challenges that we had and we must say um, we are very happy with the athletes and the level of competition that I've seen here today. So let's continue as spectators to come out and support. Let's bring out our kids at the park and let's enjoy track and field to the best and all the other sports that we help to develop, we help to promote um, through all aspects of it. Um, we are very pleased. So have a wonderful event. The athletes come out and compete well as you have been doing. Let's share them on. There are no losers in track and field. 
Enjoy the rest of your afternoon and get home safe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Colin Peters, Coordinator of Sports, Ministry of Sports, Culture and the Arts, Fisheries and Cooperatives. Please welcome Colin Alexander, representing Finish Line Track Club, to do for us the Athlete's Oath. Games Athlete's Oath. In the name of all competitors, I promise that we shall take part in the 2022 Wits and Games, respecting and ad ad abiding by the rules which govern athletics, committing ourselves to the sport without doping and without drugs, in the true spirit of sportsmanship. Thank you, Colin Alexander. Now to deliver the official's oaths, please welcome Jason Moore. He's a technical official. Games technical officials oath. In the name of all the technical officials, I promise that we shall officiate this, the 2022 Whitsuntide Games with complete impartiality, respecting and abiding by the rules which govern the games in the true spirit of sportsmanship. Thank you very much, Jason Moore. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the official opening ceremony. Thanks again to Pastor Devon Rache, Mr. Philburn Charles, Ms. Reese Sam, Mr. Colin Peters, Mr. Colin Alexander, and Mr. Jason Moore. This is the end of the official opening ceremony as we get ready to resume with, with events. All part of the NLA Whitsuntide Games 2022. Thanks again for coming out to this special occasion right here at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. Stay close. More action. More competition. Coming up.
hoping to find someone with a familiar face so we could fit and celebrate. This is not the time to be alone. This is the time to wind on a bumper. So let's be amazing. We can fly amazing. So don't tell me they won't let me get no bad in here. I want you to jam on somebody now. Hold on somebody now. Keep them company. Take a party room. Love, ice, ice. You play slow, man. Watch out the party tonight. We go in. Okay, welcome back to the Kirani James Athletic Stadium for the Whitson Tides 2020 games. You have not been missing anything because they had the uh, opening ceremony, etc. Um, but we have just had the first of section of event number 38, the girls 150 meter dash on the nine. And we're going to wait the official results and we'll continue to give you the live coverage. The the 150 meters is, is, is an abridged version of the 200 meters for the younger kids. So, Aliyah Samuel, the winner, South City Rising Stars. Right, we're getting ready now for the. We're getting ready now for the second section of this event. Um, Kizana Charles of Bolt is in lane one. Raquel Sylvester of RAC is in lane two. Tia St. Bernard of Fusion in three. Lindsay Thompson of St. Joseph's Convent St. George's in four. Michaela Cyrus of RAC. RAC feeling two athletes here. And VTC, uh, Destiny Daniel in lane number six. So we have six participants. Girls 150 meter dash under nine. So it's Kazara, Kazara Charles. Kizana Charles. 
Caesar and Charles, Raquel Sylvester, T.S. and Bernard, Lindsay Thompson, Michaela Cyrus, and Destiny Daniel. And it's It's one of the challenging races. Um, there is a school of thought that the 200 meters is one of the most difficult races that you find. Okay, it's a complete it's sprint. sprint, certainly. But also, you have to have a, a, a good game plan for the 150 meter. Yes, whereas the 400 meters is it's a sprint in itself. The difference with the 400 meters and the 200 meters is a very little recovery if you have a bad start Cut, in the 200. You can get a fairly uh, just ordinary start in the 400 meters and recover, not so in the 200. So it's a 150 meters girls on the nine, section two of three sections, and we they are on the start of the orders. They're often running a great start by Destiny Daniel out in lane eight. Uh, the athlete from that's Michaela Cyrus is running well and she has the lead at the moment as they race into, in t inside the first, the last hundred meters. It is Cyrus, Michaela Cyrus, who has the lead. Uh, the, she's followed by Tia St. Bernard of Fusion and these two are battling it out. But it's going to be T uh, Michaela Cyrus of RSC. She's running away from them. She's coming towards the line. She wins it easy. In second is the athlete, that's Tia St. Bernard. In third position is the athlete from the... That's the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. That's the order they finished. We'll wait on the unofficial results for Section 2, event number 38 of the girls' 150-meter dash. And it was quite, quite pleasing to see the young Cyrus as she was not winded at the end, uh, which means there is a bit of training that would have went into, into her preparation. Preparation, certainly. And as we saw it, Michaela Cyrus, Tia St. Menard, and Destiny Daniel times 25.71. Um, probably should take some note and cognizance of this 26.69, 27.20. Um, I don't think we didn't get the times for the first heat, but um, we'll follow and see where that falls in. So we're getting into the third section now, Bernard. Yes, on the track now is the section three of three. And it, 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 just to remind you, it is a girl's 150 meters on the nine. 150 meters on the nine. In lane one is Dama Map Jeremiah. Dama Map Jeremiah, lane one. Lane two, Keller Thomas from St. Joseph Convent. So Dana is from Bold. Lane three, Zaria Barrett from MVP. Lane four, Jazion Johnson from VTC, uh, Jadaya Forrester from Bold, Racer Strack, um, Tevisha Joseph, and Karaku Combine, Azaria Williams is in lane seven. And the uh, final lane occupied here in lane eight is Shonze Simeon from Track Blazers. They're on their mark. They're having their final instructions from the officials. So lane four is, is a scratch. Uh, VTC, Jazan Johnson is not participating. She's the only athlete that came in with a time of 24.3. They're often running good start by all the athletes. Let's see who has it. It seems to be the athlete from MVP in the middle of the track, now running in lane number three. Uh, the little athlete from Karku is also going well, but it is MVP. That's it, the leader at the moment, Zaria Barrett, who has the lead, running on very strongly to the Jadaya Forrester of Bolt. But it's going to be uh, Zaria Barrett as she comes towards the line. She takes it very easily. In second position is Jadaya Forrester, close between the athlete from Karku, that's Azaria Williams, and the athlete, that's Kayla Thomas from St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. And again, it's a very good sight to see even athletes at that age run right through and rather than stop as soon as they reach. So th this, is, this is very good coaching. And th that concludes the 150 meters under nine girls. So Zaria Barrett, 25.35 to Visia Joseph, of runners 25.58 
And in third position, the Maya map of breaking out legacy, legacy in third position. So we welcome you back to the Kirani James Athletic Stadium for the live track and field action in the Wilson Tide Games 2021. A games in which we see 31 different clubs, over 600 athletes on show. And we are about to see the start of the 150 meters for the boys under nine. I think that's the second finals of three finals. And uh, the action continues right here. Between the events, we are privileged to have with us one of the coaches of one of the teams from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, they're here in their numbers. Over 90 athletes from St. Vincent and the Grenadines here from five different clubs. We're going to speak in with Mr. Chester Morgan from High Performance Club. And we're going to hear a lot about the athletics program in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Some of the athletes to look out for. And uh, the whole developmental process of track and field in St. Vincent over the years. In and between that, we're going to bring you the live events as well, but we're very happy to have Chester Morgan from High Performance in the central Leeward area in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we say welcome and good evening, Chester. Welcome to Grenada as well, and welcome to the microphones of TNR Communications. Thank you for having me. Good evening to everyone, to our audience, um, those who are also present. Good afternoon. Well, I can tell you, Chester, there's a huge contingent from St. Vincent and the Grenadines following the feed on Facebook. The folks in Beckway, they're here. The folks in uh, all over St. Vincent, they're here and they're very, very um, vocal as well on the, the live Facebook feed. So they're more than delighted to hear you and to know that we're going to be speaking to you as uh, St. Vincent. The teams from St. Vincent are doing pretty well in this tournament, in this competition. Yes, we um, usually have a great support at home in terms of parental support and persons who are interested in sports. Um, it may sad to say that they may not be in the position where they can influence or make decisions when it comes to sports. But we have a full... They, they're often running for the second uh, heat. In the middle of the track, you can see the athlete that's um, uh, racing. He's running away from them. Bolt is in second position. The athlete from St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's is also there. But it's going to be all Bolt. He's running away. He has about 20 or so meters lead. On the inside of them, the athlete that's from um, RAC is in second position, St. Joseph's Convent in third, uh, Bolt in fourth and fifth, and MVP in five. So we're still here with Chester Morgan from High Performance. As a matter of fact, Chester is the founder, the coach, the president of the High Performance Club. Chester, maybe we can zero in on High Performance Club first of all and give us, give us the, the whole idea and the motive and the objective of you forming that club and how old that club is and what are your plans for this club in the future? Well, actually, um, after completing my degree in Venezuela, so sad to say that my degree is um, in sports training but actually specialize in football. I came back home and formed a group with some young children who you are seeing now as adults where we decide that we're going to be based in all different sports in area. We, we focus in on athletics because that is the mother sport of all sports. And then we decide to create this club. Um, as the club create, it continue to grow and grow. And then we start having persons being interested in, in being part of it and the management team. So we are in all events at the moment, but we have Michael Williams doing the, the field events and working with the HEP athletes who are doing so well. So it, the club was founded by me, but now it's run by many help from parents, even at 
where the club created from a secondary school by the name of Centrally Road Secondary School used to be formerly known as Barley Secondary. It's where teachers there give you the support daily and help you. So it's really a support system that we have that keeping us going. I can't take all the praise for the club performance. It has to come from all from the parents because they believe in the program and they buy into it and also the teachers at school but buy into the program along with the principal and everyone else and the community on a whole bought into it so that we we could be here and performing as the way we should well i know barley is a rural area in saint vincent and uh, just like grenada we see a lot of great athletes coming from the rural communities but give us a a, a picture as what track and field is like in saint vincent grenada here is a very big thing okay and the school level is huge it's the biggest sporting event at school level we we're going to we're gonna hear from you right after this event we're getting set for the second section of the final of the boys event number 39 boys 150 meter dash on the nine they're off and running nice level break in the center of the track we seem to be seeing that is uh on the inside track blazers has the lead and uh, this is a clear lead one of the young men lost their shoes it is track blazers from uh, in the center of the track i can see the athlete there from Karko and pity martinic on the outside of them is fusion but it's track blazers very easily won it by a distance from vtc and far on the outside that's J. Who roberts of fusion well, well Caden McFarlane lost his shoe in the yeah, process. Okay, Let's hope it's a Cinderella <laughs> slipper kind of <laughs> situation. Probably we could come across by just brands and get something better of a better quality. <laughs> As we continue with Chester Morgan, Chester, I was asking you to give us a picture of the state of track and field in St. Vincent. For the first time, we see St. Vincent being featured prominently at Carifta Games as well, picking up a few medals and um, some support being given to some of the athletes after Carifta. But give us a, a, a broad picture as to the well, state of track and field in St. Vincent. Well, right actually, now. the state of track and field in St. Vincent is on an upward motion. Um, they have a lot of been a support from the Team Athletics SVG, where we have put a lot of programs, but much praises must be given to the coaches at home. The coaches at home have been working tremendously, been putting their effort in, and they have been pushed by each other to compete and get the best out of these athletes. Um, Team Athletics SVG has focusing on the developmental age. So right now we are seeing the, the, the product of what we have done before. Because speaking here, I'm actually the technical director of Team Athletics SVG. So one of our main focus used to be kids and athletics and still is. So we are actually working and being much better. And being better, we now have to be see where we can keep our senior athletes. Because after secondary school in Simmons and Grenadines, when they get to the college level, the passion or the love for sports or the support, it's not really there. Mm -hmm. So our main aim is to send them to Jamaica or uh, see if they can get scholarship. But at times, some of them are at the fifth form level and they are not ready for scholarship. They are not running the times for scholarship. And we only have five forms in high schools while other countries have six, six forms so that you can have more development with your athletes. Right, we're going to continue the conversation. We go over to Patrick to take us through this event. Event number 40, the girls 200 meter dash under 11. We have four athletes participating in this event. They're off and running a brilliant start. The athlete from uh, Karako and Pity Martinique has come off the block explosively. She's going well at the moment and has already struck the lead. They come with just over 100 meters to run. So it's Karako for both. On the inside, on the far side, though, we can see the other athlete from Fusion. But it's all Karako and Pity Martinique in this one. She seems to be scattering all over the place and not keeping her form. But she's going to win this event by some margin of 10 or so meters. The athlete from both is still running on very strongly and consistently. So Karko and Pity Martinic wins it. Uh, that's Iquana Francis. In second position is Shania Lewis of RAC. And finishing in a distant third is Rihanna Thomas of SCRS. So before we continue with Chester Morgan, I'd like to let you know that the event before, which was the third of the three finals for the under nine boys in the 150 meters, we saw a record-breaking performance from Ronan Lessie of Track Blazers. He established a new record of 22.81 seconds, beating the old mark of 24.13 that he himself established in 2021. So congratulations indeed to Ronan Lessie. 
So back with Mr. Morgan here. Morgan, your team has been coming to Grenada. It's not the first time, I would think, that uh, high performance it's is here. It's actually our second time. Right. So how beneficial is that trip to Grenada in terms of developing your athletes and get getting them uh, performance ready and, and, and building their experience and, and, and self-motivation as well? How this beneficial is this? It's very you? beneficial to us because we believe in holistic development where the athletes can meet persons from different backgrounds, different groups, have conversation. They can also see what it is at the regional level. Because coming here, it's like you're away from home. It's a total different ball game in terms of the call room setup, the, the, the level of athletes that you meet. So our young athletes are excited to be here, and it's something I choose to use as a developmental meet because no matter the performance for the athlete for the year, I believe in bringing them here so that they can see where they are and where they need to be in terms of being number one in the region. So our main aim is to see how much we can get our Olympic finals one day. So now is part of the developmental stage towards that program. Well, we have world-class facilities here, so I guess that too is part of the exposure for them. But I want to go back to St. Vincent now. You have recently um, um, commissioned a new track in St. Vincent, and we see already some athletes being exposed to that track. How is that going to make a difference? We, s we know we from Grenada's standpoint, we can speak of the development of track and field because of the national stadium here. What have you seen so far, and what are the expectations now with the use of that facility in St. Vincent? Um, as it showed at character level, they have more athletes making the character standard. We not, don't have to send them to Trinidad or Grenada anymore. The track have increased participation in the country. Kids are now wanting to run. They are often running for section two as we break slightly with our interview. Uh, the athlete from St. Joseph's Convent in Lane 4 is going smoothly. On the outside, we can see Aliyah Scott of Bold. She's also way ahead and comes in into the home straight now, full of running. She's running away from them. The athlete from St. Joseph's Convent is in second position. In third position, the other athlete representing St. Joseph's Convent. But it's going to be all Michaela George of uh, runners, and she wins it very, very easily. In second position as the athlete from St. Joseph's Convent, that's Adana George and Osana Batiste in that order. There we saw the completion of that finals in the under 13 category. As we continue with Chester, Chester, you were telling us about the impact that the, the new track, the new uh, synthetic track, would have on your athletes in St. Vincent? Yes, it's, it's increased maths participation. It's also helped prepare those athletes looking to go to the ev elite level or the next level in their preparation, no matter they're in the developmental phase. They have been having a chance to compete weekly on a synthetic track, which is a boost for us. Without a synthetic track, I don't believe that it can get to that upper uh, level because it will be much harder. So now athletes have a chance to even train on the track, so which is help them with preparation for any regional meet now so the track is a plus to us we thank um, the government for it and the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines because without it we would not have been showcasing so much talent today because there are more persons taking part in the sport so you can see that part is a positive we are now with the real result from having the track and from using well, the track. I want to ask you about the track because you know some countries have the synthetic track and stadium and uh, there is not easy access to it. Is it easily accessible in St. Vincent? Can any club, anybody well, in a structured way have access to it? For our track at home, we must give praise to Dyke to the manager of the track. You can call Dyke 2 o'clock to use the track at 1 past 2 and he will give you permission. And the government said they have a motion where they say we build it for use, not for storage, and we must commend them <laughs> for that. So <laughs> we, we usually get the track at our disposal at any time, as long as there's any plan or any time you wanted to use. The groundsman there get it prepared for us quickly, as you want. So I must give it up to those groundsmen at the, the Sir Vince Beach Athletic Stadium. They have been doing a wonderful job for us. As coaches, you can call, and they have a relationship with us. They will tell you, okay, um, the track may be available on this side because we're doing work on the next side. And if you yourself, you're on the track training and they have work going on, they pause for you. So they have respect for us in terms of that. So we're going to get back to that as we go race side. Section 3 of the final, they're off and running. A lovely start by the athletes from Fusion in the middle of the track. 
then we can see velocity is also running well runners is also right there but they come towards the, the top of the tournament just over 100 meters to run and it's dominic joseph from fusion who has the lead she's been chased by the athlete from velocity that's leah campbell they come in just over about 40 or 50 meters campbell is coming on strongly but they, that's dominic joseph she's holding on she's coming towards the line dominic joseph of velocity wins it from liana batiste of velocity and the others bunching up behind for the third fourth fifth and sixth spots respectively well chester i can tell you that we in grenada here are very used to winning several medals at the character and international level but i think for the first time this year at the character games we saw saint vincent been featured prominently in a few of the finals and and, and winning medals as well and the athletes being rewarded by the government uh, to a certain extent I mean, how do you read the performance of the St. Vincent, the Vincentian team at Carifta and uh, um, what do you accredit, what do you give credit for, for that improved performance at, for, at the Carifta 2022? First, I must give credit to the coaches who have been working hard. Um, Keo Davis who is here with St. Vincent Grenadines Grammar School. He won the 400. He's one who done well. He's based home um, from the club 8 that Academy coach by um, my, my yeah, I was saying I didn't Oliver. see that being featured here this year for um, whatever reason. That is a question I can't answer for you. Um, but I can tell you that Q has been working well with his coach, and that is um, something apart. The other athletes are based in Jamaica. Um, they came from Ralph Morgan, who decided to take the chance of sending them off to Jamaica for better training in terms of being competitive weekly and continue their educational development. So it's really we have to give kudos to handle Roban. He have opened the door and yeah, showed former us. Former character athlete, right? Yeah, and yeah, former yeah. medalist have shown us that it's possible with the right mind and the right attitude. So the performance comes from the coaches and the support at home. And um, if you watch the live, as you said, we have a lot of support. So at character, we had a lot of support and the athletes were geared up and properly prepared for the competition that was at hand. So I'm going to ask you maybe a, a, a difficult question. How soon are we going to see an athlete make it big on the international stage for St. Vincent at the Olympics, at the World Champions? From what you've been preparing your athletes for, uh, can you give a projection in terms well, of... Well, um, flipper coins, head or tail developmental take place 10 years. The 10-year rule, as you know, if you are someone into sports science, um, Shafika Maloney at the moment and Handel Ruban and Yolanda Lewis or three of our top athletes at the moment who are walking towards that project. Oh, um, Yolanda Lewis has a games record here yes, in she, one of the events. Yes, she um actually in Alabama University. Um, Right now they are in America in different schools, so they are not in our hands. The boys 200 meter dash under 11, he did 41. Uh, in the center of the track, we can see the athlete that's Tyrone Marksman from, bo from both. And he's learning very, very quickly. The athlete from Karku is on the outside of him. But it's all Tyrone Marksman of Bolt. He's running away from them. Good standard running. The athlete from Karku is finishing well and it seems to be going better. Marksman maybe have pulled up. Uh, no. <laughs> it is Nikon Roberts of Karku and Pity Martinique. Tyrone Marksman uh, and Romario Phillip of Runners Club. Probably the young man must have felt that he reached the line but all I that think, is all is part of the training I think it's stumbled because he's running barefoot barefooted yes and it's, it's synthetic track and he may have just but misstepped there but uh, maxman was also a winner in the earlier um rounds in the 80 meters so he came in with some confidence as well but i think he just had a misstep just around that area they when um, the athlete from karaku went past him and lost his momentum and you know in track and field once you lose that momentum right about there yeah yeah it's, it's difficult to pick back yourself up yeah um but it's unfortunate but he had a good presence of mind to regain some composure and still managed to get second in the event i thought he finished third um nevertheless it might be very difficult for him running on this kind of texture bare feet and probably could have been the burning of the feet the bottom of the feet but um good run from him um, he's showing a lot of fast twitch muscles, the turnover of the feet. Um, you can see that. That is a, a, excellent. And he's pretty short. So if he's, that he gets a little taller. Because usually um, with the fast twitch muscle, muscles, um, some you get less bonding. All right? Smithy, go ahead. 
All right, so I just want to um, conclude the conversation here with uh, Chester Morgan. Chester, your club, high performance, some of the look forward names at, at, at these games? Some well, of actually, um, the athlete who run the only sub 10, um, Devon Rickmack, is one of our top athletes in the club. We have sub 11, sub 11, sub, sub 11 sorry. Yeah. We have Jahim here, who is someone um, we just brought first time actually competing on a regional meet. We have um, Chishensu. We have so much to mention. Um, we have later in the dis the distance. We have um, Zichi Heckborn, and we also saw Kessian. They're off and running. Eleven year old winning the fifteen hundred meter. Kai Wilson is going very well on the inside for for runners as they come towards the top of the street. But look at the athlete on outside now from high performance. That's Jahim Joseph. He's going well. So it's between himself and Kai Wilson. On the inside of them is the athlete from Kyle Cohen, Pity Martin. It's going to be a good run coming home. Kai Wilson just holding on from the athlete on the far side. Kai Wilson is going to be, be defeated now. The, and they come towards the line is the athlete from uh, Nick Kwan. No, no, it's, it's Jahim Joseph from J High Performance. J Jahim Joseph from High Performance, yes, certainly. So that's, that's, that's his coach right here. That's his coach that. right here. Well, you could say Jahim Joseph. Because <laughs> I was looking. So just a uh, good run. You just mentioned uh, Jahim's yeah. name moments uh, ago. Jahim Joseph, yes. And a good run here by Jahim Joseph. 30.10 seconds in this 200 meters for Jahim Joseph. And um, I was just asking you about some of the more prominent athletes from the club. But um, just to wrap up, I think um, you folks must be commended from St. Vincent and Grenadines for giving a good account of your country and your athletes. And for making the journey here to Grenada on an annual basis. And um, we really look forward to that. It adds a lot more to the, the level of competition. But any parting words, any final comments you'd want to, to make? Well, first and foremost, I must give um, kudos to the other coaches, Godfrey Harry, Ralph Morgan, Sam, um, Kato. These guys have been working all year long. And you can see it here that they brought their athletes and they are performing well. Um, I have to give kudos also to my coaching staff and my management team and essentially what persons back at home and those who are supporting us and even my staff in the Barley Secondary School. We have just been crowned champion of the intercal, both male and female. And it was not possible without the staff in the background, as they call it. Well, I have some good folks back there in Barley, Mr. Douglas at the school. I'm sure he's still there at the school. Yes. And I have the, the, the Finley family as well. Well, actually, the, the communication manager for our team, Ted Jacob, is actually a Finley. They're off and running for Section 3. Um, it's Tyrese Brave Boy who is going brilliant at the moment. Uh, they're swinging towards the top of the street now. Also, there is Job Samuel. Jai Peters is trying desperately. But it's going to be Tyrese Brave Boy. He has the lead from Job Samuel of Velocity. Tyrese Gabriel, Brave Boy, and Job Samuel is fighting it out. Tyrese Gabriel is holding on. He's coming on this tremendous pressure, but he's coming towards the line. He's going to hold it on. Tyrese Brave Boy wins it from Job Samuel of Velocity. In third, it's going to be close between the athletes from Fusion, that's Eton Gunpot, and Jediah Roberts, of also of Fusion, on the inside lane. Well, we want to say a special thank you to Chester Morgan from the High Performance Track and Field Club out there in St. Vincent and Grenadines from the Central Leeward area. It was indeed a pleasure having you uh, in the microphones of TNR Communication. Uh, and for outlining to us the sort of programs and the developmental process that you guys are undertaking in St. Vincent and Grenadines. And we look forward to seeing bigger and better things from you and your club and for St. Vincent on the international scene. And we, we welcome you guys back here to Grenada to participate in more and more track and field action. Okay, we look forward to maybe reciprocating uh, the, 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 the sort of uh, invitation as well when you guys get yourselves organized and have these kind of regional meets on your well, new track. Well, actually, we must come in Grenada because with grass track, they always send athletes at our national championship. And the recent concluded national championship, there were athletes there who make personal best. So that is good. All right, so thank you again. As we just heard, another record-breaking performance in the previous event. So thank you again, Chester. And we get back. So there you have it, Mr. Patrick. An interesting conversation there with Chester Morgan from the High Performance Club in St. Vincent. I'm sure you got some takeaways from his from his presentation. Extremely interesting uh, conversation, um, and he's. He's so confident about the projects and prospects 
of St. Vincent Athletics. And with the coming on of the new uh, fiber track, you can hear how he thinks that St. Vincent would prosper. And they are really looking forward to like putting great athletes on the international stage as we have done after we had had our track head, the likes of uh, Arlene Francie, Kirani James, the Anderson Peters, etc. And um, I'm happy for them uh, as a Windward Island and a, a small island in the region. And it, it augurs well for competitiveness as we go to these big games and give great opportunities to a lot of the students who hadn't been for these tracks and for the development uh, governmentally that they will just be fading away. One thing that struck me though, um, he mentioned that the students who, with some of them who reach in Form 5, um, that they kind of fade away. And this is something that we had experienced here in our country. I think there is a lot of emphasis now placed on trying to make sure the continuity of these athletes. But um, as I say, a great interview. Indeed it was. As we look towards event number 42, the 200 meter dash for juniors under 13. In lane one, we have Angel Lewis from Runners. Lane two, Kelly Boker, SJC St. George. Lane three, Amelia Noel from Runners. Lane four, Azora Pursue out of Caracou. Lane five, Kayla Allen from Caracou as well. Lane six, Janik Hazard, Track Blazers. Seven, Afia Hippolyte of Bolt. And in eight, Jamaica Campbell of runners these are the competitors for the first of three finals for the 200 meter girls under 13. i haven't seen the athlete from track blazers take up her spot so most likely she would not be running so we'll have seven athletes participating we just heard up from uh morgan and the event about to be take to be to be scheduled now the record has actually been held by Yolanda Lewis from St. Vincent and the Grenadines from yeah. the High Performance Club. A record of 24.60 seconds that she established in 2017. She has since moved on. She's at a college in the U.S. and doing well for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So the sun is going down, Patrick and Bernard, and the lights have been turned on here at the National Stadium. Uh, the mascot there just fluttering slightly, not a very strong breeze blowing across the ground at the moment. Pretty calm conditions. A uh, bit cool as well. Yeah, slightly overcast too. Um, probably that's it good for the athletes who have been uh, burning up in the hot and humid humidity for the whole day. Um, but um, we're really looking forward to coming to the end of this meet and coming to the end of the Grenada Athletics season. Are we getting ready now for event number 42, the girls 200 meter dash under 13? As intimated, it will record it being held by Yolanda Lewis of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a mark of 24.60, established on the 4th of June 2017. The event went off, it was a false start. So we'll have to come back again. Um, Track Blazers is not represented in this event. So we have two athletes from uh, Caracou and PT Martinique. We have from uh, Runners Sports Club. They are represented by three athletes and one from Bolt, one from St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. And lane number two, lane number four, and lane number six. six. Lane two, four, and six. So the two would have been actually from St. Joseph Convent, four is from Caracol, and six from Track Blazers. So they're on their mark. The gun must have misfired. So they'll have to make an effort well, they, the they, third time. They have been out there for <laughs> quite some time, and they had a false start moments ago, and again, some... Um, tensions with the start here too long so these kind of situations really affects performance because um, from a, a scientific point of view you prepare yourself for your event at a particular at time. time you go through your preparatory stages and you expect to run at, at a certain, certain time. time yeah and when you have to go through all those issues there it really affects it brings in a level of nervousness anyhow they have this time 
the athlete from Cargo had a brilliant start. So to the athlete on the outside, that's uh, Jamaica Campbell of runners. They come into the top of the street with 100 meters to go now, and the athlete from Cargo has a slight lead. The, the athlete, that, that's Angel Lewis on the inside, but it's going to be Cargo and Angel Lewis of runners. Runners and Cargo. Runners is finishing much stronger. It's going to be very close. This is going to be close. The athlete from Cargo is digging deep on the line. She just get there. Uh, she wins it. That's Kayla Allen from Karku and Pity Martinique. Angel Lewis finishing second. And Jamaica Campbell of runners in third position. Well, a good strong run indeed by Kayla Allen from the Karku Athletics Committee. 28.15. That's a winning time. And in second was Angel Lewis in lane one in 28.38. And, the and Jamaica Campbell on the other side with 31.06 for third. The standing record in this event is 24.60 second that was set in, as was said earlier, Yolanda Lewis from out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in 2017. So these are at least some distance away from the record, <laughs> over four seconds. And four seconds on the track is a very long distance. Uh, oh, yeah. They were rather conservative um, in the, f the first 100 meters, actually. But 24 seconds for under 13 is a phenomenal performance. It's a, a very outstanding performance. Yes, a good time, yeah. Very, very good. So it's, it's three sections in this finals, yeah? So up in section two, we have eight athletes listed here. Let's confirm that shortly. Indeed, there are eight athletes, uh, Bernard, um, from runners all the way to Bolt, from lanes one to eight. So it is Shanika Jones in lane one, Sophia Stevens in lane two, Kelly Agard in lane three, Vanisha Francis in lane three, Michaela Cambridge in lane, Vanisha is in lane four, Michaela Cambridge in lane five, Tishona Bascom in lane six, Colette Yearwood in lane seven and running for Bolt, Elizabeth Durand in lane eight. There we have it, the starting lineup for the 200 meters, the second of three finals. And the time they're going to be here is 28.15 seconds by Kayla Allen from Karakou. They're off and running, good start. The athlete from St. Joseph's Convent is going well, but look at the athlete on the inside. And that is Sophia Stevens. She has really made up the stagger. Outside is the athlete from Bolt. He's also right there. So they straighten themselves up now, and they come into the home straight with a three-way uh, tussle. But it looks as Colette Yearwood from uh, uh, MVP, who is holding on from the athlete, that's uh, Sophia Stevens. And that's the way they finish. Colette so Yearwood... From MVP. It's actually Tishana Bascom of Bolt in lane six, who was the eventual winner. Tishana Bascom of Bolt. Am I correction? Tishana Indeed, Bascom of 28 Bolt. 28.37. 28.37. And Sophia Stevens on the inside. That's Sophia Stevens of FMJS. She finished second. And Michaela Cambridge in third position. So Stevens from St. Mary's Junior in second with 28.99. And uh, Michaela Cambridge, South City Rising Stars, 29.19. That brings the conclusion of section two of three. So we're going into the third section of this final, the 42nd event, the girls 200 meter dash under 13. We have Mackenzie Carisquel. Suma Andrews, Kiana McIntyre, Aaliyah Campbell, Ariana James, Gianna Gilbert, Elisha Rose Benjamin, and Mia Clovey. Um, we'd look to see in spot number six is not filled. So Gianna Gilbert is not participating and seems to be the only athlete who is not participating in this event. So we have seven athletes participating in section three of event 42. The girls 200 meter dash under 13. Well, Kayla Allen still has the fastest time after the two finals have been completed. 
And we see here that Alia Campbell comes in with a time of 30.9 and Ariana James 30.91. These are the only two athletes that we have entry times for. But um, they'd have to do a lot better than that if they were to be in medal contention here this evening. I expect a good run from Elijah Rose Benjamin. Um, all week she has been performing well. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that in this event she is also going to be um, running very, very well. How fast that will be, it will be determined. Um, she is out there in lane number seven, uh, four track blazers. A couple of days ago she gave some stunning performances in the private primary school games. And if that is indicative of anything, we expect her to run well here. Well, a measure of concentration indeed from Eliza Rose Benjamin as she has won the heart of Keith Patrick today. <laughs> and let's see if she can uh, live up to his expectation and not disappoint. But nonetheless, all the athletes are going to give a good account of themselves. And they're running to beat the time established by Kayla Allen, 28.15, oh, to get the gold medal uh, in this event. And remember, you are looking at the girls 200 meters on that 13, this section three of three. So quite an appreciable crowd has joined us here at the National Stadium. Not as big as we would have expected, I would think, but still an appreciable crowd. And we know how Grenadians love their track and field. As they, they call the starters orders. They brought a stand. Cause well, we can see the athlete out there in lane 8 for Fusion is indicating that she was not hearing. And that's me at Clovey because we saw her fidgeting a little bit on the set call. And that is something we observe in some of the events at the National Stadium. The athletes out there in lane 8 have some difficulty hearing the starters. Something that has to be rectified, especially when we reach to uh, more they're off and running. The athlete on the outside from Fusion is going well. So too is the athlete that's uh, Elijah Rose Benjamin on the outside. She's going very smoothly. Then behind her, I can see the athlete on the inside of her from Velocity. That's Aliyah Campbell. They straighten themselves up now. But it's going to be Elijah Rose and uh, Campbell. Aliyah Campbell as they're coming towards the line. Rose is holding on. She's stretching her lead. She's extending herself. She's coming towards the line. She's going to win it very easily. Rose, and it's close between the athletes of uh, Fusion and St. Mary's uh, School for second and third respectively. But it's Elijah Rose very easily winning in a time of 28.97 seconds, whether that is sufficient for her to win, but um, we'll wait on the results, the official results. Well, Eliza Rose did not disappoint Patrick. <laughs> you did say that she had a good week and she continued to do well. Ariana James in second for St. Mary's Junior. And I can tell you with a time of 29.86. And so the fastest time that we've had here is actually from Karaku in Kayla Allen, 28.15. The second fastest time being uh, 28.97 by Eliza Rose Benjamin. And the third fastest time, 28.99 by uh, Sophia Stevens from... Oh, uh, sorry, 28.37 was the second fastest from Tishana Bascom of Bolt. And so third place would go to Eliza Rose Benjamin. Now it's the boys' turns. We switched to the boys' 200 meters on the 13. Four sections in this one, and in the first section, so I can tell you in lane one, we should see Joshua Modest, lane two, Jaden Isaac, lane three, Azonzo Mitchell, lane five, Noah Samuel, six, Tristan Phillip, seven, Kimari Joseph, eight, Morris Lett, and Sorry, lane four, Jelani Thomas. Eight is Maurice Lett. Seven is Kamari Joseph. Six is Tristan Phillip. As Patrick takes us through this one. Okay, they're off and running. The athlete on the inside is running very well from Bolt. So it is the athlete from St. Joseph's Conrad. But out on the far side is the runners. Sports Club who has the lead. Uh, on the inside of him is the other athlete from uh, runners. 
But they're going towards the line. They're coming towards the line, and it's going to be Tristan Philip. It looks like who's going to win this event very, very easily. In second position is the athlete from uh, uh, Runners, and they're close behind. So, uh, uh, Patrick, I think uh, the two heats have been the two well, have been combined. I was, yes, I was just Kamari, looking at Kamari <laughs> Joseph. Yes, I was just looking at that because I looked at the number, and it wasn't reflective of what I was looking here on the program. So, so the first two sections, one and two have been merged and it is Kimari Joseph athlete number 221 of MVP who won that event in a time of 28.29 uh, Tristan Philip of Runners Athletic Club in 29.68 and Joshua Modest of Runners in a time of 30.82 you know um, like from the commentary perspective you know we have the listings and it would have been good if we had any kind of indication that these events are being merged just from the quality of the commentary. So we're getting set now for that should be the second the section. Third. The third section. Now. Well, if we join the well, first the second, and second, yeah, because the <laughs> <laughs> And there goes yeah. the point that you were making. <laughs> yes. But just to give you the lane assignment, the lane one, we will see Trace, Pax, and Bernard from Fusion. Lane 2, Javin Noel from South City Rising Stars. Lane 3, Jaden Strong from 473 MVP. Lane 4, Giovanni Green from Fusion. 5, Kiel Stanislaus from Karaku. 6, Tyler Davis also from Karaku. 7, Nolan Mac Marlon McIntosh from St. Joseph Convent. And in 8, Christian Lessie from St. David's Track Blazers. It would seem that this event, the third and fourth section is merged also. Mm. Yes, it yes, is. Yes, it, it has. It, yeah. So, yeah, you go. So they on the starters all us now, and they're up and running. Who, was, who wants it more? St. Bernard in lane one. Noel in two. Strong in three. Green in four. As they run the turn now to head into the home straight. Looking good on the inside in lane two is Javin Noel. Javin Noel from South City Rising Stars. He's getting good challenge from Karaku in the likes of Tyler Davis. But... Uh, in lane two, Javin Noel. Javin Noel struggling a little bit here, but he's going to win it easily. In second is the athlete from Karaku, Tyler Davis. And a good run, a strong run from lane two from Javin Noel. So we come to the conclusion of event number 43. The boys 200 meter dash. And that is in the under 15 category. So Javin Noel, 27.42. Tyler Davis, 27.76. Well, it's a new record established by Javin Noel. I can tell you that the record was 24.06. So that's not a new record. It's not a new record. It's actually 27.42 years run. And some measure away from the record as well. So it's just a good performance of 27.42. <laughs> but that's the fastest time in any event of the two finals. So he, would won he has won himself the, the gold medal as we get set for the girls 200 meter under 15. Uh, in lane number one, as assigned on our document here, there is no person there. So we have Daria Forrester of Bolton. Lane 2, Janiah Williams of St. Andrews Anglican Secondary in 3, Makeda Henry of SCRS in 4, Kashanti Mitchell of Finish Line in 5, and Doisha Lewis of Runners Club in 6. So there's no 6. So there they go, the under 15 girls, 200 meters. South City Rising Stars is there and looking good. Finish line is also there. On the outside, it seems as though it's the athlete from finish line in, in lane number five. Under some pressure, but seems as though she's going to cross the finish line in first position. Indeed, she has in lane five. That's Kashanti Mitchell from finish line. And in second, look as though it was Makeda Henry of South City Rising Stars, uh, the winners of that particular finals. 
this section has six sections <laughs> of the finals. So we're getting into section number two. And we expect Alicia Gordon to take her place in lane one from Velocity. Kadisha Nore of Track Blazers in two. Array Rose Noel of Bolt in three. Jerrian Guy of Karaku and P.T. Martinique in four. Kai Griffith of Bolt in, in five. And Aliana Antoine of Velocity in lane number six. I think they are all participating. There's a certain level of urgency now for the running off of the events. Not that they had any delay by any stretch of the imagination, but it's becoming a little darker and with some ominous clouds up at the northern section. So probably the officials may have looked at that and tried to see as quickly as possible how they can come to a conclusion of today's meet. We're getting ready for section two of six. Girls 200 meter run. Under 15. Real people. <laughs> So there we get a good shot here from our cameraman to show us the ominous clothes that Patrick <laughs> was referring to. Very, very cloudy situation. They're off and running. A great start by the athlete from uh, Karakou and Pity Martinique. Also running well on the inside in lane two is Track Blazers. They come to the top and straightening themselves up. Still the athlete from Karakou has the lead. That's Jerry and Guy. Running on Track Blazers has just struck the lead on the inside. But it's going to be a tussle as they're coming down. Bolt is in third position. But Track Blazers athlete is digging deep. Uh, that's Kadisha Nori and she's running away now from asserting herself as she comes towards the line. She wins it easily from Kerian for Karako and Pity Martinique. Very close between the athlete of Fusion and Bolt for second and third respectively. So a very a easy win for Kadisha Nore of Track Blazers. 28.42 for Kadisha Nore. And in second, uh, Jerry and Guy from Karaku, 29.48. And Guy did a lot of the early running here. It was only maybe the last 50 meters or so that we saw uh, Khadija Nori really pulling away from her. Now let me give you some quick update on from event number 25 that happened earlier. The boys long jump on the 17. I'll give you the first three places. Cody Grant, he, he had a distance of 6.60 meters as the winner. In second place, Java Kato, and they are both Cody and Java from Exit Club, and he had a distance of 6.44 meters. And in third place was Sean Henry, St. Vincent track team of 5.99 meters. So that was the under 17 boys long jump. We're getting set for section three of the six finals. We have a full slate of athletes. Going, Chris Charles and Kimaya Peters represent St. Andrews Anglican Secondary in lane one and two. In lane three, finish line is represented by Kazara Johnson. In lane number four is Ar Arisha Regis of Fusion. Kadasha Greenwich of St. Joseph's Convent St. George's in five. Amaya Chandler of finish line in six. And Rosemary Thomas of Velocity Sports Club is in lane number seven. Smitty. Well, they're on the starters orders. And they're up and running. Nice clean start here for the third of six finals in the under 15, 15 girls, 200 meters. Looking good as the athlete out there in lane number five. That's Alicia Greenwich of St. Joseph Convent. She runs the turn nice, but also looking good is Chandler from Finish Line Sports Club. It's a tough one here. Two athletes of the finish line looking good for position one. But here comes Sass on the inside for third. As they push towards the finish line, it's indeed the athlete in lane number six. That's Chandler, Amea Chandler of finish line who wins this one. And her teammate, Jazara Johnson, seems to have taken the second position here. And Sass having to settle for third. 
I told the athlete from that Christina Charles of SAS may have just nipped the other athlete from finish line for second position. Well, that may very well be so. <laughs> Indeed, Christi Christina Charles of SAS being given the second position. So it was uh, Chandler 27.86. Christina Charles of SAS in second with 28.20. And in third, Jazara Johnson, 28.25. We're moving on to section four. Kayla Christopher of Chuck Blazers in one. Kayla McIntyre of St. Joseph's Convent in two. Jadine Alexander of St. Joseph's Convent. Rachel Atien in four, representing MVP. The Maya Daniel of Velocity Track Club in five. Dejan Brown of Caracol PT Martinique. Jada Roberts of MVP. And Monique Binder of Finish Line. These are the athletes as we see the rain starts pouring down. So most likely this, this, this event will take place uh, in a running, in a raining situation. They're off and running. A uh, great start for the athlete from finish line on the outside. Also running well is the athlete from Velocity. Look at Track Blaze on the inside lane and has covered a lot of stagger, but they come wrong to the turn. Is the athlete from MVP and finish line. Track Blazers on the inside. This is going to be a good run coming home. The athlete from uh, finish line is finishing strongly, but on the inside is all Track Blazers. Track Blazers, finish line and MVP. Track Blazers, finish line, finish line. Track Blazers MVP, very close on the line, Smitty. Very close. But I, th <laughs> I thought that Track Blazers on the inside in Kayla Christopher was the eventual winner. But a strong run from Monique Binder from finish line as well. A very strong finish. As the showers continue to pour here, showers of blessing. Moments ago, we were looking at the dark clouds, Patrick. Yeah. And now the clouds have broken up and have descended onto the Kiriani James Athletic Stadium in the form of rain. Certainly, and, and that's going to be an interruption for our delivery here. So uh, 26, with our cameras. Monique Binder has been judged the winner out there in lane 8 from finish line 26.84. So we didn't see it as, as, as the official saw it. And in second position on the inside from track blazers 26.85, Kayla Christopher. Christopher. And now for an update on the event that has passed. The boys javelling on the 20th. I'm going to give you the first three positions. Mm -hmm. In position number one, from St. Davis track, track Blazers, with a distance of 59.21 meters. Cameron Thomas, with a distance of 54.56 meters. And from Track Blazers, Rajon Telesford. And in third position, again from St. Davis Track Blazers, with a distance of 50.64 meters, Kism Collins. A clean sweep for Track Blazers in this one. Well, we expect Track Blazers to always do well in the javelin event. And uh, their coach there, Paul Phillip. Uh, Paul Phillip has a lot of accolades to his name as, as far as javelin is concerned. We may have a slight interruption due to the rain that we're having here at the National Stadium. And uh, we've seen at the international level, uh, rain does not stop track and field. They actually perform in the rain. But I guess the athletes and officials here are taking cover, so to speak. Uh, they must take into consideration, too, is a lot of young kids under 13, under 11, under 15. And um, they have to balance it. Uh, to see how long the rainfall will come. But from looking from our vantage point, it seems to be blowing away slightly. So let's hope that the interruption is not prolonged. Well, Monique Binder, she has the fastest time. As we see, another 200-meter event is in progress. So they're actually competing in the rain. Maybe our cameraman has actually taken covers. <laughs> but uh, here we're going to bring it to you still. There they go. Uh, the 200 meters uh, section five of six and looking and good is the athlete in lane three that's uh Mustang Shakinia Dixon from yeah, high performance. performance yes she's in the lead high performance on the other side and looking good too is the athlete in lane seven that's from Mustang and that's uh, Patterson from Mustangs mm -hmm. so it's a uh, one two for St. Vincent I would think in the likes of uh, the athlete from high performance that's Shakinia Dixon and then we have from Mustangs Hirana uh, Patterson, Hirana Patterson. So 26.84. A good run. That's a good time. It seems to be a medal well, time. 
she and Monique Bell Binder did this exact same time, 26.84 and 26.99 for Patterson of Mustang. They're getting ready for the final section, the sixth section of a final six. We expect in this event, Rishona Moraine of Track Blazers in lane one, Lauren McIntosh of MVP in two, Kedona Douglas of uh, RAC in three, Egypt Regis of SCRS in four, Shade John of Track Blazers, Aliyah McDowell of High Performance, Jikisha Kelly of Mustangs, and Garcia Leetwood of High Performance. Well, Egypt Regis is one to definitely look forward to in this event from South City Rising Stars. She won her finals in the 100 meters earlier on this evening with a splendid performance. And she's expected to do well here again in this the 200 meters. She comes in with a, a best time for the season of 27 seconds flat. And already we saw the fastest times being 26.99. So she's right about there. I'm not sure how she would perform in the rain. Oh, the it rain is, the rain, that the rain is pouring cats and dogs at the moment. I'm looking at Shade John from Track Blazer. She had some good performances earlier in the day. And also, indeed, indeed. Yeah, also the athlete from High Performance, Garcia Leetwood. They're off and running um, in the rain. And they're coming towards the top of the street. This is going to be very, very competitive by this swinging. But it's going to be Shade John who's looking good. Uh, from Track Blazers on the inside of her, you can see Kedona Douglas of, of um, RAC. Kedona Douglas of RAC is getting the better of Shade John. Kedona Douglas is coming towards the line. She win it. Shade John in second. The athlete from SCRC, that's Egypt Regis, finished third. Well, I can tell you, Kedona Douglas and Shade John have been battling all season. <laughs> And they have been exchanging the performances in terms of the top position all season. Kedona Douglas is a phenomenal athlete from runners. So too is Shadi John. Shadi John winning earlier on today as well. And these two athletes continue to compete and been very, very competitive as well. So 25.72, the fastest time so far. Shadi John. And 25.85, the second fastest time by... So here we see again, Kedona Douglas getting the better of Shade John, 25.72 and 25.85. And now to give you an update on event, the field event that would have taken place in the boys' high jump open. In position number one, with a height of 2.06 meters, the winner was Kenny Hosford from South City Rising Stars in second position with a height of 1.86 meters from St. David's Track Blazers, Elisha Williams, and in third position with a height of 1.80 meters finish from Finish Line Sports Club, Mark Parrott. Well, it's raining cats and dogs here at the Kiriani James Athletic Stadium. It's really, really pouring here now. The fans have taken covers. The stands are cleared, so to speak. And uh, it's not a pretty sight here at the National Stadium. And not the best conditions for track and field as well. These kinds of cold and wet conditions really affect the athletes' performances. And uh, I'm sure the officials have taken cover themselves. Our cameraman has just returned to the booth here. He too has taken covers. We're pretty much very comfortable here, I would say, gentlemen. Yes, yeah, certainly. And <laughs> but, but we look forward to the resumption yeah, of okay. the exciting track and field action here at the Kirani James Olympic Stadium. We still have the boys 200 meter run on the 15. We have five sections of that event. And then we have the girls 200 meter on the 17. The boys 200 meter on the 17. Then we have the girls 200 meter run open. We have the boys 200 meter run open. And then we have the boys 200 meter 20 plus and boys and girls 200 meter 20 and over. And then we have the 800 meter runs open. And then after that, we'll come to the, that's in boys and girls category. And we expect to go into the real event. So we have quite a bit of activity still resting for the conclusion, uh, for the conclusion of the Whitsuntide Games 2022. Let's hope that the rainfall would cease and then we'll get the activity going um, as soon as possible so that we could finish because it's now by my time it's 
17 minutes to 7. And uh, we have as much as 10 or so uh, events still carded to go. So what are we going to do, Patrick and Antoine? Maybe we will take a rain delay break, so to speak. <laughs> I like and that. And resu <laughs> resume momentarily when the live track and field action continues. So we ask you to stay with us. Don't go away. We're going to keep the shot up. We're going to keep the, the coverage up. But we're going to return as soon as the rain has subsided and the track and field action continues at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. We'll be back. Blue Bubbles, PA Rentals and Event Supplies. Blue Bubbles.
It's the boys under 15, 200 meters. South City Rising Stars, Runners Athletics Club, Caracou Athletics Committee, SAS. They're coming on down. SAS is in front. SAS it is. Runners Athletics, Caracou Athletics Committee. Under 15, boys. 200 meters. SAS 1 and 2, Caracou in third position. MVP in fourth. SCR in five and Bolt in six. That's the first just of the uh, section one the of the, of the event number 49, the boys 200 meter run oh, under 15. Unfortunately, our third uh, commentator, Bernard Antoine, has had to leave us. So, Smitty and I will continue and bring you to the conclusion of the event here this afternoon. Well, a good run by Christoph Callis of SAS 25.88. And his teammate Tevez Lewis with 26.23. Carly Lendo of Karaku was third with 26.54. In section two of the final, we expect in lane two, Renel Batiste of finish line. Makaya Romain of St. Joseph's Convent St. George's in lane three. McNeil Frame of MVP in four. Nathaniel Douglas of Fusion in five. Ricky Adon Edwards of finish line in six. Tabil Joseph of Karaku and P.T. Martinique in seven, and Jaden Pear of Bolt in eight. So these are the competitors for the second of five finals in the 200 meter run under 15 boys. Already Christoph Kalis of Sass establishing a mark here of 25.88. Let's see if any of the competitors in the second finals can go past that. The top three times would be given uh, the first, second and third positions of these five finals. They are and they are off for the second of the five finals. In section two of the under 15 boys. Words, Mitty. And uh, looks as though Karaku in the likes of uh, Tabil Joseph here with a good 20 meters lead, I would think. But he's getting a good chase here now from the athletes on the inside from Fusion, it seems Nathaniel Douglas. But Karaku wins this one comfortable in second position in lane number five. Nathaniel Douglas of Fusion, the top two finishers. And we're going to see what time that. Uh, Tabil Joseph has returned 26.02 is the time. And in second with 28.58, Jaden Pierre. Nathaniel Douglas actually in second with 27.77. We're moving on to section three of five. Um, Down to run in lane one is Rishon Daniel of Bolt. Calvin Harris of finish line in two. Brandon Lewis of MVP in three, Zepinaya Mori of uh, Runners in four, Kajim Walters of Bolt in five, Jomin Campbell of Runners in six, Daniel Mark of Runners in seven, and Khalid Peters of Karakou and Piti Martinique uh, scheduled to run out in lane number eight. So Christoph Kalis still has the fastest time, 25.88. And uh, let's see what the athletes here now in this under 15 category. Three competitors from Runners Athletics Club. So we, we're thankful that the rain has subsided, Patrick, and we have the resumption of the track events. Um, that's a good a thing. Very sharp and quick uh, return to heavy activity. Downpour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the officials are racing to come to a conclusion of the games here. Uh, we're already nearing the 7 o'clock hour, and we have quite a bit of activity still remaining on the card. In the meantime, uh, we're looking at Section 3 of the finals. They're off and running. A great start by the athlete. Uh, that's uh, from uh, the runners on the far side. But in the middle of them, I can see the athlete from MVP is going very well. Um, also the athlete from finish line, that's Calvin Harris. Calvin, but look at the athlete from Karakuan, P.T. Martinique on the outside. That's Khalid Peters going like a bullet. 
Kalit Peters has it on the outside. Kalit Peters from Kalkon Piti Martin, he takes it very easily. A smashing run. On the inside of him was Rishon Daniel of both in second position and Calvin Harris of finish line in that order. Well, he was out of our shot for a moment, but when they straightened up and headed for the home straight, it was only Khalid Peters who was in the lead. And what a great run indeed from the youngster from Karaku Athletics Committee, Khalid Peters. 25.45, the great fastest run. time so far. A wind of minus 0 0.1, so that's a great run. 26.92 for Rishon Daniel in second. And Calvin Harris is 27.52 for third. So we're moving into section four of the fifth final. Tashon Postle of Track Blazers in one, Maverick Frame of MVP in two, Josh Thomas of SCRS in three, Daniel Remy of High Performance in Vincent and the Grenadines in four, Riley Forrester of Finish Line in five. Isaiah Patterson of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in uh, that six. Cameron Antoine of Track Blazers in seven. And LeBron Granger of SCRS is out in lane number eight. This should be another very competitive one. The likes of uh, Granger inside there. And uh, Antoine from Track Blazers. Ryan Daniel. Daniel Ryan from High Performance. Maverick frame. Go ahead, Smitty. And they're up and running. A nice, clean start here. In this, the 200 meters. Look at St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the middle of the track. But look at the athlete here now in lane number three. And that's looked like Josh Thomas from South City Rising Stars. South City Rising Stars looking good, both on the inside. And also on the outside with LeBron Granger. South City Rising Stars for one and two. He looks to the right to look to see where Granger is. But South City Rising stands for one and two here. And SVG in six. And the likes of Isaiah Patterson comes in third. But you saw the little gamesmanship. The athlete on the inside for South City Rising Stars with 25.49. Josh Thomas, the eventual winner. A good run from LeBron, LeBron Granger from SCRC also on the outside of him. Uh, they were well clear of uh, Daniel Remy of High Performance. Well, an interesting situation here as we look back to see Granger and uh, Thomas battling here. Very close, 25.49 and 25.52. But then we saw Thomas looking over the shoulder here and glancing at his man and winning in the end. Uh, just sneak sneakily winning in, by, in the end. Josh Thomas. And uh, Josh Thomas with the fastest time so far. Sorry, the second fastest time. The fastest by Cali Davis, 25.45. Second fastest so far, Josh Thomas, 25.49. And third fastest, 25.88. We, we're getting into the fifth of the five finals in this event. The Mari Roberts of High Performance in one, Limo Oliver of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in two, John St. Care of SAS in, four, in three, Delron John of SAS in four, Cameron Matlin of SCRC in five, Amari Francis of Fusion in six, Toby Samuel AB, VTS, that's Velocity Track Club, and on the outside, Ethan Thomas of Exceed. There they go, the competitors for the fifth and final section in the 200 meter run under 15. Some 37 competitors in this event. The real time to beat 25.45 to win the gold medal. And there they go. It's the final heat, the final finals in this, the 200 meters for the under 15 boys. And in the middle of the track here, it looks as though it's South City Rising Stars in Cameron Mathlin. Cameron Mathlin trailed down by Sass on the inside in the likes of Delron John. But it is South City Rising Stars. South City Rising Stars, Sass in second and third. But what a good run here by Cameron Mathlin. And in second was Deron Sincere. And third, Delroy John, both of Sass. That, that was an excellent uh, performance from Cameron Mathlin. 
I'm looking to see the time. It has to be a very good time. 23.60. 23 the fastest time he by must far. Have won the, this event with that timing. And also Zero. John Sincere with 24.76. That's another good performance. So probably the first, second, and third may be coming out of absolutely of, out, absolutely. out, out, out of section five of the five finals that we had in the event number 49, the boys 200 meter run under 15. We're getting ready immediately and moving on uh, expeditiously. Event number 50, the girls 200 meter run under 17. In lane number two, we have Delcia Davidson of finish line, Tamara Thomas of SASS in three, Akela Roberts of Calico and Pity Martinique in four, Kelsey Frank finish line in five, Kamaya Telesford of Chuck Blazers in six, Jadisha Samuel of High Performance, and Denisha Scott bringing up the seven artists participating in the girls 200 meter run under 17. The record for this event is 24.63, established on the 4th of June 2017 by Abigail Diet. Well, the events are going fast and furious now, Patrick. Yes, certainly. Even the results yeah, have been uh, posted uh, uh, much quicker. quicker so yeah. It's easier to wonder what has been keeping the officials back from posting the results that quickly earlier today and on previous occasions. And uh, oh, they well certainly can be faster, <laughs> as we see happening now. Yeah. 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 Um, just by way of reflection, Smitty, um, how you grade the performances today in the Whitson Tide Games 2022? Well, there has been there have been some outstanding performances. We saw some sub-11 performances, and we also saw a brilliant run by Shante Augustine to set a new record in the 400, 400 meters. meters. Yeah, we're going to come back to that momentarily as we look to the first of three finals here in the under-17 girls 200 meters. Kamara tell us what is there from Track Blazers, Jadisha Samuel from High Performance, Donisha Scott from Track Blazers, Tamaya Thomas from SAS, Akela Roberts from Karaku, Deslia Davison from Finish Line, another one to look out for. So SAS has scratched, there's no SAS in it though, and uh, the rest of the field is here. Uh, they're going to have another crack at it. There they go, it's a better start now. And. Uh, Who's going to make the early run here? St. Davis Track Blazers looking good with Kamaya Telesford. But who comes out nicely? High performance in Judicial Samuel is also looking good. High performance on Track Blazers. Kamaya Telesford, Judicial Samuel. But it's Samuel who has a slight advantage over Kamaya Telesford. And she's going to win it running out in lane seven. Jadisha Samuel for high performance and in second it looks as though it's Kamaya Telesford of Track Blazers. Blazers yes, in that order. Uh, and then we're moving on to section Look how fast the time has come up. 26.80 for Jadisha Samuel. <laughs> we move into section two. Kishira Mark of MVP in lane one. Serena Charles of SCRS in two. Keanna Joseph of Finish Line in three, Gina David of Track Blazers in four, Rihanna Rawlings of Caracol and Pity Martinique in five, Amir Sylvester of SCRC in six, Alia Gittens of Caracol and Pity Martinique in seven, and Rihanna McIntyre of Finish Line in eight. So well, it's going to be a real battle here now between Serena Charles and the likes of Gina David and uh, Rihanna McIntyre. Yeah. Uh, Serena Charles, she won the 400 meters earlier on today and she's back here for the 200 meters. So this is going to be a very exciting finish, I presume. But we are seeing some spaces in uh, slot number three, slot number four, slot number seven uh, and also slot number six. So we only have one, two, three, four, four athletes participating in the second of the finals of three in the girls 200 meter run under 17. They're off and running. A good start by the athlete from finish line on the outside. That's Rihanna McIntyre. She's going well. The athlete from Caraco and Pity Martinique is also there. Look at the athlete on the inside. That's Kiana Joseph going also going very well. But it's finish line on the far side. And on the inside is the athlete now. That is going to be SCRC Serena Charles. She's coming away from them. She's running on very strongly. So it's Serena Charles from Rihanna McIntyre on the line. Sienna Charles wins it. 
Rihanna McIntyre in second, the athlete from Karakou is in third, and MVP, the athlete from MVP, finishing in fourth position. Again, a good run out of lane two for Serena Charles of South City Rising Stars. Having a pretty, pretty decent out in the South City Rising Stars, 27.89. A uh, good run. She has the third fastest time so far. 28.59 for McIntyre. We're getting uh, ready for section three of final three. In this event, we expect Shaquania Jacobs of XC to participate in lane one. Alina Dikoto of MVP in two. Shafonia Houston of SCRS in three. Shante Augustine in four, representing MVP. Giolina Dowdy of Phoenix in five. Talia Sampson of MVP in six. Akira Moraine of Track Blazers in seven. And uh, on the outside in lane number eight, Elizabeth Solomon of High Performance. Well, Giolina Gio Dowdy from Phoenix out of Trinidad. She was the winner of the 100 meters. Shante came in second and Shafonia Houston came third, I think it was. And if you look at the times that they are coming in here with today, Phoenix comes in with 25.5. Shante comes in with 25.1. Houston comes in with 25.94. The top three times coming into this event. Um, Talia Sampson, she comes in with 26.56. And uh, Alina Dicoto of MVP, she comes in with 26.95. Shante so Augustin in, in lane number four. So Giolina Dowden, by virtue of winning the 100 meters, she must be a favorite. But Shante Augustin was second, and she also won the 400 meters in a record time. So these two would be in top contention together with a Shafonia Houston for honors here. Shafonia Houston had the better of Shante Augustine at the Intercall Games. Let's see what happens here today. Go ahead, Smitty. Are they on the starter's orders? Keep your eyes on the screen. This one is going to be a cracker. And they're up and running. Who wants to make the earlier running? I see Dowdy looking good here in the middle of the track. But it is Shanti Augustine who has a slight advantage on the inside of her. As they straighten up and head down to the home straight and finish line. Shanti Augustine comes at the turn ahead. Here comes Dowdy with a bust of speed. Running back hard is Dowdy. Shanti is not giving up. On the inside is Houston as well. Here comes Dowdy for the win. Dowdy wins it now over Shanti Augustine. But a close one indeed. A good run back here by Dowdy. That's Jolina Dowdy of Phoenix Track Club out of Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, a, a superb run. Um, she, Sante seems to have stuttered with just about 40 or 50 meters to go. Her strides shortened, and you can see that Dowdy lengthened her stride. She dug deep and accelerated when it, uh, it mattered. On, also running a great race was Shakonia Jacobs of Exceed in lane number one. Um, she was closing on them, but not in, not in time to really, she could only finish in third position. But if you look at the replay here, you could see that Shante is struggling. Her strides are a little bit shortening, and Dowdy has lengthened her stride, and is coming away very, very easy. She ran a very confident race, um, and I thought she ran that race to a, a real plan. She wasn't worried when Shante uh, uh, took the lead as they came with just over 100 meters to go, and then uh, you can see that Dowdy is very, very confident of, of her form and her performances here at this well, 2022. These are the three top finishers, gold, silver, and bronze, right before you here. Julina Dowdy, 25.1. She came in with 25.5, so she has done better. Shante came in with 25.1, and she ran 25.27. And uh, Jacobs, she came in with 26.95. She actually ran better, much better, to 25.96. We're moving on to event number 51, the boys 200 meter run under 17. The record in this event is 20.19, established on the 9th of June 2019 by Nazio John. We have Keel Batiste from St. Andrews Anglican Secondary in lane 2. Jonathan Newton of South City Rising Star in 3. Emilio Bishop who ran very well this afternoon earlier prior in the 100 meter. He's in lane 4 representing SCRC. Nathan Hele is in lane 5. And uh, he represents MVP and Jamie Penny of finish line in lane number six. Well, the record here held by Nazio John. Nazio John is one of our national athletes who is out there in the U.S. Represented Grenada at the World Youth Championships in Kenya this year and also at the Karifta Games. Games. And he's one of our top sprinters for the 100 and 200 meters. 
I want to say hats off to his, his, his dad, Fernando John, and his mom, Alana John, who are <laughs> always key in on the live broadcast. And I'm certain there must have been a very good reason why Nazio John and, and his dad is not here at the games. They always attend all of the national championships that are held here in Grenada. So good evening to you, Nazio, wherever you are. And you certainly missed. Your record is up for contention here. Let's hope these youngsters uh, can come very closely, if not break the record. Uh, an impressive record indeed of 20.19 seconds. Kiel Batiste in lane number two, representing St. Andrews Anglican Secondary. We have two SCRC athletes, Jonathan Newton and Emilio Bishop. I expect Emilio Bishop to give a good account of himself in this event. And on the far outside, Jamie Penny of finish line. So five athletes participating Five athletes participating in event number section one of five in the boys 200 meter run on the 17. They're off to a good start. They're off to a good start. The athlete from finish line is going well. Also going well, that, that's Nathan Hiller. Uh, running on very strongly is Emilio Bishop. So it's going to be between Nathan Hillier and Emilio Bishop. The athlete from Sass is also trying desperately. It's now Emilio Bishop and Nathan uh, Hillier. Hillier is holding on and they come towards the line. Hillier from Emilio Bishop and Kiel Batiste in that order. Well, what a good and consistent run here by Nathan Hillier. He was challenged from start to finish by Emilio Bishop. But in the end, he ran 23.43 to win this event and 23.59 for Emilio Bishop. Uh, not bad time indeed by the youngsters, but we expect them to do much better at the under 17 category, maybe 20, a low 23. Sass in third. Sass in third at the moment, 24.14. We go to section number two of the five finals. Ravon Sylvester of RAC is in lane one, Anton Daniel of Trailblazers in two, in three we have Nikel Bartholomew of Bolt, Christian Joseph of Sass in four, Jaheem Williams of High Performance out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in five, Travis St. Bernard of uh, RAC is in six, Chris Clement of Karaku Athletic Committee in seven, and Jaden McQueen of Bolt in lane number eight. Well, the action and the excitement continues. The races are coming at a much quicker pace now, so don't move a muscle. Stay glued to your mobile devices wherever you are. The second of five finals about to start. Three competitors here. There they go, up and running, all in red here. Let's see who comes around the bend first, but looking good on the outside. And in lane six, it looks as though it's Travis St. Bernard from Runners. But on the inside, in lane two, from MVP, Anton Daniel. Or is it in lane three? It's actually Nickel Bartholomew of Bolt. Bolt, it is. Nickel Bartholomew of Bolt, the eventual winner here in the second of five finals. 24.34 the time. Right, slightly slower than the previous uh, section, than section one. Travis said Bernard is second. So we're moving on, and we're moving on very quickly. We come to the third section three of the final. Antoine Aline in lane one, South City Rising Star. In lane number two of Mustangs, Romario Horn. Ethan Isaac of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, track team in four. Leroy Gloucester of High Performance in five. Also of High Performance is Zachary Sobers in seven. Hussein Jabbar of Runners Athletics Club in eight. Jubel Oliver of High Performance is in three. And Sherman Williams of Caracu Athletics Club in six. Well, the races are coming faster and faster. <laughs> yes, yeah, certainly. We can take a breath here before the events are called. And the results are released as well. And... Uh, we urge you to stick where you are as we bring it to you live 
from TNR Communications. Zach Christobas from High Performance, Leroy Gloucester also from High Performance, and so too is Jabril Olivier. So three competitors from High Performance out of SVG. We spoke with the founder earlier on today and he gave us a good perspective of the club. We Chester also, Morgan. We also have Romario Umar, Horn of Mustangs. He's running out of lane number two. So participation dominated by the clubs from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. On the other side, we have Hussein Jabbar from Runners. And on the inside, we have Antoine Aline from South City Rising Stars. Let's see if they can upset the day here for the athletes from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. There they go, up and running. And the third of five finals. Looking good already is uh, Zachary Sobers from High Performance on a lane seven. It's actually Zachary Sobers in the lead here. But what happens as they straighten now? It's still Zachary Sobers running good on the inside of lane two. So too is Romario Horn from Mustangs. Zachary is running good. A good run back here on the other side from runners from Hussein Jabbar. But a comfortable win in the end for the athletes from High Performance, Zachary Sobers. 22.86 and that's the kind of times we expect from these guys here 23.28 for Jabbar as we look back here Patrick a good run by the athlete from high performance that's Zachary Sobers he led from start to finish the legs pumping high uh, the arms maybe need a little bit more control. The head needs to be a little bit more, more still steady. as well. Yeah, it's bobbing all over the place. But I thought the athlete from Mustang ran a great race on the inside, but he faded uh, just with about five or so meters. And uh, Jabbar Hussein was able to run on strongly and gain that second position. So 22.86 the winning time and 23.28 the second place time. As we move quickly into the next finals, the next section. Daniel Strout in one, SCRC, Randy Jones of Caraco and Pity Martinique in two, Mikel Reddit of Track Blazers in three, Jaden Clement of Map in four, Quanel Pierre of MDP in five, Delron Delfish of Mustang in six, Anthony Charles of Finish Line in seven, and Shooter Douglas of Fusion out in lane number eight. Well, the time to beat for the gold medal, 22.86. Let's see if any of the competitors in this event can go past that time established by Zach Christobas only moments ago. So the rain has stopped completely and the athletes are ready to go. They're on the starter's orders. They set position, they're off and running. Brilliant start by the athlete on the outside. That's Jusha Douglas for Fusion. Also running very well is the athlete for Track Blazers. Look at the athlete in the middle of the track for Mustang. Uh, but it's always Track Blazers that has the lead on the inside. That is uh, Mikel Reddit is running very strongly. Jaden Clement is challenging him. It's going to be close as they come towards the line. Jaden Map on the line from Track Blazers. And the athlete from Mustang, that's Delron Delfish on the far side is out of lane number six. I thought they finished in that order. A great run from Jaden Clement of Map, just getting the better of the athlete Mikel Redhead from Track Blazers in lane number three. So 23.09 for Clement. From Map, a little start out of Trinidad and Tobago. So a good run here for him. The second was uh, Redhead from St. Davis with 23.15. That's Mikel. And third was Delpish from Mustangs, 23.44. So a good strong finish here from the athlete from Trinidad. That's Jaden Clement. As we see the official results not been posted. But the fastest time remains Zachary Sobers from High Performance. Second fastest time would be 
section seems to be on this one. Let's see what times we get from this one. So we Jaden get Clement, 23.09. We come to the final section in the boys 200 meter run on the 17. Uh, in lane number two, we have Aiden McIntosh of MVP. Expected to run out of lane number one is Jubini Ikolo from Fusion. Kyle Ned of SAS is in three. Keo Davis of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in four. Eton Sam of MVP is in five. Giovanni Jacobs of Excel is in six. DeAndre Andal of Sass in seven. And on the outside in lane number eight, we have Tyreek McSween of Track Blazers. Well, one to definitely look out for here from the St. Vincent Grammar School, Keo Davis. Carrifta medalist for St. Vincent in 2022. And he comes in with an impressive time of 22.19 seconds. So let's see if he can repeat that performance that will certainly give him a gold medal performance here at Whitsuntide Games 2022. Is the final and a double, section and a, and a double for him and a double for him as yes. well. Let's see how hungry Keo Davis is for this one as they're up and running. Keo Davis already making up the stagger on Ethan Sam on the outside, but Ethan Sam is going to give him a good run here. Ethan Sam rebounds well, but Keo Davis with a lead going into the home straight. Keo Davis, here comes Ethan Sam, Davis and Sam. Davis has the advantage over Ethan Sam. Keo Davis is going to win this one. Sam would have to settle for second. And on the inside, it looks as though the athlete from Sass and Kyle Ned would pick up the third position. So let's see what time has been returned by Keo Davis. But a good run indeed. Ethan Sam gave good challenge for the most part, but gave up 21.92. What a time indeed. 21.92. The record being 20.9.19, so off the record, but a good run indeed. Sam ran 22.32. So a good run indeed by Keo Davis here. Ethan Sam coasting over the line, giving up on the race, I would think, when he recognized he couldn't catch. Uh, Keo Davis, but a phenomenal performance here. 21.92 for Keo Davis from St. Vincent Grammar School. And, certainly, and that's a double for him on the day after winning the 100 meter in the under 17 category. Now doubling up in the 200 meter, same category. Uh, great performances from him. We're moving on and moving very quickly. We into event number 52, the girls 200 meter run open. The record for this game is 22.70, established on the 29th of May 2004 by Sharon Simpson. And at the stadium here, with a run of 22.45, established on the 6th of July 2003 by Sidoni Mothersill. Well, we just heard from the father of Nazio, John. He just like to let us know that Nazio had a very long season, and so they opted to rest him on this occasion, and they're getting him ready for the World Junior Games later on this year. We thank him for that information. And, he, and he's actually... Well. They're off and running for the first of the events. The young lady from Fusion is going well. So to the athletes of Track Blazers, so it's Track Blazers as they come at the top of the turn. Track Blazers has the lead. Mustang is running well on the inside. So it's the other athlete from... Um, Ace Hardware, but it's Shrug Blazers, Ace and Mustang. Shrug Blazers, Ace and Mustang. Shrug Blazers is getting the best of them. She's coming towards the line. Shrug Blazers wins it. Ace is second, Mustang third, Shrug Blazers fourth. Well, the excitement continues here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Live track and field action. Kamisha Dominic, 25.46. Trish, Trish Henson of High Performance, second, 26.29. And Tisha Laborde of Mustang in third position. Well, we heard Chester Morgan say that uh, Henson was one of his top athletes here today. She had to settle, settle for second position in this one. Uh, she just couldn't get the better of Track Blazers' Kemisha Dominic. Um, it would seem that the section one and two must have been merged so we move in we moving into section three the final section uh galen john of high performance 
In lane one, Kelsey Lambert of Fusion in lane two, Serena Richards of MVP in three, Mauricia Prito, outstanding run from her so far this afternoon in the 100 meter in lane four from Simplex, Rian Small of Phoenix in lane five, Brunel Thomas of SCRS in lane six, Cordine Phillip of MVP in seven, and Tavaya Thomas of XL out in eight, lane number eight. So we have one, two, three, four, five athletes are out of St. Vincent participating in this event. They're off and running. The athlete from that's uh, Tavaya Thomas had a good start from Excel. They're coming towards the top of the turn. And look at the athlete, that's the Vic Mauricio Prito. Uh, who has the lead is Prito. All Prito establishing herself and running away from them. It's Mauricio Prito accelerating and coming towards the line. Look at strong finish. Mauricio Prito. She coming away from them. Up towards the line. She wins it easily. From the athlete from Mustang on the inside is the other athlete from Ace. Uh, tracked up in third position, but it's all Mauricio Pitio, and we are waiting the time which I think is going to be um, excellent. Uh, uh, well, uh, she already won the 100 meters and she came back to do the double. The time is going to be an interesting one, it looks like an impressive performance, and we're going to bring it to you. But there she was coming off the bend with a good lead over the rest of the field 23.82 she has run, not her best, but good enough on the day in cold conditions as well or in, in rainy conditions but uh, Mauricia Piccio a uh, commanding performance here to win this one with maybe 20 meters or so ahead of the rest of the field a good performance for her she actually came into the event with a timing of 23.65 so um, and she ran without any pressing she was easy she won this event by some 20 or so uh, meters over the rest of the other artist. So good performance and a double for her on the day. That's Mauricia Prito of Simplex Sports Club. We're so she on. would win the gold medal and the silver and bronze would be between Kemisha Dominic of Trailblazers and uh, Brunel Thomas from South City Rising Stars. We're getting ready for event number 53, the boys 200 meter run under 20. That record is 21.49 established on the 4th of June 2017 by Ramadan Alexander. We have a uh, four sections of finals we have in the first of those it seems to be four artists participating in this race we have shamari hannibal of fusion in lane number six we have markel tanis of runners in lane five we have uh jasmine mcsween they often running three athletes here, so the athletes from okay, Runners, Fusion, and uh, so it is SCRC, the lead as they come to the top of the turn. Jasmine Maxwin has the lead. He's running away from them. In second position is Markel Tanis and Shamari Hannibal. But it is all over now. It is Jasmine Maxwin as he's running away, coming towards the line. He's going to win it very easily. Jasmine. Max Sween, the winner, Markel Tanis in second position of runners, and Shamari Hannibal of Fusion finished in the, in the third position. Well, an impressive 23.69 for Max Sween, and 25.06 for Markel Tanis. But a commanding victory here for Max Sween in this one. He really accelerated on the bend. And uh, by the time they straightened up and headed for the home street and finish line, he had a good 10 meters or so ahead of the second place competitor from runners. That's Markel Tanis and a good and commanding win indeed for Jassim McSween. We're going into section two now. Antonio Thomas of finish line is expected to run out of lane two. Julon Lagain of finish line in lane three. Joshua Greenwich of runners in lane four. Alistair Emmons of Caracol and P.T. Martinique in five. L.M. St. Paul of Fusion in six. Davin Thomas of Caracol and P.T. Martinique in seven. And George Lendo of St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School is expected to race out of lane number eight. It seems as though it's going to be raining again. And uh, from our vantage point here, we can see the heavy rain drops. Um, that might not deter the running of the event, but quite obviously, we see some of the athletes in the background taking evasive order well the track and field will continue nonetheless as some people say it's not cricket we're playing so <laughs> the only thing that rain stops the only sport that rain stops is cricket so they understand the starters orders 
And they're up and running here now. Let's see who comes around the turn. In the early runnings here, but looking good is the athlete there from runners, I think it is. That's Joshua Greenwich. Comes around with Ben in the lead here as they straighten up and heading for the home street here now. But here comes the athletes from finish line on the inside. And a strong run back here again with a very close one here. Very close indeed. Uh, the photo finish, we have to determine that one. I thought but LM it's a Paul, very close one. LM St. Paul of Fusion won it. Uh, LM St. Paul of Fusion won in lane it in six. six. Yeah, he won oh, it. So let's look back at it here now to see who the eventual winner was. It was just too close for me to call. But um, coming out of the bend, it was the athlete from Runners, that's uh, Joshua Greenwich, who was in the lead, but a good run back here from the athlete from Fusion in Ellen St. Paul towards the end. And then on the inside from finish line, Jolan Nangain gave good chase as well. As we see here now, they straighten up and heading for the finish line. There we see Jolan Nangain making a move on the inside, but being held up by uh, Joshua Greenwich. And then we saw LM St. Paul towards the end. Let's look back here now. Let's see what happens as they go for the tape. It's a close one indeed. Very close. The but the winner the here, LM St. Paul indeed, 23.39. So they actually ran the same time, so the tosser would have to determine that as well. And Elam St. Paul was given the nod here with his tosser crossing the line first. And Langain from finish line had to settle for third in 23.44. So a very close finish indeed by the top three competitors. We're moving on to section three of four of the fourth final. Joshua Bennett of Excel in one, Alien Coffee of finish line in two. Akido Antwine of Excel in three, Lyndon George of SCRS in four, Elisha Williams of Track Blazers in five, Devronic Mack of High Performance in six, Randio John of MVP in seven, and Daniel Mitchell of Finish Line in eight. Those are the eight athletes expected to perform in section three of the four finals of the 53rd event on the day the boys 200 meter run under 20. Keep, well, in, keep in mind that the record is 21.49 by Ramadan Alexander. Well, the heavens continue to open up, so to speak, here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Shows of blessings, some may want to consider it, but we have to look out for Elisha Williams here from Track Blazers running out of lane 5. He already won the 400 meters in 49 point thereabout earlier on today, and he's back here attempting the double in the 200 meters. Uh, I think Devonic Mack of High Performance is going to run well also in this event. Um, He's been very close in all of the events that he participated in today. Well, it's going to be a very close one. Maybe we may have to go back to the photo finish one more time. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the yeah. second race where we had a the photo, photo finish, finish where the, two, top the top two so. actually ran the same time. Yeah. So we have one, two, three, four, five five athletes we are seeing from our vantage point here so it seems that the athlete from SCRC that looks like Lyndon George, George in four then we can see Elijah Williams of Track Blazers in five Devonic Mack of High Performance in six Randio John of MVP in seven and Daniel Mitchell of Finish Line so the first three athletes are not participating Smitty, all over to you. So they on the starters orders. And the upper a nice clean start here. There you go. Looking good already. Struck Blazers, Elisha Williams. But he has some work to do. High performance in there, Randrick Mark. Mark is in the lead at the moment and looking good. Williams is going to make a run back for it now, but maybe it's too late in the 200 meters. Is the Ronrick Mark. The Ronrick Mark wins it easily in the end uh, from high performance. And slowing down at the, the tape as well in 21.20 seconds, an impressive performance. 21.73 for Elisha Williams. Some impressive times from these youngsters in the under 20 category. Certainly. The one it marked. What a brilliant turn. And Lyndon George with 22.70. But look at Mark here. Devon Mark, he was off the blocks in a blaze and then he was always going to be tough for Elisha Williams to catch up on him 
coming off the bend, he was in the lead and establishing maybe what is a new record. 21.49 was the old record. 21.20 is indeed a new record. So Ramadin yeah. Alexander's record of 2017 has been it crashed. Yeah. I was very impressed with Devonic Mark in the 100 meters. And as I alluded to, I thought he would give a good account of himself as he did. We so he broke on. the game's record, an impressive time of 21.20 seconds. We're seeing, we are supposed to be moving into section four of the fourth final, where Brian Isaac of Sassil should be running in lane one, Ronaldo Williams of SCRS in two, Elijah Simmons of Simplex in three, Raquel Telemark of Fusion in four, Samuel Green of Fusion in five, Akil Francis of SCRS in six, Richie Williams of SAS in seven, and Shamar Thomas of Ace in eight. They're out there. Um, I'm seeing two athletes from Fusion, one athlete from SCRS. I'm seeing the athlete from SAS, that's Brian Isaac in lane number one. Well, I'm sure his dad, that's Ricky Isaac from Grenville, must be somewhere close to a smart device. <laughs> Looking to see what Brian can do. Brian, uh, uh, a top performer from SAS as well, at the SAS Sports 2022. But he has some good competition here for him in this under 20 category. Uh, it seems Elijah Simmons of Simplex is not participating. So we have Brian Isaac. We have Ronaldo Williams. We have Rickel Telemark and Samuel Green of Fusion and Akil Francis of SCR. Well, the name Rickel Telemark should ring a bell for you, Patrick. He's certainly. one to look out for. In the Presentation Brothers College, but there they go. Let's see who makes the early running here. It's a lot of athletes from Fusion in this one. Oh, here comes the athlete out of lane four. It looks like Rickel Telemark. Indeed, it's Rickel Telemark. There goes Rickel Telemark. And no stopping him now with the headband. Rickel Telemark it is who wins this one comfortably in the end. A great run by Rickel Telemark from Fusion. Yeah, let's look at the time here because... Uh, we just saw a 21.20 time by Devonic Mark. Well, he came in with 21.63 and he just, just ran 21.59. So just outside of the record, you would have to settle for the silver medal. For the second position, yeah. And uh, Elijah Simmons in second with 22.24. But he came off the bend with great speed and straighten up. He was not pushed too hard by the rest of athletes and maybe that is what he needed. To but so to be can say for Mark, the time, yes. Mark wasn't pushed too, but had the two of them been lined up together, that might have been I mean, a cracker okay. for finals. Probably we might have had a 19, a 19 point something, right? Well, I'm very doubtful about that. Maybe <laughs> uh, early 21. Oh, no, early 21 yeah. <laughs> 19 <laughs> sounds like yeah. Olympics yeah. boat. Yeah. 21.59, Rickel Telemark, Elijah Simmons of Simplex in 22.24, Samuel Green in third. So we're moving on, we're moving steadily on in event number 54, the boys 200 meter run, 20 plus. The record in that event is 20.59, established on the 20th of May 2018 by Dion Lendo, another outstanding athlete emanating out of the greens. Uh, the stadium uh, record is 20.16. That was established on the 13th of April 2019 by Miguel Francis. We have in lane one, Zimeri Stevenson of Exceed. Omari Lewis is in two from Concord. Javon Harris of Ghana is in lane three. Kyle Regis of Ace in four. Malik Ferdinand of Excel in five. Sheldon Francois of Ace in six. Josiah Cooper of SCRC is in seven. And Darren Morgan of High Performance is in eight. We have a full slate here and this is going to be a smashing 200 meter section one of two for the boys 200 meter run 20 plus coming into this event the best time registered is 22.38 that is the time of Kyle Regis of Ace 
in lane number four. The next timing would be Malik Ferdinand of Excel, a time of 22.43, and the other two times of 22.73 and 27.14, respectively, is of Jevon Harris of Guyana and Sheldon Francois of East. So we have two athletes representing East in this event. One of Ghana, Omari Lewis of Concord Sports Club. On the far outside, Darren Morgan of High Performance and Josiah Cooper of SCRC, our local track club here. It seems to me that Josiah Cooper is not participating. The seventh berth is vacant. Well, Josiah Cooper had a very impressive run in the 100 meters, and we expected him. He had, a, a, I think, a sub-11 performance in the 100 meters, and I'm not sure why he's not here in the finals. This is going to be a hot event. The first section of the boys' 200 meter run, 20 plus. Seven athletes. They're getting down to their mark. Keep your eyes they on the screen. They are in the set position. They're off and running. A good start by all the athletes. Coming off the bunk very quickly. Now we can see the athlete that is um, Malik Ferdinand of Excel. They swing to the top of the hole. And in the second position now, that is Amari Lewis of Concord running great. Finishing very fast on the inside of him with Amari Lewis. But it's Jevon Harris and Amari Lewis. Amari Lewis on the inside. Just get there to nip Jevon Harris of Guyana into second position. A brilliant run from Omari Lewis of Concord Sports Club. We wait on the official timing. Well, we saw Omari Lewis running a great 100 meters, but he had his work cut out for him here. He had to run back and run a really, really hard, a pretty much pedestrian start for him. Uh, the athlete, Jevon Harris from Guyana in lane three, had a good advantage on him coming off the bend. The athlete from Ace, Sky Rage, is struggling a bit here. But then when they straightened up and were heading for the finish line, there came Omari Lewis from Concord of Trinidad and Tobago. And look at him making his move just about there. We can see him with the grimace on the face here, going past Jevon Harris just about now and winning this one in a comfortable time of 21.57 seconds. Another great run, another great 21 uh, second run. And uh, Omari Lewis, um, he's in superb form. He, he really had to run back hard cover about 10 or so meters to catch the Jevon Harris of Guyana, but he was able to do it. We're moving on to section two of two finals. Charles Alexander of Simplex Athletic Club is in one. Adim Peters of Ace in two. Nathaniel Mark of Un Unattached is in three. Mitchell Davis of DMA is in four. Akeem Short of Guyana in five. Barack Matthew of Phoenix in six. Troy Mason of Ace is in seven. And Royston Quigley of TC Immortals is in eight. So that's the men's or the boys 200 meter run 20 plus. Well, we see some big guns there. Nathaniel Mark running on a touch is one to look out for. Adam Peters from Ace is another one to look out for. Farina from Trinidad, UTT Patriots, who was very impressive in the 100 meters. Matthew, Barak Matthew from Phoenix is another one to look out for. And Phoenix club is out of Antigua and Barbuda so he's running out of lane six actually the lane is scratched so he's not here so and in seven we have Troy Mason from ace as well so it's the two ace athletes Adim Peters and Troy Mason and they're up and running let's see who wants it the Second of two finals in the 20 plus 200 meters. Adam Peters looking good in lane two from Ace. But on the outside from Phoenix, Barak Matthew is also doing good. 
Barak Matthew in the lead here now. Well, here they come to challenge him. Adam Peters on the inside is looking good. Barak on the outside. It's a very close one here. But we saw Barak looking over his left shoulder to Adam Peters. And we have to go to the finish line, the, the, the photo finish again, I would think, yeah. for the result of this one. I, I thought that Barak Matthew may have just held on from Adin Peters on the inside. But we wait on that, it's pretty, pretty close. There were three of them across the track in a line. But this was a great one. So it's Farina from Trinidad who won in 21.4. From UTT. Peters was second with 21.44. Farina, you said, you know. And uh, Nathaniel Mark. So there must have been some switch around in the, in, in the, in the lanes. But Nathaniel Mark, he came in third with 21.48. But Farina wasn't... Um so according to the list we have here, he's not it, but apparently they have made oh, some changes. No changes. All right. and, uh, so Farina from UTT Patriots in a time of 21.40. And that would be the fastest time. That will be the winning time. The winning time, yeah. 21.44 yeah. by Peters would give him the silver medal. And 21.48 by Nathaniel Mark would give him the bronze medal. So we have come to the conclusion of the 200 meters in every category. And now we expect to move on to event number 55. The girls 800 meter run open. We have 11 athletes down to participate in this event. Namely, Janique Belgrave of Runners, Azuri Isaac of SJCG, Alana Charles of Finish Line, Destiny Padmo of Runners, Nicola Hazard of Runners, Amaya Henry of Finish Line, Kamali Philip of Finish Line, Kalaya Flavini of, of, of Fusion, Angelique Belgrave of Runners, Nakaya Perryman of Bolt, and Amaya Samuel of Finish Line. Well, we've just been advised as a correction to one of the results that were given earlier on, the 100 meters under 17 girls. So, Giolina Dowdy, she was actually the winner in 12.07. Shaquania Jacobs was second in 12.19, and Shanti Augustine third, also in 12.19. I think previously it was announced that Shanti Augustine would have Finished picked second. up the, 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 the silver, silver medal. medal yeah. Now it has been corrected to show that Shanti Augustine actually came in third. With the same time as Shaquinia Jacobs from Exit Sports Club, 12.19. And uh, the positions for second and third has been reversed. So we're waiting on the 800 meter girls open, event number 55. Actually, we, has, we have two sections of that event section one and section two so 23 artists are expected to participate for the gold silver and bronze medal in this event um, we now see the heading to the start we looking at two four six eight ten eleven of them so maybe all eleven are taking their places in the first run you're down you're watching the with some tight games 2022 here at the Kurani James Athletic Stadium. We are deep into the evening session. We had two interruptions of a rainfall. And so that has set us back in terms of time. But nevertheless, the events are moving smoothly. And with expectation, we may conclude somewhere around the 9 o'clock hour this afternoon. 7.15, Grenada and the rest of the Eastern Caribbean, and you're part of the NLA Whitsuntide Games 2022. Of course, the National Lottery Society is the title sponsor of the Games. Get familiar with the games of the NLA, Playway, Scratch, Cash 4, Pick 3, Lotto, Super 6, and more. National Lottery Society supporting sports, culture, and they should go there.
So we're back here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium for the Winston Tide Games 2022. We're about to enter into the 800 meter events and we're going to start with the 800 meter run open for girls and there are going to be two sections for this event. We can also let, we want to also let you know that also in progress is the discus open for girls as well on the far side. Well, the athletes are already on the track and getting ready for event number 55. Event number 55 is a girl 800 meter run open. The record for the games is 2 minutes 13.53 established in 2001 by Janiel Williams. And at the stadium, 201.96 established on the 13th of April 2019 by Cynthia Anias. Again, the rain has subsided and the events continue. The track is drying pretty quickly as well. Been designed for that. Spectators having to take covers. Most of the seats are wet now. Absolutely nobody on the bleachers. Just maybe a sprinkle of supporters there. And uh, so too is the secondary pavilion, except maybe towards the, the, the upper level and towards the right hand side of the, the lower level. The junior system here um, performs superbly, so I expect in maybe a half an hour or so you can expect the track to dry out considerably if there is no more rain. We're waiting on the start of the first section in the 800 meters of the girls 800 uh, open. 11 athletes are expected to participate. They're getting some instructions from the officials. Alana Charles, Camille Philip, Akila Hamlet, Colissa Lewis, Nicoda Alexander, Kayla Flavini, Amia Samuel, Nikita Perryman, Shafonia Houston, oh, running the 800 meters too. So Alien Gidhari and Royal Lee Solomon. There they are. So it would seem that they have merged both sections because Alain Alian Gadhari was expected to participate in section two. So the So two is Nikoda Alexander. Yeah, so they have actually merged, merged the, the, the two event, sections. Yeah, the two sections. So we're gonna just have one runoff for the final, so the winner takes it all, so to speak. Yep. They're running here for the gold, silver and bronze medals. So are they what uh, would look like lane one? That's Alana Charles from finish line. All there towards the far end is Nikola Alexander from high performance. And there they go is the start of the 800 meters, an event that is open for girls. And making the early run here seems to be an athlete out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And she has another of her compatriots in second position as they scratch towards the inside lane. It is St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the lead. We will try to pick up the athlete for you momentarily. So it's early going. They just about completed 200 meters. Still have another 600 meters to go. That look at an athlete from, from Ace Sports Club. It's oh, that's to be Tracy Alexander. No, that's um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. She looks like St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and that yeah. could be um, from finish line, either Kameli Philip or Alana Charles. But they're both in one and two, as the bell has been sounded to indicate they have one lap to go, 400 meters left in this one. But an early fast break by the athletes from finish line. South City Rising Stars now moving into second position. South City Rising Stars in the likes of uh, Nicola Alexander. So Nicola Alexander, she's now moved into the lead. And uh, I wonder if she hasn't kicked a little bit too early, but she, uh, the bait has not been taken by 
the athlete from finish line. That's uh, South City Rising Stars. She looks over the shoulder to see where the competition is coming from. High performance has now moved into second position. And third, that's with Royally Solomon and Akila Hamlet. But she has changed into another gear here now. South City Rising Stars. And she continues to accelerate with 100 meters to go. South City Rising Stars. From finish line. Two athletes from finish line in second and third. And but she's going to win this one Very with a comfortably ma comfortable margin. Mm -hmm. Not been challenged at all for the gold medal. She wins easily now. The race is really for second and third. As they're coming rather close here, the two teammates here from finish line battling for second and third. So a race in which we saw the athlete from South City Rising Stars not being heavily challenged. She paced her race well. She didn't go off too hard in the first round. And in the end, she was able to win very comfortably. So that's the history of event 55. The girls' 800-meter run open. Uh, As the final team. athletes are coming in now, so the race is still about to be completed. See some of the athletes really ambling in. Amb amb <laughs> in serious distress. But they're going to finish, and that's finish. a good thing. Yeah. But I can tell you it was Shefonia Houston from South City Rising Stars that won the event. And Kamali Phillip from Finish Line was second. And Mia Samuel, also of Finish Line, was third. Gidhari was fourth from St. David's Track Blazers. Kayla Flavini was fifth. The official results. So it was Shefonia Houston, who we know in for the 200 and 400 meters. And I was surprised when I saw her enter for the 800, 800 meters. meters yeah. But a comfortable victory for her in the end. She won that very easily. So we're getting ready for event number 56, the boys' version of the 800 meter. And uh, we have two sections there in the under 17 category. And then we have the 800 meter for the boys' open 25. And we have two sections there again. And then we move in to the 4x1 meter relays in in every category so we have two more events at 800 meter and then we move into the four by one four by ones and eventually the final event of the day the four by four meter relay open in so fact we have two four by four meters open relays both for boys and for girls well, these athletes have been given off everything they have, and we see some of them have to be stretched off the field, and that tells you the extent of what they've put out here, and they've really given up all that they have in this, the dying stages of the day's meet. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, Patrick, if all of the events that are scheduled here today are not run off. And we saw that happening throughout the season, especially when it gets very late. Mm -hmm. The officials either call off some events or merge and integrate the other events. events yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if that happens tonight as well. Well, uh, in the experience of time, when we have not seen any athletes lining up for the boys' 800 meter uh, run under 17. So probably your suggestion might be probable. Well, I believe we may see an integration of those two sections, just as we saw in the girls' 800-meter open run. Yeah. And um, some of the athletes are out there in the call room and maybe waiting on the final instructions to get onto the track. Right, so they're actually making their way onto the track. The under 17 boys is quite a large field as well. So we may very well have the two sections. A merger. We see if you look towards the left of the screen on the far side That's there, you may good. just see them at the edge of the picture. There they are. Yeah. The cameraman working with us nicely. <laughs> 
And so too is our executive producer. Yeah. We see uh, one, two, three, four, five athletes from uh, Track Blazers. Uh, we have athletes from Finish Line. We have athletes, three athletes from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, they are rep representing High Performance Club. We also see athletes from SCRS, that's Jordan Hazard. I can uh, identify him. Also, there's an athlete from Carco and Pity Matic uh, from Fusion. So this is going to be a big field for the event number 56, the boys 800 meter run under 17. They're making their way to the start. You are witnessing the Whitsuntide Games 2022 right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. The final athletic meet for the athletic season here in Grenada, Caracu and Pity Martinique. And um, we have had some great performances today. I hope that you appreciated the commentary and all the quality of entertainment that emanated here from TNR Communications, one of the premier, if not the premier media outlet for streaming activities here on the island. <laughs> what was that one? What was that one? Who said that? Ready for the event number 56. Oh God, maybe the presentation. Oh. So there's going to be a medal presentation while the officials are making sure of the names of the participants. So with, with, with that, We'll take a little break here from our commentary and we'll be right back with you as soon as they are ready for event number 56. St. David Strack Blazers. Silver medalist, Chris Clement, Karuku Athletics Club. 45.73 meters. And your gold medalist, Shay Thomas, Karuku Athletics Club. 47.51 meters. Event 22, boys javelin throw under 20. Bronze medalist, Kizim Collins, St. David Strack Blazers, 50.64 meters. Silver medalist, Rayvon Telesford, St. David Strack Blazers, 54.56 meters. Silver medalist and your gold medalist, Cameron Thomas, also representing St. David Strack Blazers. 59.21 meters. Event 23, boys javelin throw 20 plus. Presenting your bronze medalist, Adrian Thomas, Karaku Athletics Club. A distance of uh, 55.31 meters. 
Silver medalist, Dunison Comturner, also representing Karuku Athletics Club, 57.54 meters. And your gold medalist, Joshua John, St. David Strathclyde. St. David Strathclyde is 61.54 meters. Event 24, Boys High Jump Open. Presenting your bronze medalist, Mark Perrot, finish line, 1.80 meters. Silver medalist, Elisha Williams, St. David Strack Blazers, 1.86 meters. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting your gold medalist, Kenny Hosford, representing South City Rising Stars. A distance, a height, correction, a height of 2.06 meters. Event 37, Girls High Jump Open. Bronze medalist, Brunel Thomas, South City Rising Stars. Silver medalist, Aaliyah Gid Harry, St. David Strat Blazers. And your gold medalist, Akira Moray. 1.50 meters, representing St. David Strat Blazers. Event 25, we back up to event 25. Boys, long jump under 17. Bronze medalist, Sean Henry. St. Vincent Grammar School, track team, 5.99 meters. Silver medalist, Java Kato, Exceed Sports Club, 6.44 meters. And your gold medalist, Jody Grant. Cody, Cody Grant, Exceed Sports Club, 6.60 meters. Event 26. Event 26, boys long jump open. Bronze medalist, Kenny Hosford, South City Rising Stars. 6.18 meters. Silver medalist, Kamal James, high performance. 6.29 meters. And... Your gold medalist, Kadik Stevens, also representing high performance. A distance of 6.60 meters. Boys, short put under 17. Presenting your bronze medalist, Wayner Lewis, high performance. 11.38 meters. Silver medalist, Milan Logan, Karaku Athletics Club, 12.20 meters. And your gold medalist, Jonathan Metford, St. Vincent Grammar School, 12.61 meters. We move now to boys short put open. Announcing your bronze medalist, Kalim Francois, St. David Strack Blazers, 11.84 meters. Silver medalist, Devon Augustin, St. David Strack Blazers, 12.82 meters. And your gold medalist, Adrian Thomas, representing Karaku Athletics Club, 15.61 meters. Event 32, girls short put under 17. Bronze medalist, Aliyah Gittens. Karaku Athletics Club. Oh, 
We uh, fast forward. All we remaining with girls short put under 17. 200 meters under 17 girls. 200 meters under 17 girls presenting your bronze medalist, Shaquania Jacob, Exceed Sports Club. 25.96 seconds. Your silver medalist now, Shante Augustine, 473 MVP, 25.27 seconds. And your gold medalist, Giolina Dowdy, Phoenix Trap Club, 25.1 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this medal presentation. Thank you very much, Mrs. Vida Bruno Victor, Secretary of the Grenada Olympic Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for all of the winners. Thank you very much, Kenroy. A uh, quick announcement before we head back to the track. 11-year-old uh, uh, Irie will be coming down to the front gate. That's Irie. Please come down to the front gate immediately. Someone will be waiting for you there. We welcome you back to the live track and field action. We've just had another medal presentation ceremony. It was good to see the likes of Vida Bruno Victor out there handing out some of the medals. A stalwart in the track and field administration here in Grenada. The event about to be started, the under-17 boys, 800 meters. A very packed field. I make it 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, maybe 20 to 21 athletes there. And... Uh, Apparently, the two sections have been merged. 17 athletes. And there they go. The 800 meters under 17 boys finals. Kariku making a strong run very early in this one. And that looks like maybe Brent Edmund. But uh, now in the lead is the athlete from, could be track blazers. We're not to show who it is. What a fiery start to this 800 meters under 17 boys. That's one of the athletes from high performance. They have three athletes in this event. So there they go, just about completing 300 meters. High performance. Very high arm action. And uh, there they go for the bell lap now. Handel Roban, the record holder from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a gold medalist at the Carift as well, now in the U.S. But it is the field strung out nicely here now. A strong run indeed by the athlete from high performance in the lead. He actually led from start to the current situation here. And seems as though he has that form and endurance to take him through to the end. Let's see what happens here. His teammate now moves into second position. There they go. With 100 meters to go. High performance in one and two. The battle is really for third and fourth. What a race this young man has run here in the 800 meters on the 17. He's going to win very easily with maybe a good 40 meter lead over his teammate. And there they go. One and two for St. Vincent and the third position seems as though it's a uh, finish, line. finish line. But a very strong and uh, impressive uh, run here uh, by the athlete from St. Vincent and Grenadines. Both athletes from St. Vincent and Grenadines. Dominated run from them.
um, from the onset he set the pace um, and did his fractions and established a clear lead and finished very strongly and won this event outstandingly. Well, we thought it might have been a much closer event, but it didn't turn out <laughs> to be that way. Certainly not. As he won this one very, very comfortably indeed. We're going to give you the time in a while because that seems to be a pretty decent time as well for the 800 meters for under 17 boys. As the rest of the field comes in now, uh, a conclusion to the 800 meters under 17 boys. So the winner is Zitri Hepburn. Uh, and, 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 and this event will be followed by the 800 meter run open. So we're going to see maybe the likes of uh, Michael uh, Francois, Francois and others yeah. uh, fe being featured in the next event. Michael Francois, Francois from Ace. Ace. An athlete that has been doing very well. We're getting the timing now. We are waiting the official results for the 800 meters under 17. And following the 800 meters, we're going to move into the exciting relays. And we're going to start with the 4x100 meter relay for the under 9 category. The youngsters will have their go at it. Before I the most seasoned campaigners get involved. I wonder if they will <laughs> endeavor to go into that. As you alluded to, probably they may go into the most senior relays are under 15, 17, and 20s. But we'll wait well, in all fairness to the youngsters, they should be given their chance yeah. to run. Yeah. They have their fans in the stands as well and the family and friends who are here. Some of them might be the only event they are participating in on the day. So to postpone it, it would be a disaster for them. Exactly so. Yeah. The athletes for the open 800 meters getting themselves ready. We see Kieran Charles there. We saw his dad earlier on in the stands today. Michael Francois is there for ace as well. And what looks like maybe Troy Mason. They're there. They are some of the, the top contenders for this event. Michael Francois. I see Tyrone Jacob is also there for South City Rising Stars. We should also see Kyle Victor, Simon James, Michael Francois, Kieran Charles, Dero Desroy Jordan, Tyron Jacob, DeAndre Smith, Christian Wiley, Kyle Alfonso, and Twain should be there. And there they go, the start of the 800 meters for the open boys category. As they settle themselves and they go down toward the back straight, it seems to be the athlete from East who has just established a lead. Also running good in second position. I can see on the inside of them the other athlete from East. Then there's uh, the athlete from Excel. Moving up into contention is the athlete from Caracol and PT Martinique. The athlete from Fusion is also right there. Then taking closer order now is another athlete from High Performance. They bunch right up as they come towards the straight for the first time as they straighten themselves up and come towards the bell. It's the athlete from Ace. On the outside of him is the athlete from DMA. Then we can see two athletes from, Sin, from Excel and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Then the athlete from SAS is running on the inside of them. Now they settle themselves out. Uh, five athletes in the, in the first uh, bunch now and they're moving. It's athletes from Ace. Uh, two athletes well, in Ace in second position. Michael Francois still in sixth position. position. Yes, and he's looking to make, to make some headway. The athlete from High Performance is closing on them on the outside. So too is the athlete from Excel. He has now moved into second position. But it is Ace from Excel. Kieran Charles of Ace. Is Kieran Charles of Ace. Excel is in second. The other athletes from Ace is running on very strongly. Michael Francois indeed. He's, he's trying to break wrong now and closing on them. It's going to be a nice finish coming home. Is Ace from Excel and Ace. Michael Francois is finishing strongly. They come at the top of the turn. It's still Ace from Excel and Ace. Michael Francois would get there. He's trying desperately. He's going to be close. Is Ace. One, two as they come towards the finish line. Look at the athlete from Excel finishing fast. Ace. Excel. Ace. Excel. Ace. 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 Just holding on. From Excel what again. a run by Michael Francois, what a run by the athlete from Excel, an exciting conclusion to this one Patrick, Yes, certainly. and I like the way you call it Ace Excel, Ace Excel, <laughs> in the end it was the Ace 
that reigns supreme, <laughs> Michael Francois indeed, yeah. but a spirited run from well, the athlete from Excel. From Excel. Yes, certainly. I'm sure that athlete from Excel, maybe it was Desroy Jordan, who came in here feeling very comfortable, and when he edged past Kieran Charles, thought he had it covered, and saw Michael Francois go past him. That's Desroy Jordan indeed from Excel Track Club. Michael Francois in 155.44. Desiree Jordan, 155-76. A good run indeed by those two athletes. Kieran Charles of East finishing in third position. So a 1-3 for East in times of 154.44 and 156.71 respectively. Desiree Jordan of Excel Track Club of St. Vincent separating them. Well, for one moment, we didn't call Tyron Jacobs' name at all. He, he really didn't feature among those great athletes. And Tyrion Jacob is no slouch in the 800 meters as well. Actually, at the top of the turn, he was making some headway, but um, that run petered out with just over 60 meters to, 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 to finish, while Francois, Jordan, and Charles were all battling for the first, second, and third places. But I like the fight between Desroy John and Michael Francois, and it really had to go down to who was hungrier for it, who had more guts and more determination. In the end, Michael Francois prevailed. But a good run by Desroy Jordan, indeed, from Excel Track Club. He must be proud of himself, picking up the silver medal. But Michael Francois is not going to be easy to be beaten on any day here at the National Stadium. Certainly. Well, we're getting ourselves ready now for the, the relay events. And we're having the first of those, event number 68. It's a mixed 4 by one meter relay on the 9. And um, let's see who are the teams representing the different clubs. So we should see Bolt in lane two. We should see SJC St. George's. Again, I'm gonna look out for Elijah and Twy here. You're gonna see Fusion, Runners Athletics Club, Track Blazers, Veloc and Velocity. These are the seven teams that are carded to perform. In section one. In section one. Well, there's only gonna be one finals for this category. No, there are two. They're Oh, oh yes, there's one final, this is section one of one, and for the girls is section one of one. So this is actually a final of a final. So in lane number one, there's no athlete there, lane two, no athlete. In the, in the third berth, it is St. Joseph's Convent. Then we have an athlete in lane four from Fusion. There's an athlete from Runners in lane five, no athlete representing track blazers in six and then we have an athlete from fusion out there in lane number seven <laughs> apparently they're going to be having another medal presentation ceremony I'm not just sure what happened to the previous one to have one now but we're going to have another medal presentation so in the meantime we're going to see Stay tuned for the medal presentation ceremony. We'll be back as soon as the action continues on the track. We'll be right back. Event 51, boys, 200 meters under 17. Bronze medalist, Kyle Ned. Sass, 22.63 seconds. Silver medalist, Ethan Sam, 473 MVP, 22.32 seconds. And your gold medalist, Keo Davis, St. Vincent Grammar School, Track team, 21.92 seconds. Event 52 girls, 200 meters open. Bronze medalist, Brunel Thomas, South City Rising Stars, 25.85 seconds. Silver medalist, Kamisha Dominic, St. David's Track Blazers, 25.46 seconds. 
and your gold medalist, Maurice, Mauricia Prieto, Simplex, 23.82 seconds. We can move now to event 53. Boys, 200 meters under 20. Bronze medalists, Elisha Williams and David Strackblazers, 21.73 seconds. Silver medalists, Rikai Telema, Fusion Athletics, 21.59 seconds. Now your gold medalist, Devon Rick Ma, High Performance. 21.20 seconds. Event 54, boys, 200 meters, 20 plus. Presenting your bronze medalist, Nathaniel Mark. Unattached, 21.48 seconds. Silver medalist, Adam Peters, ace, 21.44 seconds. And your gold medalist, Nathan Farinha, UTT Patriots, 21.40 seconds. We can go now to boys, 200 meters. Under 15, bronze medalist, Delron John, SAS. Silver medalist, Deron Sincere, SAS. And your gold medalist, Cameron Maslin, Salt City Rising Stars. Event 32, we can back up girls, short put under 17. Bronze medalist, Aaliyah Gittens. Karakou Athletics Club, 10.03 meters. Silver medalist, Akeda Max Sween, St. David's Track Blazers, 10.41 meters. And your gold medalist, Melanie Roberts. St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's, 10.47 meters. Event 33, girls short put open. Bronze medalist, Calicia John, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's, 9.53 meters. Silver medalist, Jamelia Nicholas, St. David's Strat Blazers, 10.37 meters. And your gold medalist, Denisha Kalis, also representing St. David's Track Blazers, 11.91 meters. This is the end of this medal presentation. Thank you very much, Mrs. Vida Bruno Victor, Secretary of the Grenada Olympic Committee. Eight thirty-two in Grenada and the rest of the Eastern Caribbean. We can return to events on the track. Here's Russell John. So thank you very much, Kenroy. We're back on the track. It's the mixed. Four by 100 meter relay. Under nine divisions. Okay, viewers, we welcome you back to the live coach. track and field action in the Woodson Tide Games 2022. Event, right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. We're going to resume with the mixed relay for the under nine category. It's going to be a mixture three. of boys and girls. And they're going to be doing a four by 100 meters. Velocity Track Club is also there running out with of me is Kit seven. Patrick as we continue to bring you the live broadcast and we thank you for staying with us throughout the afternoon and into the evening as we about to culminate with the relay events the exciting relays 
And we're going to kick it off with the under nine category with the mixed 4 by 100 meters. It seems to be only uh, two teams participating, St. Joseph's Convent uh, in lane and number three. will be running out of and lane number four and the Runners Athletics Club out of lane number five. Fusion is now so taking fusion up their position. Four, runners, runners in, in lane, lane five. five. St. Okay. Joseph's Convent, St. George, lane number three. And out in lane number seven, we have white flag we velocity. Have velocity. So it's time to get this one velocity on the way. Track club, yeah. They on so mark. we have four teams. As Jessie opting to stay some distance behind the starting line. Now she goes up to the starting line. Doesn't want to give away any advantage. And they're up and running. The 4 by 100 four meters by mixed 100 under meter 9 relay. relay under nine SJC off. in 3. And Fusion 4. Runners 5. The bend, and Velocity the in 7. For Sandover, it looks like a runners. Seems like that's Velocity Track Club. Here they oh, go. Out there front the is Velocity straight. in the white. Velocity Track Club. Well, look at an athlete here from Fusion, Fusion, Fusion making, making a good a run back here. here. Go, ladies and gentlemen, that's Fusion down. in lane the four. What a run by that athlete from Fusion in four. Andover. It's this the second hand over. We it's look for who comes out here now. The Fusion. ladies go off nicely here. It looks velocity. as though it's a uh, velocity here track club. Here they come, runners in there as, as well. As they go around Joseph's the bend Convent. to make the first Saint and the final handover. The third the and final They're handover. They're approaching the fourth and final handover. There they go. Handover. And out there handover in lane complete. five. Ladies it looks gentlemen, as though here. it's runners. They come down uh, the stretch. It's actually Fusion. Fusion it is. That is as they battle for the gold Fusion medal here. Athletics. Fusion in the lead Fusion in lane athletics. four. Fusion there Athletics they go. down Fusion the track. Fusion is going to win by a long way. What a run! And then Velocity seems to be taking up the second right position the in the seven. Here come runners and SJC in three. Pushing right to the finish. The mix four by one hundred meter relay. That was the conclusion of the four by one mix. You and your friend get live right now, I need my own room Yes, I's a loner, and no girl don't want no owner So I don't want to own That was the conclusion of the 4 by 100 meters mixed relay for the under 9 category So Fusion Athletics, the official winners here, 1 minute 8.5 seconds the next event on the track would be the event number 69, the girls 4 by 100 relay meter relay under 11. We expect to see St. Joseph's Convent in lane 3. Fusion Track Club in lane 4. Runners in lane 5. And Velocity in lane 6. Four participating teams in the girls 4 by 100 meter relay under 11. That's a boys event. Actually the next event is event number 69, the 4 by 100 meter relay under 11. Uh, that's a that's a event for girl for for girls, but to me I see three boys on the track. So probably that event may have been cancelled. It appears that way. But it's on it's on it's on the the screen. The girls four by one meter. Saint Joseph's Convent. Velocity, Fusion, and Runners. But I'm seeing boys represented actually lining up. So we watch and see how that goes. Anyhow, it's event number 69. The boys are currently on the track, running out of lane number three, St. Mary's Junior School. So that's actually... Oh. That they, they may have canceled the girl event. And they move to event number 70, the boys 4 by one really under 11. So 
we have St. Mary's, we have Bolt, and then we have and then we have um, runners. St. Mary's, Bolt, Fusion and Runners. So that's actually event number 70, 70 correct? Yeah. The 4x100 meters really on the 11 boys. So there they go, they're up and running. The 4x100 meters on the 11 boys. We have St. Mary's on the inside, Bolt, and then Runners. Let's see who wants this one more. They're about to make the first handover now. St. Mary's looking good on the inside. Runners up front looking good as well. And so too is Bolt in the middle of the park here. Uh, it's an even contest at this moment. As they're about to make that second hand over. It's Runners. Bolt having some trouble with the baton. Finally they get it going. St. Mary's somewhere behind. But Bolt moves into the lead now in the middle of the field here. It's Bolt, Runners and then St. Mary's. As they come to make the final hand over now. Bolt hands over first, then runners, then St. Mary's on the inside. Here comes Bolt, here comes runners, here comes St. Mary's with a good run back here. But Bolt is in the lead. St. Mary's battling for the second. Runners still has the second position, but it is Bolt who's going to win this one. Runners will take up the silver and St. Mary's the bronze. So that's the conclusion of event number 70. Boys 4 by 100 meter relay under 11. So we're getting ready and getting set for event number 71. The girls 4x1 relay under 13. St. Mary's Junior School and Runners Athletics Club in second. Bolt in a time of 101.61. Runners Athletic in second position in a time of 103.38. And St. Mary's Junior School in a time of 104.4. Four particip three participating. Uh, clubs fusion did not start. We still have a couple field events in progress. Seems as though there is the discuss, the discuss going on still. In a moment, we're going to tell you who would be competing in the, the next or the upcoming relay. It looks as though it's going to be an 800-meter run for boys under 17. I'm not sure what's happening here now, but that's what has been <laughs> shown on the schedule. But we see athletes lining up for the relay as well. So it's an interesting situation here. We still have a 3,000 meters to go as well. So it's going to be a relay, it's going to be the 4x1 for the under 13 girls. That's event number 71. We also have a 5,000 meter open run. So these are two lengthy events. I'm not sure if they <laughs> may want to continue with those two considering the time now being 20 minutes to 9. But the event to be started, the 4x100 meters under 13 girls. And we expect to see uh, runners at this club in lane 3. St. Davis Track Blazers in four, Bolt in five, and the St. Joseph Convent St. George in six. six. Well, on the track, we see a full list of lanes, so apparently they have merged maybe two sections here. Probably they merge event number 69 and event number 71. Because all of the lanes are filled here. In under 13 and under 11. So you have, you have, to, uh, you have to, to work with us here. We're trying to find our way around <laughs> things too as some of the events scheduling has been readjusted. No. And viewers, we'd just like to let you know that we will have a short break in our coverage on Facebook due to our uh, broadcast time limits for Facebook, but you can continue with the stream on YouTube. And in a short while, we'll be back on Facebook again with the continuation of the broadcast. So we're going to break from Facebook for a short while. We'll continue our broadcast on YouTube, on TNR Communications. And then momentarily, we'll be back with our Facebook live stream. So stay with us, please.
So Patrick, I think we have the four I one meter really under thirteen. That's what the lineup says here. And under eleven, most likely, because in the under thirteen category, we had four clubs: Runners, Track Blazers, Bolt, and St. Joseph's Convent. But we are noticing um, all the lanes are filled. So probably they merge event number sixty nine and event number seventy one. So as soon as we get clarity and confirmation of what is happening, we will advise you viewers of what is happening. But in the meantime, we're going to bring it to you. We're going to give you the, the commentary as we see it. So we see high performance seems to be in lane one. Finish line seems to be out there in lane eight with and in lane seven as well. Finish line. Runners in six. So there we see it now. Is the four I one under fifteen actually? So in lane one is uh, MVP. Lane two is high performance. Lane three is velocity. Lane four Saint Joseph Convent. Lane five Saint Davis Track Blazers. Lane six Runners Athletics Club. Lane seven Finish Line Sports Club. And in lane eight we have Mustang. So it's actually. The 4x100 meters under 50, and that's event number 58, 58 mm -hmm. about to be run off. And uh, actually, they merged that event because we had two sections, section one and section two. So we have a full slate of eight participating clubs and section one and two. So we have one event. They're off and running, a good level start. The athlete on the outside of Mustang is going well. So too is Bolt on the inside of her. Uh, Track Blazers is also coming uh, very strongly. They have the first handover, great handover by Mustang. Ace is also right there. Finish line is also sprinting. Track Blazers is closing on them. They're coming down to the third, the next handover. It is finish line. Track Blazers and Mustang. Finish line has now struck the lead from Track Blazers. Mustang is going well on the outside. Here comes uh, Track Blazers in the middle of the field. As they go down towards the final handover now, it is finish line and Track Blazers. Uh, Track Blazers and Mustang and both coming on the inside is also MVP. So it's MVP, finish line and ace. MVP, finish line and ace. MVP, finish line, ace. Track Blazers closing. Finish line, MVP, Track Blazers in that order. MVP, well, a, a, a great run, and a great good run. passing from MVP between second, third, and the final handover. Superb running. Well, it was a close one for the finish line. In the end, it looks as though it was finish line who got to the finish line first. Indeed, in 53.22, finish line was first. 473 MVP in lane one was second with 53.52. And, and uh, uh, we're waiting on the third. St. David Shark Blazers, and I saw it. In times of 53.22, 53.52, and 53.64, respectively. Mustang was running well on the outside lane, but they faltered in the battle passing between the second and final handover. So that's the history of event number eight, number 58. The girls, 4 by one meter, really under 15. So we get them set for our expectation is another relay event. Uh, that should be the boys, uh, event number 59, the boys 4x1 med medley or meter relay under 15. And uh, probably they may merge this event too, Smitty, because we have two sections, section 1 and section 2. So we'll wait to see how that progresses. Indeed, that seems to be the order of the day, the merging of the events to <laughs> cut back on the total <laughs> number of events. And time. Um, it's almost close to 9. And we have a lot of young kids right here at the stadium. So we're waiting on that. In the meantime, right to our right, the discus throw is still have not been concluded as yet. We're looking at three or four athletes maybe coming to the finish. Well, we see the competitor from Karaku who won the short put. Just had a throw in the discus, and we see another competitor just about completing his throw day again in the discus. So that is happening at the same time. But the relay events are what's happening on the track, 
and the athletes are making their way to pick up their respective positions on the, the legs and lane assignments. And as soon as they are there, we're going to bring it to you the best way we can. So we still have the boys under 15, 4x1, the girls medley, 4x1 uh, open. We have the boys 4x1 under 17. We have the boys 4x1 open. So quite a bit of activity still here um, to be concluded. And we have not seen the 3,000 and 5,000 meter run for boys. Also the girls 3,000 meter. And then we have both 4x4 four four relay, relay runs for girls and boys open. So we still have some time here, Smitty. It yeah, looks like quite <laughs> a number of events <laughs> are remaining. Yeah. We, we also saw a deliberate effort by the officials to expedite things uh, maybe a half an hour ago. The events are going off uh, very, quickly. very quickly. The results are posted very quickly as well. So it's actually going to be the boys 4 by one under 15 that's next. And St. Vincent Grammar School is going to be in lane one. In nine is going to be Runners Athletics Club. I'm not sure why they have nine teams. Kariku is going to be in two, MVP in three. Well, the emerging event, the emerging section one and section two of the boys four by one under 15. Sass is out there in lane eight. South City is in lane seven. Looks as though it's Mustang in lane six. I'll confirm that for you. That's finish line. That's finish line in six. High performance in five. Track Blazers in four. As I said, MVP in three. Under 15 boys, 4 by 100 meter relay. Uh, there's also a St. Vincent team participating in lane number one. That's high performance. That's the St. Vincent Grammar, Grammar School, School, I think yeah, it is. Yeah, St. Vincent Grammar School. So St. Vincent Grammar School and high performance. Two St. Vincent teams participating in the boys' 4 by 1 meter relay under 15. We're getting ready, set, full slated of eight lanes. A very interesting situation here, Patrick. I don't know if you've ever seen that before. There are actually two teams in lane eight in a relay. We've seen it in other uh, middle distance events, but runners and SAS yeah, about it. are <laughs> in lane eight. <laughs> it, yes. um, that's interesting. Very, very interesting. It's the first time I've seen that. I've seen it happen with two artists running the same lane for the middle mm -hmm. and long distances. Yeah, the, but, the, um, the 800 or for the a really event, yeah, 1500. Mm, that's interesting. I would assume it's because all on all the all schedule we have runners in lane nine, but we only have an eight, eight lane, lane track, track here yeah. at the stadium. And if you look to the top of the screen there with the athletes, you see two athletes in lane eight one from SAS and one from runners. SAS in the navy blue and runners in the red. And it'll be interesting to see if the race is actually run off like that. See, in the, in, the, in the attempt to merge the two sections, I think the uh, officials end up with maybe one extra A team. team. Yeah. And now they don't want to do two events, so they're trying to figure out how to approach the situation. Even though it's the second leg to the far behind the discuss area. We can actually see two athletes out there in lane eight. Yeah, from s one from SAS and one, one from <laughs> runners. And one from runners, yes. So that is what is happening. So this event is historic. It's the first time I, I am experiencing it. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting yeah, indeed. Yeah, but we're running late. We've been here since almost 12 o'clock. So it's an eight hour period which has elapsed. Um, we are on YouTube now, but we'll be back on Facebook momentarily. So we're Facebook back is already. back up. We'll be back already. So those yeah. of you who have migrated to YouTube, you can actually go back to Facebook now if you so desire, as the stream is back up on Facebook at the moment.
we so getting ready? The history is in the making with two athletes out there in lane eight. Let's hope they don't bump into each other and uh, we know they are running with the spikes as well. Let's hope it's not going to be a dramatic situation with injury and all that. Yeah, they have nine teams. They're on their mark. So they're on the mark. The 4 by 100 meters under 15 boys. And they're up and running. There they go. Sass out there in eight. So two is runners. Uh, South City Rising Stars in seven. Finish line in six. First and over. Sass with a good lead here. South City Rising Stars giving good chase. Runners somewhere behind. So there's no drama at all out there in lane eight. Sass handing over now. South City Rising Stars handing over second. But South City Rising Stars moves into the lead now over Sass. On the outside, South City Rising Stars with a lead here. Final and over now, South City Rising Stars. Sass takes it. There they go, Karaku on the inside in third. A battle for the finish line here. South City Rising Stars, here comes Karaku on the inside. But it's South City Rising Stars who's going to win this one. Sass will have to settle for second. Karaku combined, or Karaku and this committee in third and St. Vincent Grammar School on the inside in fourth. Well executed butter passing by South, uh, South City uh, Rising Stars. And as I expected, it's a club who have been training for the last couple of years. And so there's they, they, an understanding among the athletes in, in most of the categories that they are participating in. Well, South City Rising Stars, they're having a pretty good day here today at the National Stadium. They've been featured in several of the races, winning several of them as well. And uh, Coach Coffey and his entire team must be proud of the performances of the athletes here today. So we've come to the conclusion of event number 59. The boys 4 by one meter relay on the 15. So we're getting ready <coughs> for the girls 4 by one meter relay open. That's a final of one, section one of one. And we're still looking at the discus throw taking place to the right of your screen. So a very kind of a subdued atmosphere here since the rain has fallen. Things are really quiet done a lot here as we see the young ladies take it to the track now to take up their respective positions for the upcoming relay which would be the 4 by 100 meter relay open that's the next one in lane one we should see southern pros lane two finish line lane three south city rising stars lane four track blazers lane five high performance in lane six mvp seven should be runners and in lane eight we should also have another team from runners. From the looks of it, um, we have not seen, there's only going to be one team from runners in seven. MVP is out there in lane six. In five, I see high performance out there. In four, track blazers is there as well. In lane one, Southern Pros. And the finish line is in two. So lane one is scratched. There is no Southern Pros. I have not seen Southern Pros all day. No, this is the first um, entry I've seen for Southern Pros. Well, they've been registered to participate, but I have not seen any athlete from Southern Pros. A club that we have not seen for the entire season is a club from the Western side. That's... Uh, uh, speed zone. Speed, speed zone, yeah. And we, we just need to find what's been happening with speed zone in recent times. S was a very organized nice club, club, yeah. And we have not seen them featured for the entire track and field season. So we have out in lane number six, we have runners. In number five, we have that's high performance. In uh, track blazers in four. 
In three, we have SCRS and finish line. So five teams participating in event number 60, the girls four by one meter relay open. They're getting ready, they're going on to their mark. A good start, explosive. Runners is going well on the far side. So too is high performance. Track Blazers is also right there with them. They're coming towards the first handover. Good handover by runners. High performance is running very well. So too is Track Blazers. SCRC is making up a lot of stagger and running. Uh, they're running in single file as they go up the back straight. They come into the next handover. Great handover by runners. So too is uh, that the athletes from high performance. Track Blazers is trying to close. So too is SCRC. They come towards the final handover. And it is runners uh, MVP who has the lead. Shantae Augustine Shantae it is. Shantae Augustine with MVP. And she's now being challenged by the runner from the high performance. Shantae is holding on. She's accelerating. She's moving away. MVP is coming towards the line. They win it from high performance. In third position is that SCRC. Track Blazers in fourth. And in fifth position is Mustang. A good finish indeed by Shantae Augustine. She got the baton early. Smooth transition it was. And the athlete from high performance was closing in and out, but Shanti managed to maintain her composure and good form and in the end brought home the bacon for 473 MVP. So that's the conclusion of event number 60. Um, we are moving into event number 61. The boys, 4x1 in the under 17 category. In the meantime, we still see the discus show. We just had a show from an athlete from the St. Vincent Grammar School. And it seems still a couple of athletes still to throw in the discus. So we we'll wait on that, wait on the result of that, and also wait on the participants for event number 61, the 4 by one relay for the under-17 boys. We are seeing athletes taking their position for the start. I can tell you we expect to see four clubs participating in this event. We should see Bolt in lane two, Runners in three, Sass in four, and Karaku Allens Committee in five. Um, we should also take into consideration that there are two sections of this event. Um, so these are the competitors for section one. But I see an athlete from high performance. So um, that's the athlete from high performance in lane number three. Lane number three is supposed to be runners. Indeed, it's runners. I'm yeah. looking right in front of us here. It's actually runners in lane number three. Okay, so we have in lane two. Lane two is supposed to be bolt. bolt. Lane three runners. Four stars. And Karku out in lane. So that's actually section one. Section one, yeah. So we shall see from Bolt, Medford, Bartholomew, McQueen, and Alexander. From Runners, we shall see Jabbar, Pierre, St. Bernard, and Matthew. From Sass, Williams, Ned, Batiste, and Andal. From Karaku, we shall see Clement, Peters, Jones, and Williams. The white flag is out, so it seems as though the officials are ready for the start of this one. They've been called to on the mark.
Section 1 of 2. 4x1 under 17. On the way here now. Nice clean start here. Karaku, Sass, Runners and Bolt. Bolt, or Runners making up the stack on Sass. Nice handover by Sass. Yes, Sass moves into the lead. But Bolt on the inside is giving a good chase. So to his Runners. Runners looking good. Runners with a slight lead here as they make the second handover now. Good handover by Runners. There you go, Sass moving out nicely too. Karaku is now in third position. Sass and Runners. Button switch over here now. Final and over. It's Sass with Kyle Ned. A fumble here by Runners on the inside. But it's Kyle Ned for Sass. Running down Runners. Ned versus Runners. Kyle Ned has his work cut for him. Would he catch him? No, he doesn't. I think Runners edges him out yeah, on the tape yeah, here. A strong got run indeed here. Uh, maybe what looks like... Uh, a great finish there. Uh, uh, Hussein Jabbar maybe it yes. is for, for runners in the end. Yeah, that was a close finish. Uh, the runner from um, SASS, he, he keep closing, but the runner from, uh, the athlete from runners was determined to hold on. This was a good effort and a good run from Kyle Mez of SAS, but just not good enough. He closed in the last couple of strides as we watched here, but the athlete from runners, he just got there just in time. Great camera it. working. Yeah, that's yeah, a photo yeah. finish yeah, right there for that, you. That's very, very, very. But very the official impressive. result is runners with 45.81 and Sass in second. But water close. As we look back to the photo finish, um, as it's on the screen now, the photo finish of that event. What a great yeah, final that event that was. There we see it here the toss off runners, definitely ahead of Kyle Ned for Sass. But that's the photo finish here of that exciting conclusion to section one. So we're getting ready for section two. The runners in a time of 45.81. And St. Andrews Anglican in 45.83. Uh, Bolt in 47.64. And Karaku Athletics Committee 47.84. We're getting ready for the second leg uh, or the second section of the two, the two final. So we should see in lane two finish line in three track blazers in four high performance. In five SKN, that's Saint Kitts. Saint Kitts in six MVP, in seven SCRC Mustangs in eight. So we are expecting seven teams to participate in this event. Well, Saint Kitts has been scheduled here. We have not seen them except for um, maybe some individual events. So it's highly unlikely we will see that team from Saint Kitts participating. Uh, Mustangs, they're here for sure. Yeah. South City Rising Stars, MVP, High Performance, high performance. Here too. Track Blazers, Finish Line. And the Finish Line. So we get in there eventually. We're coming down to the, um, the culmination of the event here today. We enter the 61st event into the second section of the two, a two part section here. And then we will move on to event number 62, the boys 4x1. That's an open event. And we have two sections in that. Most likely that might be merged. And then we come to the girls 3,000 meters, the boys 3,000, the boys 5,000. And then the 4x4 four four to bring the curtain down here on the Whitsuntide Games 2022 at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It's been a full long day, Smitty. 73 uh, events, I think it was. Yes, yeah, 73. <laughs> Quite a lot of events, both in 40 on in the, the track. evening session and 32 in the first, the first part of the day. So do you recall when these games were actually held over two days? And yeah. maybe that was the reason for that, because it's quite a lot, a lot of, of events, events. Yeah, to be compressed into one day. And actually, they had pole vault, they had cycle events, uh, and they had... Um, they, they had many more events uh, put in into in, in more categories and divisions. So I, I think this. So I think the organizers will need to, to look at that. Yeah, they have to look at that. And see whether or not it makes sense to go over two days to look at the economics of it, to look at um, um, the impact it's going to have, the performance of the athletes as well, whether or not they would need to do preliminaries or where they have oversubscription for particular events. Or they may have to start earlier. They may have to start like 10 o'clock. They will have to do. <laughs> they will have to start earlier. <laughs> so 
So we see Mustang Track Club. We see Track Blazers. Apparently, the St. Kitts must have formed a contingent to participate in this event. No, that's St. Vincent or the Indian Fight. So, so it's apparently Mu Mustang, SCRC, MVP. Um, we have a team in, in lane five. That's a St. Vincent team. Yeah, so, so apparently the, they, is, they yeah. include a St. Vincent team here to replace St. Kitts. Yeah. And then we have high performance, track blazers, and finish line. So there we have it, the lineup for the second section of the two finals in the boys' 4 by 100 meter relay under 15. The record held by Speed Zone in 2019, 47.97. There's no Speed Zone participating this year. 31 different teams, 649 athletes. 264 females, 385 females. A huge contingent from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, 90 athletes. And some impressive performances as well. Yes, Keo yeah, Davis, one we would remember. Sashri. They're getting on their mark. This should be a hot event or a hot section of the event. They're off and running. Good start by all our athletes. Mustang is running well. So too is SCRC. Uh, the St. Vincent contingent is also ready. They come towards the first handover. Great handover by Mustang. But finishing going very well on the outside of him. I can see that his MVP is going well. Track Blazers is also moving up. So the team from uh, that high performance is also going well. They come towards the third handover. And on the far side is Mustang. Mustang is going well. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Shrug Blazers is coming there. They come towards the final handover. And it looks like Shrug Blazers who has struck the lead now from MVP. St. Vincent and the Grenadines team is running on strongly. But it's going to be Shrug Blazers. MVP and St. Vincent and the Grenadines is close to the line. It seems to be MVP and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I thought that Shrug Blazers um, finished, um, faded. Just as they came within the last 10 meters, well, meters. That, that is a another great photo <laughs> finish. But I can tell you, from my vantage point, I think Track Blazers would have to settle for third, third position. Yeah. And it was a close one between MVP, MVP and, and the, one the, of the team, team from, from St. Vincent. Vincent. Yeah. The team that is in lane four, four. at the moment. Yeah. And in good. lane four. So the MVP has been given the victory here. 44.51. That was a great run from Sam. So... It's and Sam, yes, it is Sam for MVP who actually ran back. You see the legs pumping high. Yeah. SVZ, uh, that's um, the grammar school, came in second, second. with 44.51. Same time as MVP. Yeah. And Track Blazers had to settle for third with 45.19. But look at it here. The final dip for the tip here. Sam had that's maybe a slight lead ahead. And that's why Sam got the, the, the victory here. But they actually returned the same time. But Ethan Sam with a tosso ahead of okay. the athlete from the St. Vincent Grammar School. Um, and seeing that that event is a double event, section one and two, I think the times in this section would have given the one, two, three places in event number six to one. But we'll wait on that. Um, times of 44.51. Both teams getting 44.51 and track blazers getting 44.62. It seems as though track blazers would have hand sewn up the event. As we see the photo finish here, yeah. indeed Ethan Sam, the torso touching the line ahead of the compatriot from St. Vincent yeah. Grammar School. And that's why he was a judge, the, the winner. official the winner, winner of the event. But yeah. I thought it was a great run. Ethan Sam ran back well and then we saw St. Vincent Grammar School coming back uh, really close, nicely closing, yeah. to catch up with him. And by that time they had gone past the athlete from St. David's Track Blazers. A good run indeed by those athletes. Yeah, that was a good, great event. And that's the culmination of event number 61. So we're heading into event number 62 now. The 4 by one meter relay open. Um, we have two sections of this. We'll wait to see if there is a merger or if both sections uh, will have participants. So we're actually coming to the close 
of the well, meeting. Well, I wouldn't say that quite yet because we have the 3,000 and the 5,000. And that, those are long and events. And those will go for 15 minutes. <laughs> yes. They're about. It's a long event. So we still have some way to go. Probably the officials may have to make a decision. On well, I think they're going to run off the events in all fairness to the athletes. Some people may have come from Trinidad, St. Vincent, wherever to, to run, participate. Yes. And you don't want to really deny them from that opportunity. And others might come from St. Patrick, St. Andrew, St. Davis, wherever. And so you can't blame them if you had issues with managing the time and you had rain delays and whatever else yeah. has happened. But it just means that the organizers will have to go back to, to the, the drawing board. I don't like to, to say the drawing board, the, but yeah. go back to <laughs> looking at the structure it's of the games yeah. and to see how they can improve on that aspect of it. Whether they go back to two or earlier start. Two days or earlier start, a reduction in events. Yeah. Whatever it's going to be, something needs to be done because we've been here for quite some time. The first event ran off maybe just after 12 o'clock today. Yeah, and, and we're still, still here a minutes after 9, yeah, 10 past 9, 10, 12 past 9. So we're waiting. They're getting ready for event number 62. Okay, we're getting ready for event number 62. That is the 4 by 100 meter relay open. The record for this game is 39.39, established on the 29th of May 2004 by AHO. And the stadium record is 39.05, established on the 7th of May 2003 by Trinidad and Tobago. So we have we have in lane two, we have, the event seems to be merged because I'm seeing St. David's Track Blazers in lane two and St. David's Track Blazers supposed so to be- So Track Blazers is actually in two. Sass is in three. Runners is in four. Southern Pros in five. Okay. South City Rising Stars in six. High Performance in seven. And, and Fusion, Fusion in eight. In eight. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the event is merged. So let's see what's going to happen here in the 4x100 meters really open. So strange enough, there is no ace in this one, 4x1 open. We would have expected to see a team from ace. Actually, they participated in every event so far for the day, but um, probably... <coughs> But they're here with a small team, but I expect to see them featured in the 4x400 meters for sure. Mm -hmm. The likes of Kieran, Kieran Charles and Michael Francois, Francois and Adam Peters, Open. Troy Mason. Probably arresting themselves <laughs> for that run. Well, let's see how SAS measures up against track blazers, against runners, southern pros. And I made the comment um, in a recent games we are covering, you know, we are accustomed to seeing the taunting bullets. But there's no tanting bullets in 2022. Neither, and I believe neither, the advent of clubs like MVP and um, South City Rising the, Stars uh, and Fusion, Fusion and yeah. so on would have, you know. De decimated that, that uh, component of the, the club structure. Um, yeah, because Kato, who is the guy leading and coaching Fusion, and then we have uh, Lee Coffey and Benjamin and so with South City Rising Stars. So it's it's all well. As we get ready for the start of the open 4x100 meters for boys. There they go. And rolling nicely too. Looks as though high performance out there in lane 7 is looking good. Making up the star go on fusion. High performance. Fumbling with the back turn here. But here comes South City Rising Stars. They go neck and neck. South City Rising Stars looking good. High performance is still there. As they make the second handover, it's going to be 
a high performance. Here comes South City Rising Stars. Fusion is still in the mix on the outside. But high performance has a slight advantage here now. The final handover. Let's see who comes out first. On the inside, Track Blazers is also looking good from nowhere at all. It's Track Blazers. Here they go battling down. Track Blazers on the inside coming from nowhere. South City Rising Stars in second. And let's see who goes for the tape first. It looks as though it's South City, South Rising, City Stars. Rising Stars. What a race that was. But I can tell you, St. Davis Track Blazers emerged from nowhere on the inside and was in strong contention uh, struck, for a medal here. Struck the lead and again I got a repeat of the last event. They were in the lead. They had about a five meter lead uh, coming into about 50 yards. And the other two athletes from uh, South City Rising Star and uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Look at this. Look at the... The stagger, the athlete from St. David's Shark Blazers. Blazers. As a matter of fact, they came in third with 42.81. The winners 42.60 South City Rising Stars and second high performance in 42.65. A, a great run back from the athlete from South City Rising Stars and the athlete from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Look at that. In they, the end, they went the past St. David's Shark Blazers. The Blazers athlete just folded. Look at the dip for the tip here. St. Vincent High Performance really <laughs> wanted it, but he had maybe two strides yeah, behind yeah. the athlete from South City Rising yeah. Stars. Great event. Great event. Great culmination to the 4 by one events. Uh, so now we're looking to move into the long-distance races, the three long-distance races, the girls 3,000, boys 3,000, boys 5,000, and then we'll have the 4 by 4 for open for both boys and girls. We well, the excitement continues here. We promise you it's going to be exciting relays. And so far, most of them have really lived up, up to, to expectation. the expectations that we set for them. That last one was indeed a cracker. A nice, strong finish between South City Rising Stars and High Performance Club out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So Chester Morgan... One of the founders of the High Performance Club from Central Leeward, the Barley area in St. Vincent. These guys must be very proud of their achievements here today. Uh, they Five clubs. They, they represent themselves adequately. Five clubs out of St. Vincent. The Mustangs have been featured prominently as well. St. Vincent Grammar yeah, School. school. Yeah, they've, yeah, been they've, doing well. they've been doing well. And um, there's another club. Emanating out of St. Vincent also, I think is Excel. So there's Exceed Sports uh, Club and Excel Track Club. Yeah, Excel and Excel. And for the folks just wanting to know, we also have five clubs out of Trinidad and Tobago. Concord Athletics Club, Maximizing Athletic Potential as MAP, Point 14 New Jets, Simpex Athletics Club, and the University of Trinidad and Tobago Patriots. So we're getting ready. We'll have an indication as to whether the we are seeing a moving athletes moving to the left of the screen to the far left, and we'll see what will happen with the 3,000, 5,000 runs, and then the four by four. It seems that athletes are lining up for the four by the four by four. No? Or they're moving the start. Actually, we're going to see the girls' 3,000 meter race in a short while. We should see Azuri Charles from Finish Line, Riona Smith from MVP, Alana Charles from Finish Line, so too is Amaya Henry, Tanisha John, they're all from Finish Line, Jada Harry from St. David's Track Blazers, and uh, Kezayan John from High Performance. These are the starting lineup or this, this, the competitors for the girls' 3,000 meter run. So we are going to have the 3,000 meter run. So we're looking at 15, 15, another 45 minutes before we have the final two events. And probably a little more too. So while we wait on that, while we wait on the start of those events, probably we can take a little break for a little water refreshment. <laughs> so stay with us, uh, viewers. We'll be back with the live action. Once the 3,000 meter starts, we're going to call it for you again. But to let you know that you're watching live track and field action at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium is the Whitsuntide Games 2022.
Leicester just down to the league we went. But before we get there, we had the 3,000 meter, the girls 3,000 meter run open. We're getting ready back here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium for event number 63, the girls' 3,000 meter run open. We seem to be having four athletes participating. One from finish line or two from finish line. One athlete from that's So we should see Track Blazers. Azuri Charles. Yeah. Is there from finish line? From Track Blazers, uh, we should see Jada Harry. Jada Harry. We should also see uh, Riona Smith from MVP. I'm not seeing her on the track. But I see three athletes from finish line. So Alana Charles is supposed to be the Amaya Henry and Tamisha John. And there's also a fourth athlete. But what I see happening too is like the boys are also running. They're on the track. Maybe they're not running, but they're just on the track. Maybe too close as well. But we're supposed to have the under 17, 3,000 meters of boys following next. So I believe they may be integrating those two events into one, the boys and girls, 3,000 meters. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good, maybe a good thing. So it's the girls, 3,000 run open and the boys, 3,000 under 17. Because we still have to come, the 5,000 meter run open for, for the boys. For the boys, yes. This event should be actually seven and a half laps around the track. So it still has uh, some time to go. An event like that would take an average maybe about 12 to 15 minutes. minutes. Okay. So the athlete, that's what they're doing. So we have the, the merge of the race. We have three athletes in the boys division, two from finish line and one from high performance um, and then we have four athletes in the female division two from finish line one from track blazers and one so there they go high performance the start of the combined 3000 meter for for the the girls in the open category and the boys in the under 17 category so the expectation, Patrick, is that those boys should finish ahead of the girls. <laughs> and I'm saying again, the expectation. <laughs> so let's see what happens here. Seven and a half laps. They've just about completed the half lap. And so they should have seven laps to go. Let's see what comes up on the card here from the official. It's actually seven, seven laps. laps to go. Yeah. yeah. So... We're going to be here for a while. We're going to bring you the events. We're going to also maybe talk about some other things that have happened during the day during as well. During the course of the day, yes. Um, some highlight of the, some of the great performances. We had uh, two athletes completing the double, the 100 and 200 meters. <laughs> <laughs> so you know um patrick we had a very interesting interview with chester morgan from the high performance club in um, st vincent and something that he said that i i recall that when he went to study in venezuela he actually studied um football sports but, but majored in football, football. <laughs> yeah. and then he went back to st vincent and actually formed this club, club from out of a school the athletic club yes. and now that you know he has a cadre of administrators working along with the club and they have blossomed nicely and maybe we would see the vision of the football team um coming into play sometime in the future but 
I think it's a wonderful job they're doing there um, from what we've seen from the athletes and from what we anticipate will happen in St. Vincent with the advent of the new, the new track, track, track that they have there. And once they have good administrators, um, it can all go well for them yes, in St. Vincent. You'll see progression. On the local scene, I think we, we saw some um, good performances from some of the, the clubs here. Um, the usual yes. suspects, yeah. so to speak, um, the Telemax and the Ethan Sam, um, track blazers dominating in the field, in the javelin as well. You know, we're going to zero in on those performances later on when we look at the individual brilliant performances, the record breaking ones as well, because some records have tumbled today. today. Yes, certainly. And, and we're going to highlight them later on. Um, track and field, as you know, is a, a huge event in Grenada. And uh, today he's been competing with several other events, not to mention some of the political meetings and rallies that will happen on the weekend. There's also other cultural events taking place to the north of the island, to the yeah, south. Yeah. And so the diehard track and field fans are actually here to, to support yeah, the athletes, athletes and to uh, appreciate good track and field as well. It's been a season that has been very interesting coming out of the pandemic. This, I think, is the first year we've had maybe a relatively full, full track, track and field and season field with season, yeah. the school sports from many, most of the schools, the, the Inter special intercall games. We've had the national champs, champs, the national relay meet, the private primary school sports. We didn't have the GUT primary school sports. And we now had, we, have did we have the Kentucky. Well, we had the national uh, relays yeah, on the, well, on on the a different, different sponsorship. That's yeah, right. Yeah. But we, and now we have the Whitsuntide games. So the Administrator of, of the, the various sporting organizations responsible for pulling off those meets must be commended under the circumstances. And so too is the Grenada Athletics Association for, I mean, putting these events out. And we saw Grenada's performance too at the Carifta Games. And uh, we could have done better. We had an issue there where one of our athletes was judged um, unable to participate because of health reasons. And she was one to maybe pick up maybe two gold so medals for, for, the, for, for Grenada, Grenada, maybe yeah. three medals there. So it's been not been a bad performance. And then on the international scene, we see the likes of Anderson Peters. I mean, phenomenal performances, 93 plus meters, and has participated in five consecutive events, which he has won his last five events. And, and, and it's kudos to the young man for doing well. Most recently, his top three throws would have given him the gold performance at the, the last meet that he participated in. Mm -hmm. So it's been an interesting year for track and field. It's not yet over because we still have the... We have Kimani Felix who has been running... Gamali Felix, Gamali yeah. Felix in the 400 meter, running outstandingly. Um, also, Kirani James. Um, oh yeah, we can't leave out uh, Kirani. I mean, no, I mean, even though he placed second <laughs> in his last event here, the time that he returned 44.02, I think it was, it's a great time. He had to be a record-breaking performance to beat him, which was 43, a high 43. And, and that broke a Michael Johnson record. But Kirani at this stage and age, running that kind of time, is very impressive, I would oh think. Yes, it has to be impressive, the, the sustainability of his performances. And you know, the 400 meters are a very tough event. And then taking into si the situation with his health, um, he's phenomenal. Um, I, I have no doubt he's representing Grenada outstandingly. But he shows a lot of determination grit and, and determination yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and hunger for, 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 for wanting to do well. Yeah. From the, the from I still call him a young man. But well, Kirani James is, is a real <laughs> a flag bearer and a <laughs> beacon for uh, other athletes uh, here in Grenada. Grenada and, yeah. and he's such a humble guy as well, you know. It, it, it really spells well for, for other athletes. So we see, I'm going to tell you now, it's three laps to go, so they have really um, picked up the pace, so to speak, Quickly. while we were talking. Yes, and the uh, athlete from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, yeah. that's um, high performance, is in the lead. Um, there are only three athletes in the men, the boys category, eh? so we have an athlete from uh, finish line in second, and another athlete from finish line in second. And it seems that track, the athlete from track blazers in the female component of the run is in first position, uh, finish line is in second, and that seems to be the athlete in third position. That's also high performance. That's also the athlete representing high well, performance. Well, he's actually running by himself, not being pushed by the other competitors. So, you know, it's interesting to see if he would get the time that maybe he's looking for. 
but um, looks very comfortable indeed. He will give the, he will get the indication now that there are two laps to go. But he's motoring on nicely. He glances at his watch. Maybe he's pacing himself. He we won the 800 Open today uh, quite easily too. So he's another athlete who is going to be registering a double in his events. Uh, and he yeah, has a kick. He has a kick as well for the finish. So yeah. very looks very very comfortable up front. There we go down the back street. In the female section of the race, three of the competitors, they closely bunch and they exchanging the lead every now and again. We see the athlete from finish line in the lead. Um, Chuck Blazers is now relegated to second position, but they, they're, they're very closely knit at the moment high performance now moves into second. second track blazers to third and finish line up front but as we look to see the event the event leader here now he receives the bell so he has just over 400 meters to go he picks up the pace as well you we see the legs turning around faster now so he still has a lot more in the tank to go so to speak um, in the boys event it seems to be one of the Competitors must have dropped out. Yeah, from MVP. From MVP yeah. So we left with only two competitors in one the. One from finish line and one from high performance. Yeah, yeah two. Which we three other best that, you know. So that should be Zikri Hepburn. I think it is from high performance. That's the only competitor from high performance yeah, that has been registered yeah, yeah, Zikri for the 3000. Yeah, Zikri Hepburn. There he goes. We had 110 meters to go. Zikri Hepburn, we make it here for high performance from St. Vincent. And it begins to accelerate. He Digs deep for the last reserve as he sprints towards the finish line. A uh, brilliant performance indeed by Zikri Hepburn from High Performance. He wins this one now comfortably indeed. With time to spare, he can look back to the end of the race now. And a great performance indeed by Zikri Hepburn. It would be really nice to see him gotten some more competition, competition from yeah. more competitors as well. Yeah, but that hasn't been the case, but a great run indeed. Also in, in the female, we've now seen the athlete from uh, that finish line finishing strongly in second position. And so that the other athlete from finish line is now being taken away for some medical attention. But in the female division, they have separated themselves. The other at the athlete from finish line and the athlete from high performance is in the lead and the athlete from track blazer seems to be struggling at the moment so these are the leaders in the girls category uh, the open 3000 most likely they will have they may be getting the bell now and well jada harry is somewhere behind yeah they're getting the bell now the females as we see high performance beginning now. to distance herself from finish line So there they are, the leaders in the 3,000 meters open for girls. Matter of fact, they are ahead of the lone male competitor remaining in the 3,000 meters for the under 17. But uh, he has not gotten the bell yet. Uh, he still has to make do another 400 and then come and have the bell. But he's still he's prodding on. He's not giving up. And uh, we have to appreciate his enthusiasm. That is the spirit involved in athletics. I think the bell was for him as well. That's yeah, the last lap for all of probably, them. Probably, yeah. So it's going to be... Um, I'm thinking here that he doesn't want any of the females <laughs> to beat him, so he has really picked up the pace. Yeah, certainly. 
because I'm, I'm sure he would get a lot of talk from his colleagues from his school and from his village and so on. Until next year. So he has really picked up the pace and now moved ahead of the young lady from High Performance. High Performance. Yeah. But she comes back now. It's going to be a nice one. She's not going to have that. He picks up the pace as well. He can't make it. No, he, he cannot He concedes now. He concedes. <laughs> but the young lady is looking good. She looks back to see where the competition is coming from. Doesn't see it. And so slows down a bit here. She's going to save maybe a little bit for the last 40 meters or so. But that young man from finish line would be the talking point on the on the block tomorrow he's, he's trying to, to make an effort here but she's going to pick up the pace just as she sees him <laughs> and that is what the fans like that to see they're going to sprint for it <laughs> but she's going to get it there ahead of him she wins it now it's high performance and the that's high performance <laughs> winning it to the female she puts she has put everything out on the track here and the athlete coming in second here now from finish line and then jada harry from track from uh, Harry from track blazers comes in third so that's the culmination of the 3000 meters both in the boys and girls division and we await the 5000 meters for boys open well they have given up everything and they are now taking some much deserved rest I would think <laughs> and assistance <laughs> And then we're going to see, I'm sure, Tyron Jacob and Shaquem Williams and others lining up shortly for the 5,000 meter run open for boys. And then following that, we're going to have the final two relay events. Boys four and by girls four. open. That's right. Event number 66 and 67. And following that, we expect to see the final medal presentation. And a wrap on things for Whitsuntide Games 2022. The final athletic event on the calendar, Grenada Caracol and Pity It's been a long day, but nevertheless, it's worth it. Um, if the athletes are here, we've got to be here, we've got to be covering them. And um, I'm sure that the Grenada Athletic Association would be proud that they can put on these games. They'll have some things to look at in terms of what will happen next year. But um, in doing their own synopsis, they will come forward with some sort of proposal because I don't think they would like the games to be like this next year. Taking into consideration that we had two slight interruptions from rain, but um, 72 events is a lot of events for, uh, for one day. So Kezai and John was the official winner for the girls 3000 meters. And she did that in what, 12 minutes, 34.1 seconds. Azure Charles of um, Finishing Line Sports Club is second. And so that's we see, here we see the official result, Kezai and John, high performance, the winner. We're going to look to see who the second and third place finishers were and the times that they returned as well. So the 5,000 meters is going to take us a little longer than this one, maybe in the area of 15 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. And so... Down to participate is Tyrese Andrews of Finish Line, William Meyer of South City Rising Stars. But on lining up, Smitty, I, it seemed to be only three athletes participating. You can see they're getting some final instructions from Mr. Cox. No, they have more than three athletes, sorry. They have more than three athletes. As a matter of fact, the record for the 5,000 meters has been held by Vincentio Paminos Ballantyne. established in 1999. 14 minutes 55.40 seconds we don't expect that record to be broken here so that means they will definitely go beyond the 14 mi minute mark certainly pa Pamino's Ballantyne was also a, run a road runner well we know the Ballantyne uh, family yeah. out of St. Vincent, Vincent and the Grenadines yeah. they've yeah. been in every sport they dominated or had a dominance in netball as well 
the, so the ladies and uh, the road running and long distance running, the, the Ballantyne brothers. And uh, it's a, a, a rich sporting family out there in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So for the boys' 5,000 meter run, we see the, uh, the name uh, Zachary, uh, Zachary being featured there. He just ran the 3,000 meters earlier on. So I'm, I'm very doubtful I would come back to run the 5,000 here again, but he is scheduled to run. Um, ZL Spring should be there for Mustangs. Levron Thorn from Ace. Shaquem Williams from South City Rising Stars. Tyrone Jacob also of South City Rising Stars. Should be there. Jay Phillip from Finish Line. DeAndre Smith from Finish Line. Jeremy Phillips from Excel. Colin Alexander from Finish Line. Miguel Cape from SAS. And Kazim Lewis from South City Rising Stars. These are the athletes that have been registered for this event. From what we see on the track, we have not seen all of these athletes. We see Zeal Spring, number 277 of Mustang. We, we see, see Livron Thorn from ACs there as well. Number 58. And um, there's no Tyrone Jacob. There's no Shaquem Williams. And there's an athlete from, from Excel. Excel. Uh, that looks like Jeremy Phillips. Jeremy, number 648. So this is an event that the athletes will have to train really, really hard for. It's stamina, endurance, fitness, form, and all of that. And uh, uh, here they're expected to come and put all of that hard work into practice. We see they've been called off the track, and it'd be really, really unfortunate if they've trained so hard for this event. And it's cancelled. And it's cancelled. Yeah. But we will look to see what will happen here. And um, also... The conditions, because uh, usually you will think your event will take place during the evening time when, <laughs> when there's some night. You don't expect to be running at 5,000 meters at 17 minutes to 10 in the night. But nevertheless, it is what it is. And it seems as though the event may be cancelled. Because we see the athletes for the 4x4 the four four four, four, yeah, making the their way onto the track. Yeah. Yeah. So we await that. We await whatever decision is made relevant to the 5,000 meters for the boys. Um, as soon as we get that information, we'll relay that to you. And so, and so, Patrick, what could have been done, right? Similar to how they had the 3,000 meters integrated with the boys and girls, maybe they could have the 5, if the, the, yeah. the, the meet manager could have uh, uh, accommodated that extra set of athletes in terms of the timing and so on, Maybe that could have been integrated as well, Certainly. you know. Because we only had six artists. But we only say that here from the commentary position. But you know, these things have been done scientifically now and electronically. Yeah. And sometimes the it may the, have the been software that they're using him, yeah. cannot accommodate mm. those in kind of integration. So we have to give the benefit here to the organizers in terms of uh, managing the events and, and how things go. So gone are the days when it was handheld timers and you could have switched athletes in and out of races. Mm -hmm. Now, that cannot be done just like that. Once the athletes, the athletes must be registered prior, prior. so that they can be entered into the, the mid manager system and all of that. So we're getting ready for the girls, four by four. Always an exciting event, uh, whether it is in the boys or girls category. And those would be the final events on the Whitson Tide Games 2022 card. Um, expected to participate in the girls division is um, RAC. We also expect participation from Finish Line, Track Blazers, MVP, SCRS, and High Performance. Six teams. Good to see that some spectators have stayed on. I remained, yeah. I'm sure some of them are parents to some of the youngsters. Most likely. And you see a number of the youngsters having their own races too <laughs> in the stands. They're having their own uh, fun. Whitsuntide games, I would think. 
So we're having the placement of the athletes. It's a four by four situation, so there's no need for any lane assignments. To the far left of our screen, you can see the boys who are going to be bringing down the curtain here this evening. They're making their way down to the start, and we're expecting to see a, a huge field for the 4 by 400 meter relay open as carded on our schedule. We should see nothing short of 11 teams participating in this event. Well, they're taking up their positions, the first and second legs. And we're happy that many of you have stayed on with us on the live broadcast. I want to say a special good night to a good friend of mine out there in the Bahamas, Elton Charles, who has stuck with us with the broadcast. His daughter actually ran today, Naima Charles, earlier on today. So good night, Elton, and thank you for staying with us. And to all of you out there, those folks in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Elton has is an stayed extended with us. family of mine. Um, he's married to my wife's niece, Elton Charles. <laughs> well, from I never knew that. From Granbra, yes, yeah. He's married into the Bean family, Natika Bean. Seems to know quite a lot about <laughs> Elton and his family. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh. But in any case, the competitors for the 4x400 meters open for females, they are on the track. And I believe any moment now we will see the start of that event, the penultimate event today. We have four teams participating. And so it might just be the right opportunity to say thank you to all of those persons who would have assisted the GWA in putting, putting this meet off under the circumstances. So it looks like track blazers, finish line, runners, and uh, let's see them. So there seems to be three so runners, three uh, athletes here competing: runners, finish line, and track blazers. Oh, there's an athlete out. out oh, that's high performance. Uh, high performance, yeah. So four teams participating, high performance, track bleeders, finish line, and runners. So there we're gonna go. Finally, the start to the four by 400 meters for girls. It's an open category. Up front, from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, high performance. Then in the purple and yellow, we have St. Davis track blazers, runners in the all red, and finish line in the black. The four competitors on the first leg, in the 4x400 four meters for girls open. There they go. High performance still in the front here with maybe a 10 meter lead on the stagger. But a good run back here by Track Blazers. Track Blazers closing in quickly on the inside. And by the time the athlete from High Performance recognized she was gone past. That's St. Davis Track Blazers leading on the first leg. There they go. Finish line is there in third. But Track Blazers would hand over first year. There they go. Track Blazers. Then it's going to be what looks like finish line running back nicely. Then high performance. And then we have runners in fourth. Well, there they go. A nice lead here established by St. David's Track Blazers. They're going to scratch towards the inside lane now. As they go down the back straight. St. Davis by maybe 60 meters. The rest of the field is tightly bunched together. High performance making a chase out of it now. Runners is still there with the smallest competitor in the bunch. And finish line is also there. But uh, the lead has been narrowed a little bit here on the St. Davis track blazers by the athlete from high performance from St. Vincent. 
But as she straightens up now to make the second handover, it is still track blazers. But a strong finish by high performance. It's not going to be enough to catch up with the athlete from track blazers, but a good run indeed to, to narrow the gap that the, the track blazers had established. The second handover takes place now. Track blazers still in front. High performance in second. Let's see who brings it in third. It looks as though it's going to be runners. Indeed, it's runners. And then finish line in fourth. But track blazers blazing the track. High performance, giving good chase. There they go down the back straight. The gap narrowing all the time. Does she great, have enough? Run coming home. Does she have enough? Is she giving off too much too early? Time will tell if she can sustain that pace and that speed. But she goes past her in a flurry here. High performance it is. Let's see the answer from Track Blazers. Is there an answer at all? She's looking very comfortable up front. A good, good run here by High Performance. To, to close the gap and to establish a gap of maybe 20 meters or so. What a good run indeed here by High Performance. Track Blazers doesn't have the answer to that one. Let's see what happens on the final handover. It's the best run of the, 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 the relay so far by High Performance. And they have maybe a good 40 meter lead over Track Blazers. It's going to take a Herculean effort from Track Blazers to come back here. But let's see what happens. Finish line in fourth. Runners in third. But looking very comfortable. The legs turning over nicely. Smooth as butter, as we say. It is high performance out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. A good run back here by Track Blazers. Is it too much for her to do? Is it too late? Is it too late? This is, is it going to be, be a crack at the finish very close. line? This is going to be close. The gap is narrowing all, all the, the time. time. All the time. Let's see what happens. Track Blazers on this the go. Be a great high performance. High performance is there. Track Blazers edging closer. With 100 meters to go, she chooses to overtake her on the inside and does so. What a good run back here. She's going to win it, it seems. Track Blazers for the win. Track Blazers for the glory. What a tremendous performance by this young lady from Track Blazers. She wins it nicely for her team. Maybe a fitting way to end the female category. High performance gave a very good account of themselves, but it was just a blistering and outstanding performance from Track Blazers. Certainly. And the finish line is now coming towards the line, and she does so now. Well, Patrick, I can tell you, at the beginning of the third and final handover, with the lead that high performance had, many people would have concluded it was their race. Yes, certainly. Also, um, if you take note, the, the young lady, the, the light-skinned young lady who ran the third leg for, for track blazers. blazers, she had just finished running the 3,000 meters. Oh, that's right. That's correct. So she <laughs> yeah. must have been tired, too. She must too. have been tired. But that uh, leg from high performance, the third leg, yeah, was, was yeah, a very was, impressive was, leg. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. But you're right. The young lady who uh, just uh, ran uh, that third uh, leg uh, for uh, track, track blazers, blazers she just completed his 3,000 meters. Yeah, so uh, I got to see the exhaustion on her. She tried her best. But that strength, that, yeah, that tells a lot. Uh, because yeah. she ran for 12, 13 minutes. Yeah, and she didn't even have enough time to recover. There wasn't enough recovery time. So uh, I guess that's the nature of the sport. Because uh, the 5,000 event was cancelled, eh? Yes, it was, yeah. So we have the result. But an exciting conclusion nonetheless. A good run back here from the athlete from Track Blazers mm -hmm. to win it for her club. So we're down to the final event for the night. That's the 4 by 400 meters open for boys. And I can tell you, Ace Track Club of St. Andrew would be the obvious favorite. They have been winning all season long. They went to Barbados, they won. They went to St. Vincent, they won. They won earlier on in the year in the national relay meet. At the national champs, they won. And uh, they seem to be enjoying the 4 by 400 meters with the likes of Michael Francois, Kieran, uh, Charles, um, Adam Peters and uh, Troy Mason, yeah, that's the, f the fourth the member of the, the quartet. quartet. They, they are an obvious favorite to win the 4x400 four meters. They're lining up. So we can see track blazers out there in lane six. Ace is out there in lane four. And we expect to see some other teams lining up for the 4x4. As a matter of fact, we have 
listed on the schedule here Excel, SAS, Bolt, Ace, MVP, Track Blazers, St. Kitts, Nevis, Finish Line, High Performance, and South City Rising Stars together with runners. So we have 11 teams registered for this event, but we can confirm there isn't going to be 11 teams. It seems as though we're going to have maybe five teams or maybe four teams. Track Blazers is there. I also see maybe that's Excel out of St. Vincent. Ace is there. South City Rising Stars is there. These are the four teams in the lineup. The final event for the day on the track. It's an event that a lot of people go to track and field miss to see because of what happens. The lead keeps exchanging between teams and at the end... And sometimes if the sport is very close, the it championship is the, yes, it is the championship. I guess you remember the days of SAS. Well, Junior GBSS Charles comes to mind. <laughs> Two occasions SAS would have done it. Um, once with Alan Francis yeah. and then in more recent times with Junior Charles. And I don't think anybody can forget that race with oh, Junior Charles oh, on that sick. final leg that for, for SAS. And that was a race that would have brought the championship to SAS so, as well. Mm -hmm. So you're correct when you say the 4x4 four four in many instances determines the championship, championship. team. So finally it's on the way, the 4x400 four meters open for boys. Track Blazers has the early lead. Ace is moving up into contention. So too is the high, high performance is there, and then SCRC. So that's how they're going to down the back streets. And we can see the athlete from Ace uh, having some high pumps and has the lead with about 15 meters. The other three teams are closely knitted. We can see SCRC is closing the gap all the time and running a great race. The athlete from Track Blazers is outside. Troy Mason is the athlete in front. And then we can see SCRC is in second position. Track Blazers is also closing and it's going to be close as they come for the first handover. So it's all Troy Mason for Ace in front. He's handing over now. SCRC is in second position. The Track Blazers is now handing over and then we can see that is high performance. So it is on the far side now is Kenroy Charles, Kieran. Uh, Kieran Charles, a blistering second leg. There he goes down the back straight now. He's looking great. He's accelerating and opening the gap on SCRC. So it's all Kieran Charles of Ace. Kieran Charles, he's coming into the home straight now with just about 100 meters towards the second handover. It's Charles of Ace. SCR is in second position. Track Blazers is in third, and they're running in Indian file as they come towards the handover. Kieran Charles, a brilliant second leg. He's going to be handing over. Track Blazers is finishing very fast in second position, overtaking SCRC. But it is Ace, all the way Ace. Track Blazers, South City Rising Stars. And it is Michael Francois now for Ace. He has about 50 or 60 meter lead. An outstanding run from Ace, the champions of the 4x400 four four meter relay. It is all Francois of Ace Track Club. Francois, he's coming into the home stretch, running very, very strongly. It is Ace. Francois of Ace now into the home stretch. He's coming to do the final handover. Ace, Francois. Brilliant run from Francois. The rest are out of the screen. And it's Francois now. The last leg now is being run by Adrian Peters. Adrian Peters. And it is this. Now, SCRC and Chuck, and Chuck Blazers. But it's all Michael Francois. Aiden Peters. Aiden Peters. Down the back shed. Look at him go. Watch his action. Aiden Peters of A Sideway. A complete quartet. An excellent performance of running. As they come to the combination and bringing on the curtains here, what a magnificent run by Ace. Aiden Peters is into the home stretch and he's lightening his stride. He's coming away to the winning pole. He's doing it magnificently. It is Aiden Peters and Ace. Aiden Peters and Ace. As they come to the line, he takes it easily. Well, what a fantastic run here. second position. He's still waiting on the second position. It seems to be um, that's high performance uh, being run down by SCRC. High performance in second. 
SCRC, and most likely it will be Track Blazers in fourth position. A magnificent run by Ace to bring down the curtains here on the final athletic event of the 2022 athletic season, the Whitson Tide 2022 games. Well, we told you, we, we, we built your anticipation for that performance from Ace. They have been doing that all season, 3 minutes, 16.89 seconds, and they're just outside of the record for this event, which is 3 minutes, 7.25 seconds. seconds, established by a team from Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, so, the quartet from Ace continue to do well and continue to bring the curtains down in a fantastic way at all the track and field meets um, outside of the school meets that have been held here in Greenland for the season. And congratulations to Coach Wayne McSween and his team for a fantastic performance. But as we put a wrap in things, we're going to have the final medal presentation coming up lately. But I just want to single out some of the outstanding performances we had today, Patrick. Certainly. And I can tell you, we saw 10.44 seconds by Omari Lewis from Concord uh, Athletics Club of Trinidad and Tobago to win the boys 100 meter dash uh, uh, 20 plus and that I thought was a fantastic performance um, under the circumstances here. We also saw a great performance from Devon Rick Mark from high performance from St. Vincent and the Grenadines running 21.21 seconds in the, in 200, the 200, 200 meters, meters. Yeah. and that to me was a fantastic performance to set a new record in that um, um, event as well. So that was a record-breaking performance. We also, we also saw, saw another record-breaking performance from Shanti Augustine in the 400 meters. I think she ran 57.21 to break the old record of 57.86 by Shafonia Houston. And that was a fantastic performance. And the final record-breaking performance was from Ronan Lessie in the 150 meter dash in the under nine category he ran a new time of 22.81 seconds eclipsing the old mark of 24.13 seconds that he held himself in the previous year so these to me were the standard performances in terms of the clubs i thought that south city rising stars from the the local clubs give a very good account of themselves and high performance from st vincent the st vincent grammar school um, the Mustangs um, at some times, but again, we want to single out the contingent from St. Vincent and the outstanding performances, over 90 of them here, and uh, they really gave a good account for themselves. Your, 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 your synopsis and take on some of the, the brilliant performances? Well, um, coming to mind is Giolina Dowdy of, of the Phoenix uh, Sports Club out of Trin Vin Trinidad. Trinidad and Tobago. She won the 100 meters and the 200 meters. And also uh, from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we had outstanding performances from Keo Davis. He completing a double also. And then in the under nine category, as you alluded to, we saw uh, good performances from uh, the, the young Roland man Lassie. from Roland Lessie. Yes, I thought those were the performances that was outstanding. But all in all for today, um, I'm just exuberated that the Grenada Athletic Association could have put on a meet of this magnitude. I will be sure that they will have to take a look at this again, taking into consideration where we are at this moment. Uh, it's already uh, minutes past 10. We have a lot of young students who participated in the meet, but um, I want to say kudos to them. And uh, for also the whole year, the whole athletic season, um, taking what happened with the pandemic last year, the postponements and so on. So. I think it's a great year for, for athletics in Grenada and we are going to be looking forward next year to be having more meets, greater performances and as we get closer to the uh, next Olympics, we'll have our preparation and our athletes set for that. Well, it was a great day for track and field and we are happy to bring it to you wherever you are out there on social media, on your Facebook pages, on YouTube and those of you who for whatever reason couldn't come on down here to the National Stadium. We thank you for staying with us. We're going to leave you with the sights and sounds from the Kirani James Athletic Stadium and maybe to the final closing ceremony, if at all they're going to have one as has been scheduled. But until the next time, we're very happy to bring it to you and to say good night and uh, have a great evening. On behalf of Keith Patrick, I'm Leslie Smith thanking you for viewing and uh, looking forward to bringing it to you again next time around. Thank Gorgeous. you so much. Uh, no.
and the ceremony groom. A, a silver wrist band was left in the short area. Owner, please connect me to the ceremony groom.